Guys, it has been just over 15 years since the uh, since the PS3 first came out. It is now officially a retro console. We're all old now. Shut up. I need my heart medication. <laughs> I need my everything medication. <laughs> uh, also back from a long fucking break. Holy shit. Things have been very busy in real life that I had to put everything to, to do with this stream on hold. But I, it's worth it. I've now moved into a new place. Um, like, everything seems to be here intact. I recently made some big purchases for, like, stream upgrades that'll be arriving hopefully in the next couple weeks. But that's not going to stop me from using the old equipment I've been stuck with for the past several years. And what better way to celebrate it coming back is to just play a bunch of PS3 games because <laughs> because one of my big accomplishments very early on in this year was finally buying like another PS3 to replace my old dying fat model. Because boy, let me tell you, as appealing as it may seem these days to have a 60 gigabyte launch model, those things are not sustainable. <laughs> I have one uh, in my bedroom, which I use for Blu-rays. Uh, I've got a slim model in the living room, which um, barely ever gets used. But I keep it around because I like it. Yeah, it's just... It's a shame that one had to just slowly die on me anytime I turned it on. It's weird because even yeah. when I went several months without using it, every time I turned it on, it's like it actively got worse. <laughs> I had a problem um, 360 like that for a while. Oof. Um, I I was convinced that it was going to just die horribly on me just because it was getting so loud. Oh yeah. Um, hoovering it, the the air um, the airflow gave it a bit of extra life, but eventually wound up replacing it with one of the Resident Evil Five. Uh, 360s, mainly because it had an HDMI outlet, and my old one didn't. It was an old model. Right, yeah, you, you yeah, you, you used to have, like, one of the pre-elite 360s. Yep, still do. Um, but, yeah, eventually, I've, I mean, I've still got it, I just don't, again, I don't use it, because I'm afraid that it's just, every time I switch on, it's just gonna catch fire. Yeah. God, just, like, Build quality for launch versions of these systems from that generation was just like the worst it ever got. I think, <laughs> like, like I still have a fat PS2 because the one I have is like just right on the cusp before they went to the PS2 Slim, so like it has a better disc drive than the old old PS2 models. But like, yep. for fuck's sake, it's like if you want to have like a working PS3 or 360 in this day and age, in the year of our Luigi 2022, like you like you are SOL if you think you're going to be able to get far with like a non-slim 360 or a non-slim PS3. Yeah, I keep thinking about getting a slim PS2 just as a backup. Um, yeah. Mine amazingly still works. I actually managed to get it working with my um with with my tv in my bedroom uh a while nice. back nice it was <laughs> it was funny because i was going through all my old memory cards to see you know just like have a look and see what i played and most what was most recent it's like you last played this game 2009 you last played this game 2004 <laughs> <laughs> oh time I was like, oh, yes, just what I needed. More memories of age. Let's just I'm boot this fucking thing up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's. Okay, making sure my monitor's on properly, because sometimes if I, if I leave it on a blank screen for too long, it just does not show up properly. Wait, that's not the PS3 logo. Say what? Okay, what the... Oh, you doing a bad thing. Yeah. My monitor's doing a bad thing is what it's fucking doing. <laughs> Just a second. Yes. <laughs> kind of blurry on the uh, screen share as well for some reason. Not sure why. Really? Is that so? Yeah. Unless it's... 
Huh. I mean, like, it looks funny. With, it might just be, like, a weird thing with, like... Uh, the, uh, I, yeah, oh, it keeps... oh, oh, that's why. Because, like, I had the windowed project uh, projector, but, like, it had it at a super small window size. Right. That, that, that fucking explains it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you were literally getting like a postage stamp sized preview blown the fuck up. <laughs> but yes, say, yeah, I, I see some afterburner. Yeah, so so yeah, as as you could tell, uh, as you, and also what you can see is this folder with a bullet bill called Homebrew. Um, that that's a big reason why I wanted to do this and why I was so glad to get a PS3 again because I wanted to install some custom firmware on this bitch, and I did. <laughs> It was fortunately one of the slim models that was like, like just early enough that uh, that like it would accept the custom firmware, which uh, which although if it somehow wasn't, that's still fine. There are other ways to get around it. You know, like there's PS3 Hen, but the downside of that is that when you turn the PS3 on, you have to manually activate Hen in order to get mm -hmm. access to like other homebrew applications this is just like now nah, you turn the you turn the system on it just goes i remember the uh vita had something similar to that for a while before they discovered the uh workarounds for it right yeah and i think the 3ds as well Mm hmm so yeah obviously i've got uh plenty of psn games on here like all of which clearly legally acquired there's no need to <laughs> to question me on this such classics Played like the arcade version of that <laughs> yep like afterburner climax uh this weird ass castlevania because oh, i hear God, that game is terrible because, because you're I, playing it single player yeah because i always hear some people talk about how much they loved it and i am like are you sure your brain's working correctly <laughs> It's fantastic if you've got a group of friends that will play it with you. I bet, but which means it will be mid to happen. <laughs> yeah, which, yeah, because uh, because guess how I tend to live my life. Yeah, I had it for the 360, and only ever got to play it with not even people I know, just with anyone. Full stop. Maybe five times. Yeah, and, and since this is on a CFW PS3, and considering how <laughs> yeah, considering how dangerous it is to try and run that shit and ac access PSN at the same time, like yeah, never. Th this is <laughs> nope. This is forever off the grid now. <laughs> Daytona. Yeah. It's funny. Like I ended up buying the th uh, the version on 360s Xbox Live Arcade like sometime last year, entirely because I was still without a working PS3, had no idea when I would get another one, and but I just had an itching to play Daytona that I was like, "Fuck it, I'll spend another ten bucks. <laughs> Worth it." Is it the? Does it have all the different versions of uh, Daytona on it? Uh, like, well, I mean, like, it's based primarily, like, on the, on the arcade version, so it's not including any of the stuff from, like, the Saturn or Dreamcast home ports. Right, right. Yeah, but it does have uh, neat things, uh, added to it, including a challenge mode, which I think is the single greatest addition that this version makes, because it actually teaches you how to properly play through the courses. It shows you, that, like... It, it helps you get around, like, the thing that most people don't even, like, get past whenever they played this in the arcades, which was how to take that final hairpin turn on the beginner course without crashing. Mm. We got DOA 5 last round. With all costumes. Gonna, with, I was going to say, I'm going to guess that at least three quarters of your hard drive space is taken up with DLC for this game alone. No, no, no. <laughs> you, you would think... But it's more like it's just 10 gigs total. <laughs> yeah, but the game's only like 2.5. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, come on. They aren't that. Like, this isn't Stranger of Paradise. Like, the model quality isn't that unoptimized. Oh, God, yeah. I could not play that on the PS4. I'm I refused to play it on PS4 knowing that there was a PS5 version and that would be my only good shot of enjoying it. But guess what? I don't have the $500 to spend on something I can't get in the first place. Seriously. I actually, I started playing it and I had to stop because it was giving me headaches. The graphics were that bad. Yeah, that, that is, that is just so rough. It's so unfortunate considering how awesome everything else about it looks. Yeah. Can't even get it working on my PC. I've got a, like, I've got a PC that can play Elden Ring 
on um, high settings, not ultra, but high. Yeah. And Stranger of Paradise still plays at seventy five percent speed. Jeez, yeah. On on low settings, like what the fuck, Square? You you fucked up bad. Yeah, it's like, like it it has problems that even the PC versions of Neo doesn't have. Like Team and Ninja is... is the one that made it, but I am pretty, but I almost want to put the blame like you on Square first and foremost, and not Team Ninja because they clearly wouldn't would have done better if they weren't like having to work with a company that probably has some very insane practices and demands. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, Square are the ones that say yay or nay to releasing it. So, yeah. buck stops with them. Yeah. But yeah, the remaining games got Fighting Vipers as part of the Excellent. Model 2 collection of fantastic arcade Sega ports. Does Hardcore, it have uh, um, fighting, Viper, fighting Vipers 2 on it? Uh, no. It the original? No, it it is still it is still a motherfucking crime in this day and age that Sega has not put out a modern port of Fighting Vipers two, or uh, Project Justice. Well, well, that yeah, that that's more specifically like uh, directed towards Capcom, obviously, but yeah. but it, it's, <laughs> it's the uh, the ball's more in Sega's court on that because they have a lot more games that still need ports, like Spike Out, but that's another. Um. <laughs> that's neither here nor there we got we got yeah. hardcore uprising the game that some people claim to be the best contra i don't know about that but hey i mean like it's very anime it's very stylized it's very good um i would say contra 3 still my personal favorite um oh yeah i i'm, I'm a hardcore was... i'm a hardcore stan of like yeah, the, the genesis just... game myself just because you know it's it's the most treasure like a contra game has ever been. Oh yeah, I feel like most people are either you know three or um, hardcore. Or yeah, you know, it's, it's like three or, you or uprising. Who, or you you get the weirdos who are like, I like contra force on the NES, and so like, get out of here. Yeah, or or the weirdos with surprisingly good uh, taste that are like, I love neo contra, and I am like, you sir. Uh, enjoy the pleasures of absolute absurdity in video games, and I approve. You are completely bonkers, and you are too powerful for this chat. Please leave before I explode. <laughs> yeah. Or turn into a dog, and then explode. Infamous Festival of Blood, which admittedly I've not played, even though I've played plenty of Infamous 1 and 2, but that's just because I've, uh, like, I remember, like, buying this on a whim and I was, like, getting a bunch of old uh, PS3 games years and years ago, uh, both physical and digital, but maybe I'll get around to this one day. Yeah, I never played it myself. Yeah. Got kind of weird. Peace Walker HD, just because I'd be, I, I spent an unholy amount of time on this version, which is ultimately better than trying to play the PSP version. Yep, I was the 360 version. Um, probably my joint favorite in the series, along with 3. Yeah, it's like, like mechanically, it's it's so much more like simplified and kind of shallow compared to like previous games like 3 and 4, but I'll, 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 I'll be honest... Watching Mother Base expand was weirdly satisfying as you went through it. The way I put it is, it's shallow but it's wide. Yeah, like it's when the it's not as in depth as previous games in the series. Like you know, its immediate successor three and four. Um, yeah, but there's a lot to do. Like mm -hmm. yeah, you're kind of doing the same thing over and over again, but there's enough variation in there that you don't notice. Yeah. True. I mean, like, I mean, it's the sort of thing where you look at the structure and mission size, and it's like you can tell that even though that this is a three, uh, a three D game that's meant to look like a PS two game, it get it better understands the importance of like what what needs to be designed for like a portable game because it's yeah, bite sized and it's, enough and it works weirdly and it scales up brilliantly. Like I yeah. completely forgot that this was yeah like. I don't want to say handheld game derogatively, but a lot of people do. Yeah. But and... but but even more than that, you know, this was on the PSP, a system that Sony, along with the Vita, constantly mismanaged because they completely misinterpret the point of thinking that people want handheld so that they can play their console-like experiences on the go when, like, that trying to scale it that far down is compromising. Mm. 
I mean, I, I assume, I don't know, there are people that still seem to, like, play the Switch exclusively handheld, so who am I to judge? I mean, I'm one of them, but that's only because I don't have any sockets left in my TV. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> <laughs> I have no HDMI port spare, and I cannot be fucked going back there and starting to dick around with Switch boxes or anything. True. Let's see. We got the MGS4 database, which isn't really a game, but it exists. <laughs> <laughs> 300,000 pages of absolute nonsense. All of that. It all boils down to Nana Machine Sun. And half of which retcons earlier details. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's basically everything you thought you knew was wrong, but because we just made it that way. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 just, it's just playing the Weird Al song is saying everything you know is wrong. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just, uh, just low key in the distance, like not even blaring at you. <laughs> but we also got Outrun Online Arcade, cool. the the Ratchet and Clank interquel between Tools of Destruction and A Crack in Time. Um, I only ever played a couple of the Ratchet and Clank ones. Yeah. Never, never really a series I got into. Uh, like the, I really like the PS2 games. Uh. Kraken Time is the best uh, of all the PS3 games. Literally every uh, every Ratchet game for the rest of the PS3 afterwards is kind of bad. I hear good things about Rift Apart, you know, but I think that a lot of that is carried a lot by it being early enough in the PS5's life cycle and like showing off some really impressive shit. I think PS5 owners are just glad to have a game. Yeah, and that it's like and that it's good and not on the same level as some of the other Ratchet games, like All for One. <laughs> but yeah, also Sega Rally Ar uh, Online Arcade. We basically, mm -hmm. I basically got the the big three on this system of delisted Sega arcade games, which is Afterburner, Outrun, and Sega Rally. Mm. Sonic the Fighters, the best Sonic the Hedgehog game. <laughs> Everyone loves Knack the Weasel. <laughs> and being the dynamite. Ah uh, yes, I could, or uh, and bark. Yeah, Bean and bark. I mean, I, I, I mean, I legitimately love this, even if it is kind of whack as a as a fighter overall, especially in a competitive sense. But man, it's like that model two, three D aesthetic combined with just going, hey, you know what fits like Sonic the Hedgehog squash and stretch, like cartoony, <laughs> cartoony antics, remarkably well. Yeah. We got the best, uh, the the best Japan Studios game, Tokyo yes. Jungle. Bark goes hard. I mean, he sure does. Also, hi Desmir. <laughs> so, <laughs> saw your uh, the yeah, I I saw your uh, follow uh added uh, to the uh, to the channel like uh, several hours ago. Welcome to the stream, but, man. Tokyo Jungle. Yeah, this is gonna be like something that we have to show off at some point because we're still not done. With the list of games, you know, we got VF2, again, classic. We got VF5 Final Showdown, you know, like the, what was at the time the last release of anything Virtua Fighter until Ultimate Showdown. A game that you love a worrying amount. I, VF as a whole, I love a, a hell of a lot and more people should love a hell of a lot. Otherwise, <laughs> because then that would maybe convince Sega to give it more of the respect it deserves. But I digress. <laughs> God, I mean, just because we haven't had a game in this series in like 15 years. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Wipeout HD Fury, which is like, I, I think this is definitely like my, but definitely my favorite of the Wipeout games. If only because this is one of those, uh, PS3 games where you can be like, yeah, it runs at 1080p native and 60 frames per second. Nice. Yeah. Yakuza 5. Of course. And Virtual On. <laughs> so this is basically every... Uh, this is just going to be like the Sony and Sega night. Yeah, uh, kind of, but, but that's not all. Now we're going to get into the real shit. Oh, God. Yeah. Multiman, engage. <laughs> <laughs> I am suddenly very nervous. Every time you access this, like, there's a little, like, startup jingle that plays that just painfully reminds me of Windows XP. Oh my god, I'm seeing some shit now. Yeah, so here we go. We got uh, Zelda, but with voxels. I actually uh, sold off a copy of that um, 
couple of months ago. Ah, ah, you, uh, you knew. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I found out all of a sudden that it was, uh, the price on it was suddenly like three figures and was like, well, I need yeah. money. It's weird just because I think it's like, when I looked on eBay briefly, I saw some that were like, I think only for about 60 bucks. And not, and you would think, oh, just for the disc. No, I saw it with the case as well. Maybe it was missing the manual or something, or it was probably like not in the best of conditions. But yeah, 60 uh, in this day and age, that's too much. Yeah. <laughs> for a second hand game, yes. Yeah. Best from soft game. Uh, no, uh, that that's one thing I'm going to actually have to. Uh, th this is like one of those misconceptions that is like on the same level as people that say that Tenchu. Like uh, that, from software made the Tenchu games. Mm. They didn't. They published. Uh, they published and co-developed like the uh 3D dot game heroes in Japan. This was Silicon Studios, baby. This was the people that went on to make Bravely Default. Ah, okay. Didn't yeah, know that. It it's just that everyone you know understandably uh, assumes it's a from software game because there's a lot of from software references in it <laughs> and a lot of big swords. Yeah. We got Africa. Gotta go shoot some animals. Shoot them as in shoot photographs. Yeah, that too. Yeah. We got uh, anime robots, the game. <laughs> because it's not a proper um, stream for the pair of us if we're not talking about giant robots. Yeah. We got more giant robots, all of which not as good as the PS2 games. Well, okay, I mean, like, this one it gets about as good as it gets, Verdict Day. Um... Like Five and Verdict Day I've not actually played yet, but I've heard good things about them. Yeah, they're very good. They get a lot of undeserved hate. Most of it I always see coming from the people that love this piece of shit. A four and four answer I just found a bit too jarring. They're, they're too fast. Too fast in but, a way that just feels too loose. Yeah, the, the mechs don't feel like they've got uh, any kind of weight behind them, which... Uh... Which is weird, because I would say that also describes something like Zone of the Enders, but like Zone of the Enders just has like a much more of a tightness to it. Yeah, it's, it's like Zone of the... Well, I think Zone of the Enders gets away with it because it's not coming from the, the slower and more... Um, ponderous PS2 era. Yeah, it's also upfront about the fact that like orbital frames do not adhere to the laws of gravity. Yeah, orbital frames are basically superpowers. Yeah, we got uh, the beginning of From Software's decline. <laughs> That's mean. I fucking love Demon Souls, but God, I am so fucking tired of just like what their output has <laughs> been for the last several years. We got Yoko Taro's Wild Ride Part Three. Yes. I love Dragon Guard Three. Mm -hmm. um, in case anyone hasn't, in case anyone hasn't noticed, yes, um, yes. <laughs> but I cannot take it seriously. Like it has serious moments, but the game's way too wacky and goofy to be part of um, the the larger picture in my mind. It is the most violent comedy that Yoko Taro has ever made. Yeah, it's fucking hilarious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, we've got uh, folklore, which uh, Pokemon. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's a good way to put it. We've got giant <laughs> enemy crabs. Ah, yes, one of the first games I actually got from a PS3. Funnily enough, mm -hmm. I had to. God of War three, angry pale. Of tea. Yeah, yeah, we got free. Yeah, it's just straight up angry pale faced, like petulant man child throwing a fit against the Greek pantheon. Yes, before there was boy, there was Ares! Zeus! <laughs> Which every time I hear that, I immediately just think of Zool. Like, I, I just go straight <laughs> to Ghostbusters. Yeah, we've got both I, infamous I, I, games. I just keep thinking of someone saying juice really loud. <laughs> we got Initial D Extreme Stage. Old man crossing the line. No one sleep in Tokyo. Uh, we got a Macross game, which, um, so interesting story about this, uh, to go back to the time in which it was way more common still to, like, get the movies you wanted, like, on a physical disc instead of just streaming them, um, in Japan with the Macross series, because Frontier was a big fucking deal, uh, during, like, its run, 
is that for when the Blu-ray releases of the Macross Frontier movies came out, they released them as part of what were called hybrid packs, in which... I'm, as, uh, I'm pretty sure it's the case where it's like on the Blu-ray disc itself. It contained the movie, but if you were putting it into, into a PS3, you also got access to like a small game that with missions based on events in the movie, and it was developed by Art Dink, which were the developers of the Macross games for PSP. So it has the exact same like gameplay style. Yeah, it was, it was never really a format that took off. Kind of like... Um... They, they tried something similar with um, CDs that also had DVD content. Yeah. And for whatever reason, like, you could play them in a regular CD player, but you could also, like, pop them into your DVD, and it would either have videos or it would, like, as you played the, the songs, it would play, you know, like, promo shots of the, the bands or interviews or whatever. Yeah. Um, never caught on. Yeah, it's weird, and it and it will never catch on at this point just because, like, technology has progressed in the direction that streaming is just the most practical method. Pretty much. Unless it's for <clears throat> games, because streaming games will never work. Nope. We got uh, The Last Guardian. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, so just notice, uh, we got a Macross Frontier appreciator in the chat. Hi, hi Millennium. <laughs> I like I like Delta the best, but uh, but yes, Frontier is really good. Admittedly, I I will say though, like if there are people that don't like Frontier, and it's because they're Super Robot Wars fans, I can totally understand because boy, was there a lot of Frontier representation in Super Robot Wars for a good long time, and most of it wasn't of much substance. I always wind up getting Frontier and Delta mixed up, and I'm not sure why. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, I think it's easy for me to, like, recognize what Frontier is because it's the anniversary series. Yeah. Delta's um, got a lot more that feels more distinct to itself. Yeah, Frontier's the uh, Nyan Nyan one, right? Yes, yeah, so that's the one where Ronka Lee does, like, a commercial yes. <laughs> uh, for uh, for her Chinese plays. She also does a little bit, like, when she's starting out as an idol, where she dresses up in a carrot costume and is, like, performing, like, in front of, like, a kiosk at a Zentradi mall, talking about how good <laughs> carrots are. Yeah, like, I can never remember which one is which, but you say Nyan Nyan Ni Hao Nyan, and I'm like... Gotcha. Gorgeous, <laughs> delicious de culture. Yes. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, now we're on the right page. We got the one platinum game that desperately needs a Steam release. Oh, God, yes. Amazing soundtrack. That and uh, Mad World. Yeah, and and uh, like a fun multiplayer for its time. We we seriously need a, a, a revival of this game. It needs a re-release. The world needs to experience once again the scum uh, the scumbag that is people playing as Bayonetta. <laughs> See, the, when I played it, the or when I got hold of it, the multiplayer was long dead. Oh, yeah. Granted, I only got it like six months after it came out, but, you know, <laughs> it, like if, if it's not a first-person shooter or, or um, one of the big three MMOs, mm -hmm. your multiplayer is going to be dead after about six weeks. Well, yeah, and, and it's like, for me, in my case, it's like, like, as you can see, it's called Max Anarchy, not Anarchy Reigns. Anarchy this was a, a rip made of my Japanese copy that I got. I didn't actually have to pay for it back in the day. It was a friend at the time. I was tell, uh, talking to her all about it where it was like, for the longest time leading up to this release, I wasn't really feeling anything about it because I liked Mad World. And I was like, this isn't the Mad World sequel I wanted. But then I played the Japanese demo and was like, oh, no, fuck, this is awesome, but in a different way. God damn it, I <laughs> wish I had it. Why is Sega delaying the international release by six months? It's bullshit. And then she was yeah. like, I could get off Play Asia for you. And I was like, you would? And she did. <laughs> and then I and then I just spent that summer of 2012 playing this game and even did some multiplayer with like with a mix of Japanese players and other import players at the time. <laughs> it was it was kind of a mess connection wise, but it was still fun because I mean, big uh, big brawl multiplayer beat 'em up. You know, that's that I mean, stand out. Back in the day, it was rare, and even now, it's you know barely a thing. Yeah, S same experience here minus the import. Ah, uh, uh, another another appreciator of the game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We need to make more of our voices heard. Ah, yes, I see you are a viewer of culture as well. Yes, 
Also, another game that needs, like, a modern port, maybe. I don't know, that's still debatable. Uh, MGS4. I'm, I'm amazed that it's the only one in the series that still isn't available on another console. It's like... It's like the PS3 shilling in this game is so... Or PlayStation in general, the shilling for it is so ingrained that no one left at Konami gives a shit about trying to, like, dig through whatever files that are on the disc because, let's be real, they probably don't have the source code anymore. Is like, I they don't even want to the, dig through this shit. Yeah, I imagine the product placement for Apple is probably a big headache for them as well. Yeah, that too. God, yeah, the fucking iPod shit. They also had the they also had the crossover costume with Assassin's Creed. Yep. Uh there was gonna be one for um Mass Effect as well, apparently. Um, I'm not surprised, but, but was... then it, yeah, I can see why it didn't go through since the first two games didn't come out on PS3. Uh, yeah. <laughs> kind, of, kind of like, <laughs> oh, oh, that's yeah, right. it's like, we were oh. <laughs> we were 360 exclusive for a long time, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. But, uh PS3. Boy, I had a rough couple of, like, uh, first two to three years. Holy shit. But we still got the uh, crossover costumes for um, Final Fantasy XIII, too. Oh, God, we did. <laughs> and that came out on the PS3, so what the fuck? Oh, Christ. That, that shit was bananas. We've got both versions of Nier. Ooh. Because fuck you, I can. Papa Nier is um, great, but you know what, Bro Nier is still valid. Um, I mean, I will accept that Bro Nier exists, but Papa Nier is the only Nier worth giving a damn about. I say every Nier is worth giving a damn about, including the ones that don't exist yet. Where's Mama <laughs> Nier? God damn it! Ah, uh, Mama Nier is kill. Mm hmm. Rip. Also rip. I, I have these oh. I have these installed <laughs> not because I am like, you know, yeah, I totally want to play these again. No. I keep these as a reminder. I mean, I, I assume it's part of some kind of bizarre self-flagellation ritual you take part in. I mean, you uh, saw I had so... Armored Core 4 and 4 Answer installed on this shit. I I, I mean, there's, it, there's a difference between I feel like playing something lousy and i feel like something that i have said in the pa i feel like playing something that i have said in the past causes me physical pain <laughs> well this doesn't like one both of them of the, requires both of an these... intervention the other doesn't i don't know well at least in sigma one's defense it's still ninja guy in one it's not nearly as much of a different game like sigma two is compared to two but at mm. least neither of these are ninja guy in three uh what's the best armored core to start with uh, depends kind of what you really want out of the series. Start with the very um, first game. <laughs> even even if you think, but I don't want to aim up and down with the shoulder buttons, you can remap that shit. <laughs> it, it, yeah. Because here's the thing that I always have to remind people about if they ever think about getting into Armored Core. The first 10 games of the series are literally the same but iterative. It's like yes. it's like it's the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater effect, except I think it was more justified in Armored Core's case because they were actually reserved in when they decided to attach a number to something. In Tony Hawk, I, the problem I, it had was that it was like every game was supposed to be treated like it's the next big sequel, but half of the Armored Core games are like these are just like standalone expansions because you can I carry over your safe data. Like, I'd say it's more like Street Fighter Two. And uh, each game, as you say, was a slight iteration, but yeah. not enough to bump the number up one. Yeah, like, if there was a number attached, you know that that was, like, going to be an introduction of, like, brand new system mechanics and balance changes. Yeah. And, yeah, my, but, like, my, yeah. My suggestion would be to start with the PS2 era, because analog controls are a godsend. Uh, well, only if you're starting with Nexus, which is, like, <laughs> in the latter half of the PS2. Like, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Shit, I forgot about that. Yeah. Did, I, because we didn't have analog controllers for the first four goddamn years. Well, <laughs> yeah, whatever. I've, 
I'm sure I'm sure there will be content in the future where I'll, where I'll actually go more in depth with Armored Core, but this stream is not the place for it. Uh, getting near the end of the list, uh, we got the, the the two remaining good PS3 Ratchet games. Tools of Destruction is okay, but Crack in Time is great. Probably you don't have the HD collection on there. Uh, because I have the PS2 versions, and those uh, and those do not have the problems that the HD version has. Uh, is it another Silent Hill HD collection thing? Not not to the same degree, but there is some very jarring, like, technical fuck-ups. Ah, gotcha. Like, like Ratchet's helmet in Going Commando and Up Your Arsenal not form-fitting to his fucking head. It's like the oh, mesh yeah. for it is, like, 1.1 times larger than it's supposed to be. Wow, that, how, how do you fuck that up? Uh, you get companies that do not give a shit, that's what. Ah, oh, fair enough. Rich Racer! Remember that one? I stopped playing the Ridge Racer games after Rage Racer, I think. Just never really, or Ridge Type 4, I should say. Yeah. Um, never really got into them after that because they started, it felt like they were going a bit too far into the, um, like they were trying to chase Gran Turismo a bit too much rather than just being like arcadey racers. I think it's still pretty arcadey. Uh, enough. It's just that, you know, like uh, R Ridge Racer 7, I think is definitely the one where, I forget if it introduced it here or if it was the PSP games, but this is like where Nitrous became a part of the game mechanics. Oh, because this, yeah, this came out around about the time the, the uh, every racing game wanted to be Fast and the Furious. Yeah, but also I think just the bigger damning thing about Ridge Racer at the end of the day was that, like, for a while, Namco was feeling obligated that the, that every time there was a new system that was coming out, they had to put out a new Ridge Racer at launch because that's <laughs> what the first one was. And the, and yeah. also just the content is just constant recycling of the same goddamn tracks every fucking time. Uh, remember they tried to do that with the with the 3DS. That was an interesting game. <laughs> oh, oh, you think that was you think that was bad? You remember how it started on the Vita? <laughs> No, thankfully. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let's never speak of those versions again. <laughs> <laughs> Forget, was there a, a DS one as well? I don't think there was DS. I know there wasn't one for the Wii, which mm. feels like a missed opportunity considering they should have looked at that and gone, oh, we can jump on this motion control bandwagon. But no, I mean, whatever. We got Excite Truck <laughs> anyway. That was fine. We can just do a straight port of the PS1 titles. No one will notice. Yeah. <laughs> KOF 13, the last time KOF was proper 2D in terms of graphics. Yeah. But whatever, 14 and 15 still series. played well. Not my favorite in the series, mainly because I don't like Ash Crimson. I'm not surprised. There's a lot of people no that don't does. like Ash Crimson. <laughs> yeah, he's he's divisive, and that's all we'll say on that matter. He's divisive, but even as someone that doesn't play as him or has not like really bothered playing much of the games in the Ash Crimson saga... I respect his design. <laughs> he's a very he's a very solid looking pretty boy design. I forget who the artist was for or who the designer was for him, but it's the most like on point design he's ever done. Yeah. <laughs> like I kind of felt like every every character design he'd ever did was building up to Ash Crimson. Yeah. But yeah, and, and funny enough, it's like, I actually have the Steam version of KOF 13. The only reason I decided to add this here is because I was able to just, like, get, like, a copy that and, and also get access to, like, the two DLC fighters that for some reason never made it to the PC version. Oh, who's that? Uh, One of those, I believe, is, like, the final boss character, or at least one of the boss characters that looks like Ash, but he wears hmm. white instead of red. And then the other is Billy Kane. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, but it's I but, you were but it's say, like yeah, they managed to sneak K nine 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 in there somehow. I'm not sure. <laughs> no, how. no, but no, but it's <laughs> it's Billy Kane, but like with the uh, with the, like the the sun uh, but but it's like the shirtless overalls version, you know? Right. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, I, I mean, at least they were able to get K four nines back for fifteen as Cronin. Yeah. It what is like the best roundabout way for them to like get that character back in. <laughs> and he still, still looks like, like an Akira reference. That's the best part. <laughs> well, that's why I like him. Yeah, I mean, he 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 does the meat tornado arm and everything. Yeah, 
Although in 15 now, it's the it's the metal bit tornado arm now. But I mean, it's still yeah. it's still the same. It's still the same move in hitbox. They know. Good enough. You know. We we got Time Crisis Four without the Gun Con Three because I still need to buy that separately. But I have this just in case. <laughs> we got VF5 Vanilla because I think it's very easy to forget that there were other versions of VF5 prior to Final Showdown because that was because Final Showdown was what people had to work with for the longest time. Yeah. We've got uh, Yakuza Man in Okinawa. We got Yakuza Man and Friends, and we've got <laughs> Yakuza Man with guns. I maintain Dead Souls would be a great game if the controls didn't suck. <laughs> and the frame rate was do. higher. <laughs> frame rate, I don't worry about so much. The yeah. controls absolutely suck ass. <laughs> oh, yeah. And re make it unplayable. If the controls didn't suck, Dead Souls... Because, I mean, the, the team that... Uh, that did it went on to do um, digital. Oh God, what was that game again? Binary Domain. Binary Domain. That's it. They went on to do that, which is one of the most underrated games for the the PS3 and 360. Yeah. So the... they knew what they were doing. They just mm -hmm. fucked up the control somehow. Yeah. Also, hello in the Roddy. Uh, thanks for thanks for dropping by. We're uh, just breaking down all the list of totally legit PS3 backups I have on this system before we <laughs> finally dive in uh, on playing some of these. Paid for with legally acquired Twitch box. Yes, We've got Macross Thirty, which is but can be best described as yo. What if we took like the Art Dink Macross games, but also made it like an action RPG? So it still plays like those games, but you have RPG mechanics and like a uh, hub world you fly around in. It's interesting. I mean, it kind of sounds like um, Panzer Dragoon Saga. Kinda, but like it, there's no on foot sections like Panzer Dragoon <laughs> Saga. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> yeah. Those sucked. <laughs> I said it. Yeah. Got uh, more of the Macross hybrid pack games, Last Frontier, and at the bottom, uh, a hybrid game for Do You Remember Love? Oh, wow. Yeah. We've got uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn, made by From Software. Think about that for a moment. I'm trying to, but the, it's just, like, not meshing together. And then we Sorry. have uh, Gundam Senki 0081. Okay. Yeah. The yeah, which is uh yeah. As you can see, like there are Gundam games on here, but not any of the garbage games like the uh, like Crossfire. I definitely like my I I yeah, start from the beginning again. <laughs> Derp. Yeah. Um I have a soft spot for the Gundam Warriors games yeah. primarily because like they came at a time when no Gundam content really came out, at the very least in Europe. Like, right. we got, up until that point, the most we'd seen is we'd seen Gundam Wing. Mm -hmm. um, and that was about it. Well, so, yeah. you know, for this being a crossover of pretty much everything up to, I think it was Double O, mm -hmm. was the most recent game, uh, series. At yeah. The time. Um, so, like, I knew of all these characters and all these storylines uh, from what other people had said and from what I'd seen. Um, so actually being able to put some of these things in context was phenomenal. Yeah. Well, like, the reason so, I brought up specifically Gundam Crossfire is that because that was, like, the PS3 Gundam launch game that came out. Mm -hmm. It was, like, absolutely terrible gameplay and performance-wise and was more or less the reason why, like, Bamco just stopped bringing over Gundam games to the West. Yeah, it was more like uh, Ring of Red, if I remember correctly. Something like that. I just remember that it was, like, people, like, like anytime I heard uh, Crossfire brought up, it was talked about as if it was infamously bad, and that uh, this game, uh, Senki 0081, was like the game that was made a couple years after it, with like an improved engine and better mechanics, and of course it had to be back when, you know, they decided, fine, no more Gundam games for anywhere outside Japan. 
Um, just a shame because what little I played of this actually feels like very, very solid. Yeah, my understanding of Crossfire was it was very slow, very ponderous, and your teammates were complete garble. Yeah. So that's all the games. Cool. Almost an hour. <laughs> Let's play some 3D oh, dot shit, game here. Goddamn. Yeah. All right. So we selected that. And now we just click this because now it's like, hey, you totally have a legit disc inserted into your PS3, right? It's the game, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, totally. It's okay. I like I... I said, the, the PS3 is retro now. Sony doesn't give a shit. Well, like, there is the, the new retro. Sorry, there's the new Sony um, totally not Game Pass, you guys, thing coming out, which is going to be supported for about 18 months and then forgotten. Yeah, because they can't be bothered to do actual PS3 emulation. See, look at that. Silicon Studio. That's the actual developer. Yeah, like wow, I said. That like, was quick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I I'm, I kind of habitually, like, after a while, like, press start to get past the, uh, the splash screens. Because I've had instances where, for whatever reason, this game likes to randomly, like, hang on a black screen for me sometimes. Mm. And it took me a while to like get this dump of the game fixed so that I could actually run it on my PS3. And sometimes it'll still intermittently crash, but like not at consistent spots. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. I, I feel like after a while, it's less my hard drive that's the issue. It's just that this, like the only way that this I could get a better dump is if I had a physical copy to rip the game from, but I'm yeah. not gonna spend the $60 for the version I saw just for that purpose. <laughs> I'm already trying yeah. to sell off my PS3 <clears throat> games, damn it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a fun game, but it's very lightweight. You know, like, something like that I would pay for, say, one of the limited editions of Nier. Yeah. Um, I certainly would not be paying it for this. Yeah, because, yeah, it's... It is meant to be a very quaint game. It's charming, but it does not... You do not need to, like... Put it in the same league as like other noteworthy like cult classic games that might have reason to command the price they do on auction sites because this yeah, doesn't. Yeah, it's it's no Echo Knight. Let's be let's be quite um, upfront yeah. about that. And fortunately, it's not like a Rule of Rose where it is so shit that it, uh, that it feels like a crime that is being charged too much. Yeah, I, Rule of Rose is one of those games I always wanted to like, and then I played it. Yeah. And I know, you know, yes, it has an absolutely fantastic story. The gameplay gets in the way of the story. It does. <laughs> it's I, like, I, it, it is entire, it is exactly the kind of game that is like prime Let's Play material in the sense that you have some other poor sod play the game for you. <laughs> Yeah, I've enjoyed some very good playthroughs of it, mm -hmm. um, but as I said, I've, I've tried playing it myself, and it... No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. Alright. Like, I, 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 I have a fondness for, you know, B and C tier games, but even I've got no limits. Yeah, so... We're selecting a new game. We obviously have a lot of characters to choose from, you know? Including Metal Wolf. Or, I'm sorry, President. Ha <laughs> Richard! We've also got Okita. We have Raiko. We have White Glint for some reason. I can't. Be <laughs> I cannot believe they went for this asshole instead of, like, a better Armored Core rep. Like, Nineball uh, or Zenaida or, or anyone else would have been preferable. I mean, I can't even make out what's what on that model. Yeah, it it yeah, that's the weird part. Like Metal Wolf is more recognizable than like the model they got for White Glint cuz it's supposed to yeah. be like it's supposed to represent like the silhouette of White Glint's model in for answer and it looks like it's basically boosting forward at all times. But yeah, it just looks like yeah. black and white pointy bits with red sparkles on it. Yeah. I mean, you also just described, uh, like, the entirety of 4th of Gen Armored Core mecha design. This is true. We got, we got Tenchu characters. Rikimaru, Ayame. 
Oh yeah, we've got not uh, we got not black mage. <laughs> totally not a wizard robe. No idea what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's funny. Like I said that this was a uh, Zelda with voxels. In reality, this is this is NES slash Famicom with voxels. It goes beyond yep. just the obvious like Zelda inspirations. Yeah. Uh, and, oh yeah, and there's Shippu. But then here we're at a point where like this is where the remaining characters are all stuff that was added in the 1.01 patch, which did not weirdly enough come out on the on the European version. So uh, like this, that would this be why I don't recognize it. Yeah, and this is why I ha why I had so much trouble getting this version because the only re uh, easy to find dumps of this game that you can find online are of the European version. I had to, like, I had to go through, like, uh, for context, I had to go through Vim's lair to get the U.S. version. Found out that some of the files were just bad. Do some searching online for, like, a random website that just happened to have the fixed files for the U.S. version. Add those to the original folder. And then it got it to work, except for the times where, uh, where like, less than 1%, it'll just crash on a black screen. Yeah, that's more work than I could be bothered with most games. Yeah, but all these extra ones, as you can see, these are all user-submitted characters. Yeah, I was going to say, didn't they have a contest in Japan? In, I think it was in Famitsu? A, a Japanese contest and also Atlas in the US held one as well. Ah. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that this is like a mix of both. Or it might just Duck be Man. For... Yeah, Duckman. Quack, quack, motherfucker. <laughs> You could play as an arcade stick. Or a, or, a, or, a, or, a, or a snake girl. Are the... I take it these aren't particularly uh, animated because I really want the mimic to open up and just spit out a sword. Oh. I'm pretty... Like, no, I'm pretty sure they are, they are animated. It's just that when you're selecting them and they're rotating, this is only like their idle stance, you know? Like if they're just uh. standing... But <clears throat> Robo Team, they often argue about who will form the head. Uh, but taco. yeah, but then also as an extra one, they added Sack Boy, and this uh, and this is the one where they where this is the only model where you can press triangle to bring up the copyright notice about Sack Boy <laughs> and Sack Girl. Well, it's generally with these kind of contests. With user submitted stuff, you're they have it in the um in the terms and conditions. Yeah. If you anything you send us, we owe the copyrights to. Well, well, no, that uh, that's the thing though. Sackboy isn't like one of these user created ones. This was literally added, I think, like officially, because <laughs> because also look at the text. Look how many trademarks there are. <laughs> Sackboy TM, the lovable star from Little Big Planet TM. Hero, just in case you forgot. Yeah. <laughs> but forget all about that. I made something special for this demonstration. Oh, uh, boy. It's me! <laughs> I figured I nice. had to. Because <laughs> um, it probably should not be of a surprise to anyone... But with all, like, the types of games that I think about wanting to, like, you know, do playthroughs on stream, because that's pretty much my whole deal, um, I'm wanting to do a playthrough of this once, uh, like, after this grab back stream is done. Like, whatever progress I make on, like, the opening f uh, few minutes of this, I will continue on for the foreseeable future on stream. So I thought I might as well do this properly by making a custom avatar that's based on me. And, uh, yeah, I, I felt very proud of it, especially because I made sure to stick as closely as possible to the style guide of all the other main characters, you know? Mm. Like, the ones you see on the front page. Like, I made sure to, like, get, like, the right, like, size and proportions for, like, the head, the eyes, you know? Where, like, like how stubby the legs should be, etc. Yeah. And here we are with a very Zelda-like uh, uh, intro text crawl about the backstory. Yeah, it's kind of funny how this would basically be the opening or like the story dump of every 
the Zelda game from the Wii onwards. Yeah, more than anything, this actually just reminds me primarily of Wind Waker, because they had this exact same thing minus the pixel art. Mm. And of course, as you as you would expect, obviously you can't hear it through the screen share, but everyone else at home can. Um, this is very bootleg Zelda music as fuck. <laughs> this game just revels in it. So yeah, the yeah, the great hero uh, vanquished the evil, and peace of uh, uh, and peace like came over the land. It was great. However, uh, people got tired of living in this shithole after a while. Because, <laughs> like, yeah, it's peaceful, but now but now there's nothing exciting since we don't have a great evil for a hero to banish. <laughs> Man, I liked it more when we were all miserable. No, but no, the actual reason is that people had lost interest in 2D worlds. That's why they were tired of being sprites. So the king boldly declared, This... Is an age of 3D. Wee, wee, wee. And look at that. Oh, yep. So that worked, except mm, unfortunate news has uh, has arisen. Shouldn't it really be a dark square? Hmm. I mean, that clearly looks like an orb right now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, now we just gotta we gotta hope for a hero to come around that can get the dark orb back from the bishop. Yeah, all of these uh, splash screens are based on other games. Yeah, absolutely. Like I remember when I first saw the one that is just made to look like the the box art of Castlevania one. I was yeah. like, oh yeah, these people know what they're doing. Uh, Castlevania and the original Final Fantasy are the two most obvious ones. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a couple for Dragon Quest as well. Yep. So obviously this is not our character. This is the original hero. We gotta we gotta put the sword away now that our time as hero is done. <laughs> and yeah, that's a big ass sword. Yep. I remember when this came out, everyone just went completely nuts because, yes, the graphics are obviously blocky, but they also, for the time, looked like really, really realistic plastic. Yeah. Like, that. Like there's a, like a weird Lego quality to the way that these look. Yeah. I mean, even... The game never like, really caught on, but... Yeah. I feel like, even with, like, the Lego like concept that I was like describing like there are items you collect called small blocks and they literally look like tiny ass Lego pieces <laughs> like almost exactly like one by two uh, units of uh, Lego bricks so here we go time to put the sword away in the lost woods long live Dodnia motherfuckers Know, it's, it's weird. The sword looked like 10 times that size not 30 seconds ago. Yeah. That said, though, like, obviously I get what the, what the point of it is, where it's like, you know, in the original Legend of Zelda, when you were at max health, when you swung your sword, it shot out beams, you know? Like, a, it mm. was a projectile. Like, that's cool. This game's solution to that, where it's like, let's just make it so you have a giant fuck-off sword when you're in max health, I think is even better. What if sword, but larger? Yeah. Like, that's the thing that Zelda needs these days, if I'm being honest. Like, yes. like, pe like, like people get hard every time the Master Sword sh uh, shows up, and half the time the, uh, the games are like, oh, and you swing it but after charging, you can totally, like, shoot out a projectile. But it's like, how about I just pull out the Master Sword and it's just Big as like as like a house in Kakariko. <laughs> yeah, like I, whenever I play uh, one of the Dark Souls games or whatever, I always wind up going for like a strength build, just uh, so yeah. I can fill around with a sword the size of a castle. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest. I just want to play guts. 
Yeah, some people want to be Guts, some people want to be Simon. Me, I just want to be whatever lets me win. Mm -mm. Or like in the case of Demon Souls, it's more like, I just want to be a whatever makes me super powerful even when I'm an inch away from death. Because boy, boy do I love playing as a glass cannon in that fucking game. That game had some wacky, wacky builds. <laughs> oh yeah, it had a lot of wacky, wacky everything. <laughs> Oh, man. It's, it's the one game in the series. Well, technically part of the series, but not really. Yeah. That I've never been able to get into properly. That, that's weird, because it's like, I fucking love Demon's Souls. But I am so heavily critical of Dark Souls by comparison, and I just do not find it nearly as interesting. Mm. Uh, Bloodborne's the one that I absolutely adore. Like, oh. I just want more Bloodborne. Oh, yeah, I, I love Bloodborne as well. So it's like, man, I'm, I'm almost thinking after this, like, I might just have to, like, load up Demon Souls as well just so we can keep that conversation going. Because right now, I'm going to quickly get what things I can out of the way about 3D Dots while we're here. <laughs> so, yeah, obviously, as I mentioned, like, I've made uh, my character, you know, who is me. When you're, when you're doing stuff in the character creator, you basically have, like, six, uh, like, models you have to make. One is the standing, uh, like the regular neutral model where your character just stands. Then there are two more, which are the ones that it alternates between when you're moving. So obviously you would make a model where it's like right foot forward, left foot back. And then mm. the other model is the one where that's just mirrored. Then you yeah. have uh, two attack models where it's like one is for when you attack with a sword and one when you attack with a sub weapon. But... Most of the time, the models just use the exact same attack animation because it's your character's just using their right hand with it. And then there's the one for when you get, like, a key item and you have, you know, your pose you do when you get the Zelda fanfare. You know, the da-da-da-da. And I want you to pay close attention to what I decided on for my uh, huzzah uh, animation, as I'm going to call it. And uh, there's uh, your character giving double eagles. You know me too fucking well. <laughs> yeah! Fucking called it! Got a sword, bitch! <laughs> give me my shield! <laughs> Fuck you, give me a shield. <laughs> Yeah. Like, like so many people, uh, like, uh, so many other VTubers out there, like, like, sometimes they have fun, uh, fun with being all, like, they have, like, an alternate uh, form that is basically their gremlin mode. Yeah. My alternate form is just, I just go full Popico. <laughs> like, that, like, that is my true nature. The, uh, I realize this, the more as I get older, that it's like, no, I just, it, like, <laughs> inside of me is a Popico waiting to come out and go ape shit. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see um the for the announcement of season two of Pop Team Epic, they released a whole but like they did a pop up store in Japan. I I don't think I saw that. I remember seeing the initial announcement video where they got Aoi Shota back and like talking with his evil future self. That like that um, like that was a fucking trip. There was uh it was to celebrate season two of that and a couple of other shows yeah and one of the things they had was uh acrylic stands which oh, you know pretty common yeah. character good and one of the ones they had for pop team epic was a middle finger <laughs> of course of course just a, just a hand flipping off that i was like great <laughs> i was just like i wonder how much they're being sold for on eBay. Yeah, I feel like I need one. Because I'm betting it's not going to be cheap. <laughs> oh, October cannot come soon enough since that's when Season 2 is going to be airing. Yep. And funny enough, that's also my birthday month, so I'm going to take that as like a, as a birthday gift from Japan to me. <laughs> Hashtag blessed. Yes. Ah. Okay. So yeah, we got ourselves a little dinky sword, obviously. It's not as big as the hero's sword, but we'll get it soon enough. After we fight these two guardians. Oct ben, uh, ben has a good point. October cannot come soon enough because that means it's back to getting cold outside. Yeah, well, 
God, no, I'm, I, I'm one of those weirdos who actually likes the sun and the warmth. Which is ironic, I understand, but, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know me. I'm living in Alaska, for Christ's sake. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's almost Scotland in terms of how long the winters are. Yeah. Though that said, if there's one thing I'm glad about now that I've, like, moved into my new residence, it's that, um... Because I am no longer living in, like, a condo, like, complex or whatever where it's, like, I'm on the top floor... I don't have to worry about heat from the uh, from like the units below me traveling up and making my room into a sweat box. Oh. It's like it like it was kind of jarring at first, but it felt so good uh, like when I got into my uh, new room and just being here and it's like wow, it is actually like not so warm in here that I feel like clothes are becoming a liability. <laughs> I can live like a human. Yeah. So there we go. We got the hero sword. Hi, Navi. Hey, listen. Oh, sorry. Her name's Lee. Whatever. You you know who you are. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not biting your head off for health. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how I imagine it goes whenever, like, you uh, use a fairy to regain all your health in Zelda. Yeah. It pops a the top off like a can of Pringles. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm yeah. I'm going to hold you to that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll see if you'll be useful. <laughs> Yeah, and she joined the party, even though this isn't an RPG where a, where a party would be applicable, but don't tell anyone. Yeah, let, less a party, more of an entourage. True. Less of a party, more of a tag-along. <laughs> so there it's we like go. It's like a keychain with, with wings, really. There's our sword. That said, though, uh, it has a current fatal flaw. It does not go through objects. <laughs> That's just... Wow. Yeah, but fortunately that can be fixed, because there's a blacksmith in town, though I don't think we'll have enough money on this, like, first, uh, on this first section to uh, get it. That'll be more like, I think, uh, sometime after the first dungeon. Because you bet, yeah. with, like, with how much hidden secret shit there is in this game, you bet I'm going to be using a walkthrough for the rest of the playthrough. I'm only just oh, going. Yeah. I'm only just going to be going through like the first dungeon because I've done enough practice runs to know that this is how, this like th these are the steps I need to take. Yeah, I, I I got my PS3 back in about 2012, I want to say. Yeah. Um, and this, as I said, this was one of the first games I got for it, and I remember there being a lot of Easter eggs in it. There are. There's a lot of things that are called events, which I don't, which I'm pretty sure, like, they do not have, like, a checklist that you can look at in the menus or anything. So you just have to keep a note of, like, which ones there are. And there's a very, very long running series of events that is just a one big reference to From Software because it's just some random jack offs in this country finding a cave and being like, hey, let's make a mecha game. We're a developer. <laughs> Okay, so now we've shown him that we got the sword. Now he's given us the quest, telling us about the Dark King, who was sealed away in the orb, and now the orb's been stolen, so we gotta get it back. And in order to do that, we have to get the six legendary orbs from the six sages. Yeah, we'll do it. Why not? Yeah, nothing better to do, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I was just past. I was just visiting, really. So, first temple is west, and by and as far as how far west it is, uh, it is in the screen immediately west of the village that we are going to, which is one screen immediately west from this fucking castle. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I uh, first played this. I was like, oh, okay, it's west. Um... Okay, well, it can't be here because that's way too close. Yeah. No, but you look at the... You bring up the map. You see that purple icon? 
Yeah. They, uh, they at least let you know that much. But good luck keeping track of all the secrets on your own. And the first things yeah. we got to do is check out with some of these houses along the northern part of this. By paying a visit to Dick. Now children can be cruel. <laughs> you notice really needs another C at the end of that name. <laughs> well, uh, well, well, the reason it's called that is because it's Sid backwards. <laughs> that's, oh, yeah. That's the joke. Ah, yes. This this is a very good reason why you want to come here as soon as you can. Because dash boots help a lot. Well, not immediately, because when you use the dash boots, as you find, you have your sword out. And if the sword in its current state collides with anything, uh, it stops you. Which is why we need the pierce upgrade whenever we get the money, which won't be until after the first dungeon. <clears throat> Message from Dr. Dick. This is not Please a song help. by Erotic. Shut up. <laughs> Dash boots completed. Get your weapons ready. Get equipped with dash boots. I mean, sh I mean, look, I know I'm wearing blue, but I am not the blue bomber you think I am. Yeah, see what I was talking about where I say that this is a just pulling every anything and everything from the Famicom era. I always wanted to do that. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, he just wanted... He, he was just waiting for his opportunity... To do with Dr. Light impression. And he did. <laughs> hey, you're convenient. Get over here a second. <laughs> Just pulls up in a voxel uh, made like open cap com uh, convertible from Crazy Taxi. Goes, you're okay. Get in. <laughs> Steal this house's money. Talk with this dude who tells us about like special monsters that have a very rare chance, uh, chance of showing up, but drop really good items if you kill them. And he wants us to slay 10 of them. That won't happen for a very long time, but might as well promise. Yeah, I think I, I think I got about maybe a uh, third to halfway through the game and do not remember seeing any of them. Yeah. Blue Sea the Slime. He dreams of becoming a human someday. Maybe by talking uh, to him in that instance, he will. Well, it makes a change from people becoming slimes. True. Really popular in anime right now. Yeah, it's weird. Hmm. Hmm. I see we have found the protagonist of a love triangle <laughs> anime. <laughs> Yeah, for a second, I thought he was wearing a turban, and I was like, is this Dragon Quest V? <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that'd be a bit too late for this game, Zara, I would think. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to help him choose between his childhood friend or the daughter of a wealthy family. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's she's got, what she's you got a, like. She's got a great spread of spells. Yeah. Ah. Ah, are, they, are these got, spells of the tantric kind? She's got a really robust spell book. Should he choose the childhood friend or not? For the record, whichever choice I, I make, wh whatever he goes with, uh, as far as I, I was able to like look up, there's no specific re reward that comes with it. Uh, it's, again, this is just one of those events that you're, you just interact with because it's there. Oh, well then, got to go with the one with the massive bell book. She owns huge tracts of land? Yes. <laughs> no. So you choose the rich girl then? Yes. I knew that would be the right choice. <laughs> got a gal all, get a... Get all up in that massive arsenal of spells. There you go. Enjoy your new sugar mama. <laughs> she then threw herself off a cliff. Bad <laughs> end. Uh, yeah, that's what they don't show you about these events. <laughs> Alright, let's go in we'll here. We'll be friends forever. Oh. Um... 
Forever didn't last that long, as the song goes. <laughs> we got a bottle. Fuck yeah. I mean, if this was Zelda, that would be like one of the most important items right there. Yeah. I mean, it might be important later on. You don't know. They're giving it away. Yeah. Admittedly, I do not know if it is as important for later in the game because I've still never beaten this in all the times I've played it. Which is why I want to stream myself to see if I can actually manage that. Especially if I have a walkthrough on hand this time. Yeah. I, as I said, I think I think I got maybe third to halfway through the through the game and remember very little of it. Same. Yeah, I just remember that some things got like unreasonably hard at a point. Or at least it felt that way. But that might have been also because I wasn't keeping up on like secrets and whatever. Because yeah, it might have been I, the sort I of thing remember... where like the balancing was probably implied to really only uh, be as such, if, assuming that you were keeping up on, like, getting health increases and other items. Yeah, I think the um, the the difficulty curve was intended so that you would be constantly seeking out everything. Yeah. Isn't 3D great? I think a 3D mech game would be a blockbuster. Would you play it? Do oh, God, no. Do, do you even fucking know who you're talking to? Front mission for life. Just the, the first one in um, Gun Survivor, Gun Hazard, or whatever it's called. Yeah, uh, whatever. We all know what he's talking about. <laughs> you know the one. Yeah. He's the... <laughs> like, his dream is my dream. And I want to see him succeed, goddammit. <laughs> okay, so as it turns out... um. As of this moment, I am 45 coins short of what I actually need before I go west of this village. There was an iron shield in that shop, and I and it costs 100 coins. Yeah, I remember thinking it was optional. That was silly. Yeah. It's always good to get these upgrades. But here you can see the dash in action. Meow. <laughs> Just... <laughs> just run over these motherfuckers. Just straight up massacring the bunnies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those bunnies will fuck you up, though. Yeah. Everything in this game will fuck you up. I mean, it is so weird how so often I am just getting, like, the very small coin amounts. Like, some of the practice runs, I shit you not, when I beat those, like... These two statues, one of them dropped, like, a hundred, uh, a hundred coin thing. Which, I don't know, since I can refight them, maybe this'll do it again. Let, let's see. No, no, that's money. Not That's not money, that's uh, health. And you're at full health anyway, so it's even less than useless. Yeah. There it is! Hey! Alright, now let's go. <laughs> Wow, that is, that is actually a relief that you could just fight those dudes again. Hmm. Like, I, I for some reason thought that because of, like, their placement in the story that it absolutely would have been just, like, one and done. But no, well, that, I mean, that's if, pretty good. If you were only getting, like, one in five coins, that would have been at least another 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, that would have been, would have been kind of brutal. But also, as you can see... Boy, it was a good decision to get the dash boots, huh? Oh, yeah. Like, these are great. Except when yeah, it bounces think... off like that, but that'll be corrected in very short order. I mean, at yeah, the very I... least, it's like, even after I buy the shield, I won't really be able to buy any upgrades for the sword, but I can at least show people what that looks like. So there yeah, we go. When... No, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, just say, yeah, bought the shield, and now it has automatically replaced our old shield because all, because, uh, we do get multiple swords, and you can equip different ones, but shields are always a linear upgrade from the last. So, that's something you don't have to worry about. And here is, here are the upgrades that you could go for, you know? Like, you can increase the length, or the width, mm -hmm. the strength, mm -hmm. and... Uh, spin level. Beam. Nah, I've got enough for that. Oh, come on. You don't have anything for beam? Uh... Now, if it was bees... <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> but then here's what we would actually want. The one that I would say, like, for all swords that you get in the game, this is a number one priority for upgrades, and that's Pierce. Because what it does is that it avoids the problem you've been seeing where my sword bounces off of everything or is unable to perfectly spin. It just goes through, like, like terrain objects. It's fantastic. Yeah, penetration is important. Also special, which is specific to certain swords, obviously, because it can be whatever it wants. But as you can see as well on the right, there's potential. The idea is that you cannot, like, upgrade every single category of a sword to max. Because whatever, because each uh, cost for these levels takes away from your potential, you know? So, yeah, like, when you run by... out of potential, that's that's all the upgrades you get. Unless you uh, tell the smith to, like, hey, you know what, just reset this to zero and I'll respec. Yeah, if I, if I remember right, it's one-to-one uh, -one with how much you spend, isn't it? Yes, pretty much. So that's what the blacksmith is like. And let's see, I'm pretty sure I have gone all the other major events out of the way. I talked with the dude at the inn, who will later go on to form the From Cave. <laughs> From Cave? But we're going there. <laughs> there we go. Also, I really love the super extended sword where it's like uh, you swing it around towards items and it just picks them up. Yeah. That's... Again, all the more reason why this is a better max <clears throat> level like weapon buff than the fucking shooting laser beams in Zelda 1. Given how ridiculously long and wide your sword can get, yeah, it's helpful. There's a small block. That's the block I was talking about that looks so much <laughs> like it's just a Lego brick. Yep, that's it's a 2x2, two two, all right. Yeah, 2x1 I think it was specifically, but yeah, it is similarly the small that's kind of iconic. But oh no, I got... Mm. Ah. Oh, never mind, I got my health back. But I also had picked up an item where it's like, for a limited time, if you pick it up, regardless of your health, you'll always have the, uh, the max health bonus for your sword, you know? So that's nice when you get it, but otherwise you're still incentivized heavily... You need to keep your shield up or be very good at dodging. Yeah. Also, if it's not uh, readily apparent, whenever you attack, if you press a direction to the side mm -hmm. immediately after, you do a big swipe with it. Yep. And if you're able to do it like quickly and cleanly, you can do like a full 360. Yeah. Or, or, it's, or it's... more commonly 270s. Yeah, they, I don't think, I, I think it's mentioned in the manual, but the game never really draws attention to it. It's just a sort of a thing that you notice. Yeah. And, and you know, it's like, it's not too, like, obtuse of, like, a, a detail that it's, like, n anyone that plays this for a few minutes, like, they couldn't possibly go through the game without noticing that they can control, like, where their sword is pointing after they uh, deploy it. Yeah, you'll pick it up really quickly. Mm-hmm. And here we go, now in the classic uh, type of Zelda dungeons. I forget, is it in here or is it the, the once you're done with it that there's a sort of pseudo Lost Words puzzle? Uh, I think it's when you're going to the second dungeon. Ah, because yeah. I remember that and being like, oh great, we're doing this already. Yeah. Oh yeah, also some things I actually wanted to, I forgot to show off uh, soon enough, but like... Uh, you can do all sorts of things like adjust the brightness and contrast. So, it, like, uh, so like uh, adjusting color, you can make it as washed out or saturated as you want. And oh wait, and I can for, oh, wait, for, I can uh, only change this on the outside. Damn it! But whatever, you can actually change the camera angles so that it's like you could put it to like camera C. I think it is, and it's as close to top down as you can get. Okay, there we go. Cool. All right. Hmm, if only we had some shot of hooking it. Yeah. Well, I'm out of ideas. <laughs> We've tried nothing and we're all out of ideas. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Oh, well, it's it's fine. It's whatever. I mean, like, at the very least, uh... 
it's not a hook shot we're getting here, but it will be like a, a similar like projectile that may or may not come back to us. <laughs> That's right, it's a rock. <laughs> be great we if, like, picked... one of these 2D style Zelda games was just like, fuck it, y your special sub-weapon that you can pick up in the dungeon, it's a rock. <laughs> no, it's a brick filled with tiny little beetles that just fly it back to you. <laughs> really slowly, so it just kind of, like, vaguely hovers towards you. Oh, but God. only, like, a couple of inches off the ground. <laughs> fuck, that would be amazing. <laughs> it's the most unimpressive Zelda item ever. Yeah. But it's mandatory. <laughs> so you just have to sit there for like two minutes while this... No, but... It, it, it's, yeah. it's literally just a rock filled with bees. <laughs> I, I think I still like my idea of it just being like a dungeon item you get that's key for progress is a rock. But if only just to highlight the absurdity that like rocks are everywhere. You couldn't have just picked these up elsewhere before <laughs> coming here. <laughs> But then just make it be like, it arbitrarily makes it so that you realize, oh, rocks are important. And then when you go out into the overworld, every rock you come across, you could potentially pick up. I mean, they kind of did that in Breath of the Wild. Oh, right. I, I should have figured, because I've still not played Breath of the Wild, and I don't know if I ever fucking will. Uh, I mean, I understand why people like it so much, but most of the Zelda series just leaves me cold. I mean, it's, I mean, it's more of just the fact that it's like, I mean, you know, it's a Nintendo game, so obviously it's still going to be full price on their eShop, but also it's just that, like, I've been yep. so focused on, like, other game priorities, you know? I'm just yeah. trying to get my retro game bucket list, like, as cleared as I possibly can, especially this year. But hey, who knows? Maybe they'll keep delaying Breath of the Wild 2 until Nintendo notices me finally play that first game and it's like, okay, everyone else can have it. Yeah, they're just just standing there like a teenage like a like a teacher going, "We're waiting on you." <laughs> no one gets it until this guy's finished. It's like, but I don't even care for it. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I I I care enough about the Zelda games. Like they they are they are gaming comfort food, like uh, that like that's how I've always looked at it. Uh, it's yeah, just, think... it's it's just that I am like always having like some hint of skepticism over the idea that like this is the best that Breath of the Wild is the best that Zelda's ever been. When I am like motherfucker, are you trying to imply that there's a Zelda game better than Majora's Mask? See, I've always been kind of. Um... Like, I, I, I really enjoyed Link's Awakening. Um, mm -hmm. That was, like... That and uh, Link to the Past are probably the, the two that I actually got into and properly enjoyed. Right. But I think I've, I think I've told this story on stream before. I used to work for a uh, Nintendo gaming website. Um, right. I was in charge of doing the DS reviews. One of the games which I got was Spirit Tracks. Oh, which, oh boy. Which has some incredibly charming moments. Pretty much anything with Princess Zelda is just adorable as hell. Yeah. But it's also incredibly boring. Yeah, like like of your main mode of transportation being trains is not at nearly as exciting from a gameplay perspective as you think it will. Even if you no. somehow like Densha the Go, it's not the same. <laughs> Yeah, and you are, like, getting from point A to point B is usually a puzzle, but not an interesting one. Yeah. It's very linear, which for the time um, in Zelda games was practically unheard of. And just overall, it wasn't fun. So yeah. when I did my review of it, I think I gave it like a 6 or a 7 out of 10. Because... That sounds it, about right. You know, it felt like a step back. It's not the really um, ambitious titles that we'd come to expect, all that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and like, a lot of... like Phantom Hourglass, which came out before it on DS, at least had like the the appeal of novelty behind it because it was doing crazy shit with the DS's features. Yeah. You know, like that. That's at least my reason for still having some fondness for it, even if like, like. Uh, looking at it more critically compared to other Zeldas, it's lacking in other areas in its own right. But, like, yeah, yeah, even for the time, I was like, 
yeah, I don't know if I want to go for, like, another take of this on the DS, but with, like, a less interesting form of transportation. Yeah, it was... It was certainly a nice try, but it was just very... It was boring, plain and yeah. simple. Yeah. Um, and a lot of a lot of websites and magazines at the time were like, well, you know, it's it's good, but it's not quite as good as the other games in the series, which meant that they gave it like an eight. Well, yeah, well, yeah, that, um, that that's game journalism we're talking about. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's, was... it's it's nothing but a joke. And like, I was, I've, I've always been one of those people that's like, no, average is a five. Five is completely it it's not bad it's not great it does what it's supposed to as far as i'm concerned f five is the bare minimum of quality yeah so when i said this is a si this is a six or seven i just said i forget exactly what it was i gave it mm -hmm. um i was like it does some interesting things the sequences with princess zelda where she's in a giant suit of armor being telling you she's scared of mice those yeah, oh, but when when she uh, the game in which she goes all Alfonso Eric, <laughs> El, El, yeah. Elric rather, yeah, and like she's telling you she's scared of mice, uh, and the camera just keeps zooming in further and further and further. I was yeah. like, that's fucking hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> also, and also I... Spirit Tracks, uh, from what I recall, doesn't have lineback, so that's like an automatic point deduction on that front. Yeah. So I said, you know, it's a decent enough game. It's a step back from previous games in the series. Um, I would say definitely pick it up if you want more, but bear in mind that it's much more limited compared to previous games. Yeah. Which I thought were, and which a lot of magazines at the time said, yes, this is exactly what is wrong with it. It's just, as I said, they gave it like two points, about one or two points higher than I did. Uh, lo and behold, I get my first ever um, emails from readers <laughs> saying uh, that I was... Um, I'll, I'll, I'll clean up what they said, but they were not complimentary towards me. They said that I was foolish, um, that my mother dressed me funny, and that I smell bad. <laughs> um, but with more racial epithets than that. <laughs> Well, yeah. And I was yeah, there's late 2000s internet, so I can immediately just picture them using the words that uh, that like no one should be using in those contexts yeah. anymore. Yeah, and just being like, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, how dare you um, be put on a game this quality? I haven't played it yet, but I know you're wrong. Um, <laughs> I was just sort yeah. of like... It like, at that because... point, you should have responded with the picture of, like, that one door from Super Paper Mario where, like, it's asking you a bunch of questions you have to, like, answer properly. And one of those is, uh, or, like, true or false statements, rather. And one of them is, I love to go on message boards and complain about games I've oh, never, like uh, <laughs> not, that never touched. Yeah, because that was the thing, because I'd gotten a, like, we'd gotten the review copy, I think, about three weeks before it was due for release. Yeah. You know, a good... A good um, long while before it was officially released, and people were like, "You are so completely wrong about this." I, I think I got like four or five emails. Might have, might all have been from the same person, to be honest. <laughs> Would not be surprised. Would not, we're not surprised me in the slightest. But they were all just the exact same. You know, I know this game is going to be brilliant. Why did you give it a, a low title? I haven't a low score. I haven't played it yet, but I know you're wrong. And I'm like, fuck off. Yeah. Anyway, we beat the boss, and we found the yeah, first right. orb. Orb. Yeah. It's very shiny. And an actual orb. Everything else would be made of voxels, <laughs> but that thing, that's clearly made of polygons. No, no, it's made of lots of really, really tiny uh, voxels. Oh, right, yeah. And like the, and the light <laughs> illuminating from it is like, uh, is blooming just enough to obscure the fact that it's not a smooth circular edge. Yes. Genius. They contain magic <laughs> greater than any magic one could find in 2D. Yeah, even though we're technically already 3D now. <laughs> My job is over. I'm going to Cancun. <laughs> Sage Dandy's gonna get crunk. <laughs> Got shader magic. Parallax. 
Reveals hidden flu uh, f uh, bleh, hidden floor clues and the tabula rasa tablets. But you can only use it in certain locations. But, uh, and, and at least there's one thing that, like, uh, that it feels very nice and, and also makes sense with this game. Because, you know, like, in other, like, old 2D Zelda games, it's like... Or, or even 3D Zelda games. Almost all the Zelda games are like, you always have to go into a pause menu to swap out whatever item or sub-weapon you want. Like, map to do a button. But here, as you'll find... Oh yeah, here's what, here's what you were thinking about. The the temple after this is the Forest Temple. Yes. In front of the... Uh, behind the Forest of No Return. <laughs> yeah, you have to use your new magic to reveal the... Uh, there's like a big... Um, like a big billboard with the the route through it yep it shows you exactly that but like it only shows you like the the critical path through it it doesn't show you the other routes you can take to like hidden uh to hidden side paths obviously so you're still kind of incentivized to like trial and error explore in other directions yeah but yeah and uh see see yeah now now lee's telling us about like stuff with the equipment and the best part about this is that we could just cycle through whatever sub items we have uh, mapped to the circle button by just clicking L2 or R2. The so one thing the Zelda series has needed for decades, which it will never have. Yeah, just like a way to cycle through like those uh, those fucking like button mappings. That'd be nice. Yep. Oh well. So that's it. That's that dungeon. We cleared it. We're already one sixth of a way through to becoming a true hero. Oh my god, the bloom. Yeah, yeah, that's what happens when you're stuck inside a dark, dimly lit area for so long. <laughs> the sun is harsh. <laughs> this young soul's adventure begins. Holding an orb in hand, fate whirls around the hero. Oh, yada, yada, yada. Great power, great responsibility. Something, I don't know. Fuck it. Return the light of peace to the kingdom of Dotnia. And save. <laughs> the rest of that will continue for the next couple weeks when I decide to keep going with this for uh, for streaming in the future. Because with uh, with recent developments and opportunities, as I was kind of alluding to at the very start of the stream, I'm going to be doing my best to hold off on doing any more like older console streams for the time being because I have a new capture card and a retro tank 5x on the way. Ah uh, yes, I I saw that on uh, Twitter. Yep. That was uh yeah, the retro tank along with an EVGA uh XR1 Pro. The XR1 in general, which was a card that Bentar, who I think is still in the chat, actually recommended to me. I think he uses the light version. And I was looking at it and it was like, well, this looks good, but I also want 1440p, which the Pro does. And fortunately, looking at information, I've seen uh, enough like examples showing that the Retro Tank just plugs in and works nicely with it. So I'm like, mm. cool, I'll go with this. Anything to get away from Elgato for a while. Not to say that the new Elgato capture cards are bad, but I'm also taking it on Mike Chi's word. You know, the creator of Retro Tank... That, like, it's just uh, that there's way more problems you have to deal with if you try and plug that upscaler or any of his products into an Elgato. Just because mm. of, like, weird refresh rate timings and whatnot. Yeah. See, we were kind of talking about it a while ago. <laughs> An actual FromSoft game and not a From, from Software by Association game. That'd be nice. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, 3D Dot Heroes. A Suda 51 production. <laughs> oh. Oh, God. That that really is like a very apt comparison. Holy shit. <laughs> it's like you apply that to that game as well as Tenchu, and it just makes so much sense. Though it's even weirder in Tenchu's case, considering by the time that. I think by the time From Software owned the rights, it was like long after Acquire had already made a multitude of those games. Uh, yeah, I mean, they didn't show up in the scene until the PS2 era, I think. At which point we'd already had like four or five of them. Yeah. 
And then, of course, there was, like, weird ones like Tenchu Z on the 360, which wasn't even by either of those. That was, like, by some other company, like K2. I think there was, um, was Shinobido um, related to the series? Because I've heard conflicting stories about that. I think it was made by people, like, it was either made by Acquire or people that left Acquire to make, uh, yeah. that were like, we want to make our own spiritual successor. Because it is heard... very, very much meant to evoke uh, Tenchu's gameplay style. Yeah, I'd heard it was either done by the same people, but they hadn't been able to get the license, or... Uh, screw it, we'll do our own with Blackjack and Hookers. Yeah. there. There's a constant reminder to let you know that I am using a custom firmware PS3. Syscalls are, like, uh, uh, are, like, uh, enabled to, like, uh, prevent the system from, like, connecting with PSN. Not like it matters. They, su they shut down the servers for Demon Souls ages ago. After keeping them up for the better part of a decade. Yeah, but now that they got, like, a PS5 remake uh, that does wonders to botch the art style, like, they don't need to keep this old shit anymore. I mean, in fairness, it does look fantastic. It does, and running at 60 FPS is definitely a nice bonus. Mm. But, I don't know. So, like, anytime I boot this up, it, it just it just fits like a glove. It's like, it's the sort of thing where I feel like those people that, like, are able to just, like, boot up the original Deus Ex on PC and enjoy no problems because it just feels comfortable knowing that, ah, yes, this is exactly the same ambitious, slightly janky first-person game I remember back when I got it in 2000. Uh, that would be uh, System Shock 2 for me. Oh, yeah. I yeah. love that game to bits. Yeah, Dark Engine Games, they definitely got that feel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Also, as you can tell, this is New Game Plus, because I recently beat my New Game run a while ago. Yeah, the uh, spiky pauldrons are a bit of a giveaway. Uh-huh. And the weapons. <laughs> yeah, I, I did my... Like, this is the sort of thing where, like, I needed to, like, redo my save file for this, because... Um, like uh, for uh, like just for like uh, a brief while, I uh, signed up again for PS Plus for the express purpose of getting access to what saves I remember uploading to like the cloud. Like I think in 2019 or so. Like I did that as like a backup then because I felt I was getting nervous about the condition of my last PS3, and then of course it continued to worsen. So I was like, I need to get as much of this backed up as I possibly can. But for whatever reason, I could not get every single save, especially some of the ones I valued the most, up there. I thought I did, but they weren't. So that includes stuff like Demon Souls, my saves for Armored Core 5 and Verdict Day. So I've been in the... Uh, so with Demon Souls, I've been like redoing that as well as uh, Armored Core 5 again. Because I need to make sure that like I unlock everything on that version again before I transfer the data over to Verdict Day, because it's mm. just like all the other Armored Core games of a similar generation. They're designed so that's like you play the base game first and then treat the immediate follow-up as like an expansion and carry over your data. Yeah. To be honest, I am genuinely surprised that they keep the um, cloud saves around for that long. Yeah. It's weird, but oh well. I mean, like, at the very least, it was kind of nice as far as giving me an excuse to play Armored Core 5 again. Yeah. And, th and this. Especially if if only because it's, like, you know, people have been su uh, sucking massive dick once again about From Software's Greatest Achievements. Elden Ring coming out. Yeah, again, if it's not Bloodborne 2, I'm not excited for it. All I want like Elden Ring is fun don't get me wrong but it feels like it strayed too much from the familiar from soft feel I mean mine is a bigger problem so like I can't get excited when I know that they've used to make a much bigger variety of games including mecha games and they have done jack all yeah yeah it's kind of like we've, we've got the same problem with Atlas with regards to um, Shin Megami Tensei they're trying to make every game in the series Persona. Yeah. And, you know, like, I mean, the original three Persona games, um, one 
Eternal Punishment, uh, so Innocent Sin and Eternal Punishment. Yeah. We're very dark games, and there is, you know, quite a bit of um, darkness in the, the later games in the series, but they didn't used to be so much centered on the power of friendship. Yeah. And the SMT games in general used to be really cool post apocalyptic cyberpunk games. Um, haven't had that in a while. Yeah. Like, Nocturne, Nocturne is genuinely one of my favorite games, but. It does. It feels. It feels like it should be its own thing, you know. And yeah, like I, I always kind of felt that. Better. Yeah, I felt that some uh, way similarly as well, you know. Like it's the yeah. Silent Hill two of the Shin Megami Tensei games. Yes, yes. Um, like I, and again, four and five. Really enjoyed them. Really great games, but they don't feel anything like the older ones. Yeah. Again, it, it feels like they're trying to shoehorn the um, the, the the persona um, feel into a game that, that that doesn't belong. Yeah, I think another big problem for me, especially, is how it's like like it ties back in specifically to the game we're playing right now, Demon Souls, and why it's like I uh uh feel like so disinterested in like so much of like the other games they put out in the in the similar style oh there we are hyper mode engaged <laughs> got the clever rat uh, uh oh wait no i don't have the clever rat uh ring equipped yet damn it but i i can't actually remove this ring yet or else i'm gonna get a fat roll so yeah and i kind of want the clean uh, clean ring still on since i spent so much time in soul mode anyway but eh, screw it but yeah, as I was saying, I think... it's like specifically, I still remember like a lot of the the talk about Demon Souls when it came out because it was still the sort of thing where like back then, like it felt so much like it was an underground hit. Like oh, it, very much so. And and a lot like... of that was because you know it was a, it was a punishing game. I say punishing specifically as opposed to just purely hard because it's the sort of thing where like like whatever uh, whatever metrics you use to define like what can be considered truly hard you could at least agree that this was going against what a lot of the big popular games of this generation were going for which was very easy like non-resistive kind of experiences like making sure that you could absolutely get to the end of the game and see all the work that the developers had put in. I think punishing is definitely the right word because yeah. if you made a mistake, there goes three quarters of your life bar. Yeah, like it's it like was, it was huge... very much a game where if you were if you didn't have your head in a swivel, mm -hmm. um, this and the first Dark Souls in particular, later games in the series not so much, but those two definitely. Um, you would like they well, one of the things that a lot of people noticed that differed that made this different from other games and other series was that there were a lot like traps were not signposted whatsoever you found traps by stumbling into them yeah where other games would have a tell yeah although there are some instances here uh, like where it's like if they do like the classic roll a boulder down the stairway bit you could totally yep. see where the boulder is to begin with but yeah it, it's the <laughs> yeah. sort of thing where there are absolutely traps where it's like you cannot prepare for them unless you specifically have like the foreknowledge <clears throat> of getting fucked by them in a previous cycle yeah you either get hit by them or very unlikely you see them coming pretty much and like if, and if you if you're like yeah i saw every trap in sen's party house coming a mile off no you didn't you fucking liar yeah <laughs> no one saw that shit coming yeah and it's yeah it's stuff like that and it's a, a sort of thing where like it had like i would say a staple of the non mecha from software games where it is like they uh, like they are firmly in the camp of like the type of they uh, like from software I, I remember like various people might have been specifically Miyazaki might have been other people but saying that's like from software's MO is that they like to make the games that they themselves would want to play 
Yeah. And their idea of what they would want to play were games that had, like, bonkers, esoteric as shit ideas. Like the, <laughs> like, the kind of ideas that, when they're appealing, they towed a line between, this is cool, and what the fuck were you thinking? <laughs> because yep. this game has them in spades. And that's, the, yep. like, missing now, is the big problem. There's also the fact that I feel like they're neat because the the fan base is like if it's a general rule if you've played one Soulsborne game you've played them all. Yeah. Not big. Not as in like they're all the same, but as in you want more of that same feeling, so you play the rest of the series because they're that good. So they wind up having to. Because I, th I think these days they design them with one eye on the fact that their fan base is so devoted. So that's why you get bosses who they'll go to take a swing at you. And they will hold that swing for the longest possible time. Oh, yeah. Just every, every time Which I, I, I just... hate. Yeah, the, like the delay swing combined with the Artorius of the Abyss boss archetype that they found was super popular after Dark Souls 1. Yeah. They've, they've just, like, they just stuck almost slavishly to it. Meanwhile, you look at this game, you see that there is a wide variety of bosses that is like, sure, it may not be, like, uh, you know, they may not all be quality. There's a lot that are built around, like, really dumb gimmicks sometimes. <clears throat> but it's at least something. You have a boss that is blind and you're incentivized to sneak up behind them to slash them. There's a You've boss where you have like the adjudicator. Yeah. Um, you've got uh, the phalanx, which, yeah, that's the first boss you should be taking on because it's so easy. But you know, like, it's a good training boss, and you're looking at it and you're like, "What the fuck am I even seeing here?" And then you get like really weird and like, but like creative shit for its time, like the old monk. Hmm. Where, like, obviously, I can no longer experience it on this version since the servers are gone. Because its gimmick was that you would, like, if you were connected online, the old monk would just be, like, a random character that gets, uh, like, another player that gets summoned with, like, specific gear that makes them the old monk. You know, like, the yellow, like, weird turban thing on their head and the insanity yeah. catalyst. Yep, they would, it would either be a really easy fight or nigh on impossible, depending yeah. on... It, it was a complete roll of the dice. And the offline mode is just... You just get a regular human opponent mage. Um, yeah. But with more health. Like, it's not really much of a challenge. No. And then there's, like... And then there's stuff like the Storm King, where, like, it's all about you getting that one sword that shoots shockwaves... When you swing it. Yep. Which is cool, even if it's real dumb. And then there's ones where it should be cool, but it's not. Like the Dragon God. Yeah. Like, the, I mean... It's kind of tradition to have, like, a cutscene boss. Like, you've got the Dragon God and you've got the, the Bed of Chaos. Yeah. Um, and But, I, but at least Dragon right God, thing... in its defense, is a way cooler design than a bunch of, like, scraggly fucking tree branches that is the Bed of Chaos. Yeah, or um, ceaseless discharge. If you know the the gimmick to it, I'm trying to remember. It's been so long. I just remember the name and just kind of how like weirdly hilarious like the name was. Like whoever fucking yeah. came up with that. <laughs> yeah, there's there's no way you hear ceaseless di discharge and you don't think someone's got a venereal disease. Yeah, <laughs> like, and, I, I mean I this is the game that has an item called sticky white stuff. White stuff, yeah. I feel like that and Ceaseless Discharge are, like, the height of, like, juvenile souls humor that, it uh, that like, I still like, whereas I just groan and shake my head at anything on the level of, like, tongue butthole or amazing uh, no. chest ahead or, or just any of the other shit that, like, souls fans, like, try and come up with, like, with the game, with the in-game message system because they uh, no, think no, it makes them of, sound uh... clever, but it's not. Not a fan of two fingers, butthole. Then no, no, because you know what? You know why? 
Yeah, like, here's the reason. Because <laughs> it takes more than two fingers. Sorry, what were we saying? Um. No, no, because, like, the examples of, like, that. Two fingers, butthole, amazing chest to head. It's the sort of thing where it is, like, it's trying to use that system to, like, make a joke where, like, the intent is to sound more clever or cryptic than you are. Whereas sticky white stuff is, like, that is a literal item name in the game. And depending on the context, you could either be talking about literal cum or you could be talking about like strategies of like, yeah, so when you go in this uh, into this boss's room, he's weak to magic. So apply sticky white stuff to your sword and then just go to town. Like, oh, come on. No that, one that's who more... used it. Yeah, <laughs> no that... one who used that in a message was talking about magic damage. No, but that but that's exactly my point. Why it's like why that that is more funny because it is way more deliberate. It is way more absurd on its surface, because it's like, no, okay, no, I got the perfect uh, uh, analogy. You know why I fucking hate the uh, the uh, two fingered butthole and all that stuff. You know why? Because I equate that to like on the same level as those fucking these nuts jokes that everyone tries to get over on streamers and thinks they're so clever for getting them when they're not. <laughs> that that's it it's literally that it is the D's nuts of the souls games <laughs> it's a dirty joke but it's just not witty enough god damn it it it's not witty enough and it's not absurd enough because again just saying out loud sticky white stuff in like <laughs> a, in a normal ass sentence that is power it's low-hanging low fruit <laughs> Which is ironic, because these nuts are also low-hanging fruit. hey -oh! Yeah, whatever. <laughs> that was a bold jump. A surprise indeed. I know. Well, now that you ah, are damn here, it. Crazy. Fend off these dreglings. Ah, damn it. <laughs> Shit. These nuts are the Dark Souls of comedy. That's fair. I think that that's a good way to describe <laughs> it. Oh, I'll use up all my fire bombs. Here it goes. 89 full moon grass, but only five fire bombs. Jesus Christ, you are end game, aren't you? Yeah, because <laughs> because when you're near the end of new of regular new game, how many situations are there where you actually need to have fire bombs? I mean, I I use them regularly throughout, um, mainly because I didn't have the stats to have a or to use a bow worth of damage. Oh, well, that's one thing that I always made sure to do whenever, like, I play these games nowadays, or or at least this game, because, yeah, even though I am mostly, like, sword-focused, I make sure I, like, I uh, invest uh, stats early on so that I can use the compound short bow, because yeah, uh, when you get to stage one, two, that fucking red dragon that is doing bombing <laughs> runs on the, on the, on the path to the boss, like, I just stock up on, like, 150 arrows... And then proceed to, like, stand on one of the towers where the archers are. And every time it passes, I just shoot those arrows until it dies and gives me its soul. <laughs> and that just yeah. saves me a headache of trying to get items off of that walkway. <laughs> I remember, um, I'd only, at the time, I had only played this and, um, Dark Souls. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, basically, basically, I still wasn't used to the series, you know, I was still thinking about playing it as I would, say, a regular action RPG or just a regular action game. Yeah. So, I thought, right, go all in with one stat, not realizing that there was, you know, soft and hard caps to it. Yeah. And uh, there was diminishing returns, so I was like, okay... I'm going to go all in on, I think it was strength I went in, because magic builds tend to be very wishy-washy in these kind of games. Yeah, or at or, least, or, again, or, that was my thinking. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah, whereas you realize in these games, they are generally, like, super easy mode. Yeah. So, I got to the, um, I hadn't, I hadn't played, I, I think it was, like, I played this at a friend who was on something awful at the time something awful was like one of the first big boosters for this game oh yeah uh, big boosters for a lot of things yeah so i had a friend who was on something awful and he'd gotten the japanese version because it was all in english and it was region free yeah so i'd been playing it 
And I think it was about two years later that I'd that uh, Dark Souls came out over here. Mm -hmm. So I'm playing that, and I'd completely forgotten that there was a run button in the game. <laughs> yeah, the very thing I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because again, good. I was like, but you know, this was what 2007, 2008 when it came out, and 2009 you know, was when Demons came out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, Dark Dark Souls was about 2010, 2011. Yeah, 2011. Um, yeah, it was a, it was yeah. a two year gap between the two. Yeah. So that was enough time to basically forget everything that the game told me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that was kind of, of a similar thing because it's like, well, I didn't play all the way through Demon Souls when it came out. I knew a friend that had it, and like mm. at the time, I played through. I basically played up through, like, defeating Phalanx and, like, unlocking the ability to level up. Because, you know, like, just yep. doing a run-through. And, and the thing was, like, even when I was going through it, I wasn't I wasn't dying nearly as much as I think, like, my friend did or anyone else I knew at the time. Just because I had, like, the... I had the context of everyone else uh, sucking shit at going through this first area that I was like, I'll just take it nice and slow. And that worked. I think I ended up dying most whenever it came to the bit where, like, the dragon gets involved. Yeah, because I remember a lot of um, websites and magazines at the time, their com their point of comparison for it was fucking Devil May Cry. Yeah. And I was like, no. And it's not even like, an RPG. <laughs> yeah, like, like, even the most cursory glance, like, what has it got in common with Devil May Cry? Third person action adventure and their swords. Yeah, but like, no guns. What, what the, yeah, no guns, uh, no crazy parties. Mm -hmm. You can get a scythe. That's about it. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it's but, ridiculous. I mean, like, even for me, I think my biggest context was, like, I always remembered, like, on Giant Bomb, where it was, like, like of, of, you know, back in the day when, like, it was the original four, you know, Jeff, Ryan, Brad, and Vinny, and Vinny Caravella was the only person on the team that was actually giving Demon Souls the time of day, while everyone else was like, what? This game is ugly. It's fucking from software. Why, why would you spend time with this? This is like the Linux of video games. They know how to do metal textures and not much else. Yeah, and but and so that when <laughs> which, it came to be with, fair with this, there's yeah, a lot of metal textures. Yeah, which in the game. And, and especially when it came around time to like when he uh, when Vinny said on the bombcast that yeah he finally beat Demon Souls, they were still like how. <laughs> so well, like it, it was game... everywhere, <laughs> like in this way that like like we said it was, it's different from how everyone is talking about like Elden Ring like as it currently is where it's like oh yeah it's the big new popular mainstream thing but uh but then it was like it, this is like that weird underground hit that the people that discover and get into it really get into it but those people were small compared to like the what fucking 12 million or so who bought the who bought Elden Ring basically yeah um i think i think I think it's up to 20 million now. But it's either 20 million sold or 20 million shipped. But that is... It's, it's got to be 20 million copies. shipped because I think at the time since, like, they announced that 12 million was, like, sold, that, that feels, like, even, like, insane by what I can perceive as, like, a jump in, like, numbers, you know? Yeah, it's, it's probably shipped. That or they're including um, digital copies as well because they... <laughs> Like, it used to be, I don't know if they still do it, but it used to be they'd count digital and physical copies separately. So I don't know yeah. if they've if a lot of places are doing that to inflate their numbers or what. I've definitely but, not seen that as much, at least here, like, on the U.S. side of things. But I, but then again, it's like, I don't really care that much to, like, pay attention to, like, what numbers GameStop is putting out. Um, I mean, does anyone? <laughs> no. Not even most GameStop people, I think, want to, like, push those. They know it's dying. Yeah, I mean, over here, our equivalent is um, a place called just Game. Yeah. Um, and I never see any sales figures. I love um, this bit that I just did, you know, where it's <laughs> clearly meant to be like a trap for you, where like those boulders are going to like, those balls are going to break free, but you could just break the, the wooden boards and just send them rolling and just crush all these <laughs> dudes. Imagine six boulders in the edge of a ditch. Yeah. There they are. 
Oh no, it's oh no, yeah, it's five. Yeah, That's it's only it five. You, you were close. It was just one off, but still, the point the, the point applies. <laughs> it, the reference is still valid. God damn it. It is. There we I go. I mean, I remember one of the things that put a lot of people off, and it's one of the dumbest things, is you use your experience points to buy things. Yeah. It's like the, um, the sort of thing where for the time is like that is such a from software thing to do. Yeah, and it's, I, I mean, it's not even original because, again, going back to Devil May Cry, red orbs, not that drastic. Yeah, you use them to buy new moves as well as, uh, as well as, as items. healing items. <laughs> Though, admittedly, in DMC's case, when you get to, like, the people that are really into it, it's like they'll always, uh, like, abstain from buying any healing items because the game's trying to encourage you to not do that after a point. Well, I mean, anyone that into DMC doesn't need healing items, let's be honest. True. Also, I think the part <laughs> where, like, they're both in a shop, I think, contextualizes it a bit differently. Yeah. But 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 you but you're right. Like the core concept of it being like it's something you spend to upgrade your character or buy items. Like, yes, yeah, you're correct. It's... That is not new for video games. Yeah. But it just blew people's minds like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. And I was like, you, you... it's not that drastic. Yeah, it's and also, you know what it what blew people's minds, even though it already existed? Fucking corpse running to get your souls back. Yeah, clearly people these people have never played Diablo 2. Ex exactly, that's what I was thinking, because it's like, no, that that's on the contrary, actually. Fucking everyone played Diablo 2. You had to do that shit all the time unless you were playing on hardcore, in which case yeah. it's like, oh, you died? Shit out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where do you think we got the term corpse running from to begin with? Yeah. And then, of course, there's also the matter that, like, all your attacks were determined by stamina, which, A, you know, w when talking about FromSoft specifically, they already had Kingsfield. But yep. even as far as more modern contemporary stuff, like, the only other game I can think of where, like, stamina used for attacks was part of, like, a relevant uh, popular game series, at least in its own region, was fucking Monster Hunter. Uh, Morrowind? Oh, oh yeah, that's I, I yeah, I guess that's true. It did, <laughs> right? I, I guess I, I just kind of blanked out Morrowind because that was still before either of these, and I think by the time Oblivion came out, they did away with that particular detail. Pretty much, I mean, yeah, when, when like stamina when, was definitely Morrowind. used for a lot of things in Morrowind. It was used for attacks. It was used for running. Yeah, I mean, once defense. you got to a, after a certain point in Morrowind, your stamina stopped being a factor. Yeah. Either because you had enough potions or equipment to mitigate it or, you know, any one of a thousand other exploits. Oh, but yeah. Like, you discover people... <laughs> the, the, the glory of the Soul Trap exploit and it's like, game is over. Yeah. But, again, it's like, it's not... A lot of the stuff which people thought of as radical in this game... Not really. It was just... Yeah. I mean, half of it was from stuff... Was from games that everyone had played. Yeah, and it it's, was contextualized no one... in a game that was actually punishing and not holding you by the hand the, the entire way through, which made it stand out a lot more in those situations. Yeah, it's the the main thing was that it was all that with the increased difficulty. Yeah, but and then also... the other weird FromSoft features that we haven't even gone into, like Tendency. The yeah. thing that is oh, low-key my favorite thing about Demon Souls and why I still rank it higher than pretty much every other, like, Souls-related game in entirely. Because the idea behind it is genius. And its execution is just flawed and esoteric enough that it's <laughs> like, yeah, this is kind of... This falls in the category of what the fuck they were thinking, but it doesn't fall away from the category of this is still really cool. It's clever, it's completely incomprehensible, and maybe seven people have ever seen what you can do with it. Yeah, and and <laughs> and the ironic thing is that when you're playing this the unintended way, which is offline, that gives you more control over how to manipulate tendency than you would otherwise. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things where, like, I've, you know, I've read tons about it, I've had it explained to me, and I'm still like... So if I die, that's good, but also bad? <laughs> well, like, I 
I've been able to like internalize enough of it over time for me that I think it makes sense. It's just, it's easy to forget some things because it's like, yeah, it's like you said, there are some things where you describe it one way. It sounds like it also applies to the other, except not like yeah. killing certain like enemies or, or whatever, you know, it's like, uh, like killing like named black phantoms or killing bosses that raises the world tendency, you know? So like, Killing bad things is 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 good, but also in the case of Black Fan, of uh, the name Black Fan specifically, killing them raises character tendency. Okay, but wouldn't that also uh, shouldn't shouldn't that also happen if you kill bosses? No. Why? Shut up. So there's pure black tendency and there's pure white tendency. So naturally, pure black tendency is super bad, right? Ah, uh, yes, but not in these circumstances unless but also kind of but not really yeah like there's it but but at the same time it's still really cool because it is it introduces something that is like why i absolutely like could not get into the idea of covenants and dark souls or or why i found insights to be a super disappointing mechanic in bloodborne like arguably mm. my biggest disappointment with what is a game that i otherwise absolutely adore because this is entirely a mechanic built around, like, creating a dynamic world. Like, not, like, radically changing the core makeup and foundation of the levels you go through, but changing things in a way that it's, like, just significant enough, you know, with, like, uh, things like, uh, you know, when you get to the, like, pure black character tendency, you get extra, you know, black phantom enemies, you know, they're mm -hmm. harder, they produce more souls. Likewise, though, if you're going towards white tendency for both character and world, like, your soul form, like, uh, health percentage becomes greater, and you also have an easier time killing enemies and so forth. And whether you go pure black or pure white, it'll unlock, like, small bonus areas in each of the zones. Like, that's yeah. cool. What does Covenants have to author? Nothing other than just, like, player interactions, except for that one covenant in Dark Souls that is entirely built around you saving up enough humanity to open a shortcut into Lost Isoleth. Mm. And, yeah, also, and also saving a certain character who is foolishly trying to find his own sunlight. Yeah. Uh, if you're not doing PvP, there's really nothing for you with yeah. the covenants. PvP and, or co-op, you know? It, like, it's so little in the way of PvE. Those yeah. yeah, like, P PvP is something, like, anytime I get invaded, I'm like, oh, great, that's me, com you know, that's, like, the yeah. last half hour to gameplay fucked. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's, um, like, the last time I played Dark Souls, like, legit online, I think, whenever I got in, the last time I got invaded, I just looked for the nearest cliff, I could find it through myself off it. Because <laughs> yeah, I was like, I... Ten percent my souls yeah, now, I would, yeah, it's like, I would rather... I would rather put myself through self-termination than have to deal with your laggy bullshit. <laughs> like, not even hackers. I, That's the thing. This isn't people trying to be malicious and, like, use, like, a backdoor or whatever to get access to my PC. These are just people with shit-ass connections on top of the game's already mediocre netcode. Yeah. Not the to fact, mention the, the fact, fact that, that there people, was a ton... There yeah. was a ton of exploits for increasing lag as well. Yeah, it's and it's just like the fact that oh shit, I just realized I should put turpentine on here. There we go. <laughs> now we're back in it. But yeah, I was just <laughs> about to say like the fact that some motherfuckers out there treat PvP and Dark Souls as if it's something on the level of a fighting game or other like competitive one v one games is a fucking joke. Like with all like the RPG bullshit on top of that and like way that you design builds and whatnot, like. Why? <laughs> how how do you think that this is even remotely fun in the conditions that the game is designed for? And you know, as for you know Smash what's Brothers a, is a competitive fighter. Goddamn. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know what is like a, a PvP game that From Software has made in the past that is more legit than that? Fucking Armor Core. <laughs> it also had it the all benefit. Comes back to Armor Core. It, at least in that, it had the benefit back then of being like most of those games were before they actually had online. But that just made it more fighting game like because that means you had to go to locals if you wanted to get in on that action. <laughs> okay. So here we go. Oh, just uh, gotta reapply the turpentine. Get to cover, get to cover. <clears throat> oh shit, there was one right over there. 
<laughs> Ow. Yeah, they're definitely way more persistent in attacking you, all things considered. I just remember the first couple of times I did this, I'd always wind because the uh, area was so dark, I'd always wind up losing track of some of the, the mini slimes. Yeah, the little hop lights. So, and because they give up for that, that point in the game a pretty good amount of souls. Um, mm -hmm. By the time I actually uh, killed the phalanx, I think I had something like tw uh, 10 or 20,000 souls. Yeah. Which meant I was like, oh cool, I'm going up like 15 levels now. Meanwhile, you see the amount of souls I have going into New Game Plus and also that I have not died once and lost them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, what's the point in that then? Better yet, I actually had the beast soul from because I had done the bad ending at the end of New Game Plus uh, of uh, the regular New Game. Which, when you do that, that particular soul it gives you is worth two hundred thousand. So I am gonna be, <laughs> I am gonna be rich as fuck when it comes to levels that I get after this. I'll behold the beefy lad. Yes. <laughs> oh man. Whew. Demon was destroyed. You revived. And I'll promptly kill myself again just to make sure that I keep this world tendency at white for the time being. Wasn't there some really, really silly um, English in the original Japanese version for that? I would not be surprised. I vaguely that's remember that the... the, uh, when the thing that came up when you defeated a boss was just really... Really crunchy English, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, th I mean, it's like, I forget if it was, like, in the early version of this or if it was something that just at got added into Dark Souls Onward, but I just always recall the phrase people, like, jokingly said, which was, you defeated. <laughs> that and, uh, this is harsh, please evaluate. <laughs> so there we go. We just, uh, wasted no time. There's the best girl. <laughs> ah, pale doll supremacy. I mean, they're both equal just because they share the same voice actress. <laughs> I mean, I feel, and plus also, let's be fair. Bloodborne is a game that is explicitly made for people like me that adore the Demon Souls and felt that there was a lot of specific things missing from Dark Souls that just, like, they could not replicate. Mainly, uh, atmosphere me. and tone. Yeah, for me, it was the nightmarish quality to it all, and the fact that, well, that no matter what you did, everything just got progressively more fucked. Yeah, it's like, it, it's funny, because I was, like, I briefly replayed a bit of Dark Souls 1 on PC, like, reinstalled it along with DS Fix just to kind of get back in my head, like, you know, maybe just a quick reevaluation of, like, my thoughts on that game. And hmm. a lot of the same stuff still applied, and one of those things that came back to my mind was, like, a phrase I, I made as far as, like... <laughs> A quick comparison of the difference in tone, atmosphere, and, like, environment design between Demon Souls and Dark Souls. Dark Souls, the atmosphere is that of death. Death as in these things have already died. There's just nothing active or alive here anymore. Demon Souls' atmosphere is that of hostility. Like, <laughs> it, it's like whatever forces are in here, as soon as you step in... No matter where, enemies or not, you feel like it actively wants you to be dead. <laughs> Dark, exists, Dark, Souls, you. Dark Souls is more like you see a moose on the other side of the street, and it's like it's not going to go out of its way to kill you just because you're not in range, but it will have no problem fucking your shit up if you decide to get too close. I think that was one of the other things as well, was that the... Across the land... Like, we hadn't really had a game in a good long time, if ever really, that really nailed that feeling of this world is hostile and it hates you personally. Yeah, like, yeah, because like this game really nails it, Bloodborne nails it the hardest, because yay, like werewolves and eldritch shit. <laughs> start off with, start off with uh, werewolves end with unnameable beasts crawling over the city like maggots in a corpse. Yeah. And meanwhile, you look elsewhere, and it's just like, none of the Dark Souls games have that. Sekiro definitely doesn't have that. <laughs> Elden Ring 
is just the same as Dark Souls 1 through 3 because every time I look at like GIFs or images of it, it is like... I know this is supposed to be that new game that is called something different, but motherfucker, you just made Dark Souls 4 and everything but name. Pretty much. It's Dark Souls crossed with Mortal Wind. <laughs> or, like, for, or Breath for, of the Wild, I guess. Yeah. For the for now, the open world comparison. Uh, I'd say Breath of the Wild had more stuff to do and more interesting ways of doing things. I'll give it that much. Mortal Wind was literally more walk from point A to point B and kill things that get in your way. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, but, uh, or, I, and in Elden Ring's case, it's that on top of you have to actually mentally keep track of uh, of all the important things you need to do or take notes. Because that's apparently a feature now. Never mind that we critique the shit out of old RPGs and adventure games that dared, like, push you to do that yourself. But no, Twitter's... But no, the current generation of Twitter's not ready for that fucking conversation. Yeah, remember when... Well, not just when games had manuals, but when they also had, like, 20 pages in the back for you to take notes? Yeah! They, did, they didn't leave that there for shits and giggles. They expect you to fucking use it. <laughs> <laughs> I got... I had the, um... Do you remember the UFO Aftermath series of games? Ah. Uh, is, is that is that, like, related to, like, XCOM or something? Yeah, there yeah. were three games that were basically... In that weird drought between old and new XCOM. Right. And they were about as close as we could get to the, the classic style. There were two really good games, and then there was Afterlight, which was weird. But um, I got a box set of the, the three games, which came with all three games, um, a set of stickers for some reason, mm -hmm. and a notebook. Which, um, we're talking like a 120-page notebook. <laughs> and I was just like, the game's not that complex. Why? Why? Oh. why? Because, I mean, if it was something like uh, Point and Click Adventure or what are the Ultima games, for example? Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You've got clues you need to write down. You've got map coordinates you oh. need to keep in mind. All that stuff. You play Ultima on the World 1, you best you bet your fucking ass you have like a sheet of paper with like all the translations for the lizard man language you're you you play ultima underworld you're breaking out the graph paper you don't want to but you're doing it you and, and the funny thing is you don't even need the graph paper to make the map it already auto maps it you're just make you're just pulling out the graph paper for old time's sake <laughs> and also because it's like three buttons to get in there man who's got the time hmm. yeah whatever <laughs> but all right let's pop like this said, beast it's... demon soul oh 200 000, look at that holy shit soul of the mind key to life's ether the soul of the lost withdrawn from its vessel let strength be granted so the world might be mended so the world might be mended yada 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 you're you're better than all the other like uh, XP uh, ladies in other games where you do that shit before I can even access this menu. Error. Seek. Seek. Last. <laughs> okay, there's your levels. I still need to play through Dark Souls 2 proper. It's the one game in the series I've never been able to get into. Not that and Sekiro, but Sekiro's just way too difficult even for me. I do not have fun with it. I've been talking about, like, with the uh, OG Legend of Zelda with the overworld that his dad used to, like, draw out the map before uh, uh, before coming across a game guide. I mean, that's dedication. <laughs> and at the very least, with kind of, like, how, you know, like, each screen is basically, like, part of a grid, that helps. Yep. Like, uh, you could just, like, break it down into numbers and letters as far as, like, you know, as a quick reference for, like, okay, this sector... And then, of course, map out, you know, like, where, like, the secrets are that you have to, like, bomb things open or something. Yeah, Let's... Hyrule Warriors has a mode where, I think it's called, like, Adventure Mode, where you've got dozens upon dozens of different maps. And if every, like, actual maps like the Zelda, I think they're actually based specifically on the Zelda Overworld from the original. Yeah. And they're marked, like, A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4. True, yeah. 
All right, let's... Which is really useful because when you're going through um, the guides to work out what all the hidden stuff is, because there's a lot in there. Like, yeah. pretty much everything, pretty much all the unlockables are in that. You can unlock characters by playing story mode, but everything else, fuck off. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just kind of depositing stuff off from my uh, inventory, and I think that'll be it for, like, this demonstration of Demon Souls, which still absolutely love it. <laughs> really wish I loved any of the other Dark Souls games nearly as as much of this, as this, which is weird considering that Dark Souls 1 was the first of the Souls games I actually played all the way through. It's weird, because you would think... You would think that because of that being my first, like, quote, proper full experience that I would like that more. But mm -hmm. no, it's like when I went back to this, I was like, okay, sure. Like, there might be, like, slight control differences and lack of, like, quote, quality of life uh, uh, improvements or whatnot. But fuck uh, like it. Like the but, weight mechanic. Jesus. Yeah, but, but, but at the same time, it's like, God damn it! have you seen the atmosphere this is exuding? Like, the unhinged mm -hmm. creativity on display. <laughs> It's like yeah, it, 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 it kind of feels like this was them basically going, we don't know if we're going to get to do another one, so let's just throw all the ideas we've got at it. Yeah, and then and also then... things like with Dark Souls after a while that I was just like, this is so much more free in that game than in Demons. Like the parry timing or the fact that you have a literal 120 degree backstab radius mm. for, uh, for enemies. Yeah. <laughs> They tightened that shit the fuck up in later games, didn't they? Yeah, it's the sort of thing where, like, when I was doing my brief replay of Dark Souls 1, just from the beginning of the game up to the first bell, was like, yep, this is as dull as I remember it being, just, like, all these encounters. <laughs> and, and, I was, and I was doing it as a deprived, you know? Like, the barbarian no. class equivalent, which is, like, I always play as a barbarian starting out when going through Demon Souls just because that's the only way I could still feel a challenge starting out. And it, <laughs> and, it, and it makes me getting to this part of the game all the more rewarding. Uh, for, for me, Demon's Souls was the first one I played, but uh, Dark Souls I played a lot of. Dark Souls 2 was also released. Um, mm. And then Bloodborne was the one that I was, the first one that I was properly obsessed with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Dark Souls 3 I got into quite a bit as well, but obviously not as much because it's it's a good game, just not a great one. Yeah. Dark Souls 2 is, is the sort of thing where it's like the only version I'd actually played was Scholar of the First Sin on PS4. And that was yeah. like, I never got the far enough in it to like really, I feel, form an opinion on whether or not I loved or hated it like, other, like some people did because... When the PS4 version of Dark Souls 2 came out, that was literally weeks after Bloodborne, and I was still playing through Bloodborne. <laughs> Boy, that does a number on, like, your muscle memory and habits and just making you fuck up super hard on one versus the other. Yeah, I, I mean, I've always been one of those, like, when it comes to that kind of combat, I'm always more in the, I, in the like, I'm always more dodge rather than block. Yeah. Because they can't hit you if they can't they can't hit you if they can't hit you. Mm -hmm. And Bloodborne definitely um prioritizes dodging over blocking. And then you go into Dark Souls 3, where your speed is maybe a quarter of what it is in Bloodborne, unless you're wearing um one ring in particular. Oh yeah. And yeah, it's a wake up call. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. Whatever. Maybe I'll get around Tokyo to those. Jungle. Yeah. You know, fuck it, just because it's like, now that I'm in a situation where I'm actually able to buy my new equipment and I no longer, uh, that it's like, uh, for the longest time I was thinking that like me ever getting like new capture hardware was something that would only be like possible if I set up a donation goal and pestered people to try and like donate <laughs> to. But now that I have already got it bought, it's like, well, shit, that, that idea no longer works. I need something else in order to like make this this hobby of mine seem a bit more worthwhile. So, you know what? Fuck it. Here's a proposal. This one doesn't even require money on you people's parts. If I, if I get, like, 100 followers on my Twitch channel, I will do stream playthroughs of the Dark Souls trilogy. <laughs> I'll go through Dark Souls 1 again in its entirety. I'll finally play through Dark Souls 2 and, like, 
finally form an opinion on that, and then actually touch Dark Souls 3, because I never, like, touched it in any context. I just had no interest. Dark Souls 3 is enjoyable, but a step down from uh, Dark Souls 1 and Bloodborne. Dark Souls 2 is very vanilla. Kyoji creating 39 burner accounts to follow. Oh boy, I already <laughs> see people are just jumping at the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> They'll each be called Dark Souls number number. <laughs> See, you probably would have gotten away with that if you hadn't said anything in advance. No. So you kind of screwed yourself over there. Yeah, whatever. And, well, and, and here's the thing, though. It's like, the way I see it is that, like, it that, that idea I just proposed, like, writes a fine line between, like, having a, dona a donation goal or any kind of goal where the reward is a game that, like, where like people want uh it's it fits the category of something that the viewers want to see but i don't necessarily want to play like it's not my first choice and it's the sort of thing where it would be confusing to most people because it's like what are you talking about dark souls is the best game ever it's perfect said only weird psycho fanboys because <laughs> it's not perfect shut up but it's the more the sort of thing where it's just like I'm so heavily critical of those games anyway that it's like, yeah, you thought you were gonna love this, right? <laughs> you're gonna see you're just well, gonna watch give you all the donuts in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Dark Souls is okay, Elden Ring is fun. Dragon's Dogma 2 will be better. Man, if the, yeah, if Dragon's Dogma 2 comes out and it like manages to like actually grip me more than the first game is, then I'll consider that a major victory. <laughs> Dragon's Dogma is one of those games I keep wanting to like, but not enough to put in as much time to get good at it. Yeah. Like, I know it's one of those games where it gets really good, like, 20 hours in, but I'm not enjoying the 19 before then. Yeah. Like, I, like everyone I know that plays it has some brilliant stories about it, but they're all, like, endgame stories. Yeah. Meanwhile, I have dozens upon dozens of games to play in the meantime. Yeah, like a lot of the positivity seems to be mostly focused around, you know, like, yeah, like you said, Endgame, stuff regarding Bitter like, the Black Bit Isle. Bitter Black Isle, like the whole Dark Arisen, like expansion, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Or the, the well, technically New Game Plus is like uh, you, the, the midpoint of the game. Um, yeah. But everyone's like, yes, that, that point is when it gets really good. And it's like, Okay, tell me how this isn't Final Fantasy 13 all over again. Yeah. Gets really good 30 hours in, I swear. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and, you know, like, I, I think we've made it clear neither of us are particularly, like, instant gratification gamers. But there's a point where it's like, quit playing with my butthole. Yeah. Like, just, let's just get this over and done with already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, I think the other thing that makes me excited... Uh potentially excited for like that whole idea of just doing dark Souls stream playthroughs is that i can't wait to get to dark souls 2 and somehow like whether uh, whether by happenstance or i just condition myself to do it just to like fall in love with that game and go that dark souls 2 is the best dark souls just to spite <laughs> everyone because everyone dark just trying souls to be everyone trying to be all like oh but it, but it's the B team it wasn't it, it wasn't Lord Miyazaki that made it you're right it's made by the people that made from software the company that I love for the 15 years prior to this <laughs> Dark Souls 2 is the best because it's not made by Miyazaki you plebeian it's the best because it's the only thing that reminds me of the days when from software game design used to be delightfully psychotic it's one of the few things that gives me joy in this world. I'll fucking play that game on stream, and then the stream title will be They Called the Third Evergrace Game Dark Souls 2. Oh! Nope, nope. It can't be Evergrace 3 because it doesn't have weird music. Oh, don't worry. I'll just run the Evergrace and Forever Kingdom soundtracks on loop as I play those. Because 99% <laughs> of, of all Souls games don't have fucking background music. <laughs> no, that it's funny because there was uh, I was in a discussion uh, the other week about um, people going on about how <laughs> the music in the, the Dark Souls games and Elden Ring is so amazing. And I was like, yeah, yeah what was your favorite song? 
um, the bombastic boss theme with choral singing, the bombastic boss theme with choral singing, the bombastic boss, se boss theme with choral singing, or the really slow and sad final boss theme. Yeah. And they were like, uh, excuse me, uh, what about uh, pen the music for Pinwheel? What about the music for Phalanx? I was like, oh, of course, I'm sorry. What about the creepy boss theme? Yeah. Because it's at least three in every game. Like, I, I genuinely cannot pick one theme, one boss theme from the, the, from another. They yeah. all are the same thing. Yeah. It's like, it's just so, like, uninteresting. And the fact that, like, Kota Hoshino just had uh, to get fucking sidelined in the past several years for that shit. Such a pain. Like, it doesn't yeah. help either that it's like, there are other games uh, in history that do the thing where, like, you go for long stretches without music. Fucking Half-Life is built on that. But, like, yeah. the songs, A, they're more distinct, and B, they play in areas that aren't just your safe hub area and the boss fights. <clears throat> they're played during other key moments that are designed to accentuate, like, the action or, like, give a rise of emotions in other places. Yeah, I think about all the music in the entire series from start to finish. The only one I can really think of is um, the hub world music from Bloodborne. Yeah. That's that's it. And if th I can only tell one piece of music out from the entire series, ah, that's, that's not a sign of a uh, wide and varied soundtrack in my mind. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I have the same problem with the, like, the Disgaea series. All of them are weird, whimsical, pseudo, Nightmare Before Christmas bullshit. Yeah. And I love those games too. I just do not play them for the soundtrack. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just real rough. Not like Evergrace music, though. Although it's technically <laughs> rough in a different way. <laughs> It is the kind of music you look at and go, oh yeah, this uh, this dude wasn't lying when he says that he doesn't, like, not doesn't, that he can't read sheet music. Evergrace, it, it stands out and is memorable. Yeah. I cannot, like, I think, I, I try to think about the music and I literally cannot because it's less like music and more like someone filled a shotgun with musical notes and fired it at notation. <laughs> But I remember it. Yeah. It's it's funny to, just because it's like... Uh, be, uh, because I, I think the best... Uh, probably like the best endorsement I've ever seen of like Evergrace in general on the internet. Is not funny enough Thor High Heels video on like various FromSoft games prior to Souls. Even though that's <laughs> a pretty good one. Everyone's seen that by this point, let's be honest. Yeah, but the actual best one was the single playthrough death stream on Gigaboots, where Dan and Bob just played through the game in one sitting. And so you just got to see completely raw what that entire experience of the game is like from like the music, the progression, the fucking meanest shit, like goddamn like traps and tricks that it pulls on you. And, best of all, with both uh, player characters, you could just... There is an easy way to just grind all of your stats to max. Because in the starting areas for both characters, there's there's specific enemy spawns that sh uh, where, uh, where when you kill the enemy, they always drop what's called a blue fruit. And that you use it in, in your item menu and it lets you raise your stat points. And when you go into the shop and then come back out into the world, not only does it reset those spawns, but it also resets the order and rate in which those items are supposed to drop anyway. So what is supposed <laughs> to be a random item drop is in fact 100% manipulatable to no longer be random. Don't you just love those programming oversights? Yeah, that's the from software I know. <laughs> like when someone accidentally misclicks a zero and for some reason the drop rate goes from what should be like 2% to 200%. Yeah. And not like the opposite where it's been in like, say, Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow. 
where someone puts a number in the wrong place and completely fucks up the luck, luck stat forever. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I wound up making it completely meaningless, didn't it? Yeah, it's like the only decent way to play Dawn of Sorrow is with the fucking Definitive Edition ROM hack. Which, you know, mm. ob the obvious selling point of that is no more touchscreen gimmicks. But, like, fixing the luck stat is, like, a bigger fucking deal for that in my book. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, the, that game's the touchscreen built... gimmick was yeah. stupid anyway. Yeah, it was stupid, but it's still a, a follow-up to Aria of Sorrow, a game that is built entirely around you farming enemy kills so that you could get their souls. Mm. Like, it's kind of important. <laughs> All right. Anyway, Tokyo Jungle, the adventures of the most vicious Pomeranian in the world. Yeah. We're just going through the tutorial right now, which is probably going to be like the extent of what we can show, because I think with the first two games we were showing, we kind of used up a whole lot of our time. <laughs> yeah. So I figured after this, we could also show off of a few more of like the other like uh, PSN games I have on here, which, by yeah. the way, do not include any of the PS1 classics. Just because it's like, with this being a custom firmware PS3 and I can do a whole lot more with it, if I'm going to play a PS1 game on it, I'm just going to load an ISO. It, it's, it's a lot easier that way. Mm. Clean kill! So funny. It's, 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 oh man, this is just another game where it's like, whenever I think about the memories I have of it, it's always in conjunction with Giant Bomb as well. Kind of similarly to Demon Souls. Just because it's like, unlike with Demon Souls, where only one person on the team was way into it. I'm pretty sure everyone at Giant Bomb at the time, which would have been the original four plus Patrick Klepek, like they were basically like all in on uh, on on this game because they remembered what it was like in the PS1 and PS2 days when you had like these really quirky, inventive type of like double A or lower budget titles. Mm. Like, yeah, I, I remember when this came out and people did not know what to make of it. Yeah, but then people that dug into it and just kind of knew, like, what the context that it reminded them of was, like, they got so into it. I've still never yeah, seen the full ending of it just because I think, that, like, doing so would have required me to, like, do so many playthroughs with all, like, the different animals. Well, one of the major problems I always had with it was that... Unless you did, you know, like repeated playthroughs with the same character or same animal. Yeah. Um, to level them up to a decent point, you had no chance of unlocking the next story chapter. Yeah. And a standard game of this is going to take you upwards of about an hour. Yeah. Or more so, if you get really good with the mechanics and just know, like, how to prolong your lifespan as long as possible. Because it's like, I guess it's fair to call it this in retrospect, considering all the other kind of popular indie games we have now. But I guess this is technically a roguelite. There are random, yeah. There, this is all about you doing, like, somewhat randomized playthroughs. You know, not Rand everything. There's, there's a lot of random elements, random events happening. Um, it, literally, no two games are ever the same. Yeah, pretty much. You, random stat boosts depending on what kind of mates you find. Yeah, pretty much. Meets my definition for it, at least. Mm -hmm. Now for one of the best parts of this game. In order to impress our, 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 our mating partner, we gotta kill other animals to prove that we're a big dick alpha. <laughs> Which includes killing completely innocent... Uh, lambs, I, I suppose. And chickens. And the occasional cat. Yeah, we've just gone and, like, scared the off. cats in this game are complete dickheads. And I yeah. like cats. Yeah. Also, I just love how, like, that little chick, we just scared off because we killed its parent. <laughs> There's the veteran. Yeah, I, I just love how it starts off with Rookie. You you are a Rookie Beagle. Just <laughs> your first day on the job. Pretty much. I've only been a, a, a Beagle for about three weeks, so I'm just still starting to find my feet, you know. Yeah. 
And then, of course, once you fed enough on the, on, like, the corpses of your enemies, they just explode into, like, just <laughs> skeletons. Just a, turns out all animals are just a piñata filled with bones. Yeah. Human or animal, there is always a skeleton inside you waiting to come out. <laughs> and that skeleton is damp. There we go. We're the boss of this town. <laughs> All right, you, me, let's fuck. The prime <laughs> female is interested. It's a shame that all humans are now extinct because Marvin Gaye would be perfect for this scene. Like, th like, th like the stuff I'm reading out. This is another reason for why, like, I and so many others like loved it so much back in the day because it's like you read some of these, like, some of these descriptions of like what happens in certain events. Feels like prime out of context material. The prime female is interested. Like, come on. If I remember, the story mode starts with you as a Pomeranian whose owner has gone missing. Yeah. And it talks about how you've gone from a pampered, spoiled house pet to an to a vicious killing machine. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Just centuries <laughs> upon centuries of domesticated behavior and training uh, being passed down across gone. generations gone in the span of a week. <laughs> You're just like, this escalated quite a bit. New generation. Happy birthday, Golden Retriever 2. Yes. Yeah, your o your only designation is your species and a number. <laughs> and that's how it goes in Tokyo Jungle. Meanwhile, you look at Ghostwire Tokyo, and you find a little Shiba Inu just sniffing around in, like, the clothes of, like, his owner who's been, like, snatched away by the fog. And you read its thought and goes, Daddy, where are you? <laughs> and then you, I... you just feel sad because it's like, oh, no. One of the first things I, well, one of the first animals I came across was a cat that let it, let me pet it, and then when I read its thoughts, it said, "I'm not particularly fond of humans." <laughs> yeah, that's cats. I was, I was just like, bro, same. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So yeah, that's what the, that's what the gameplay's like, you know, and that's it only is... in the story tutorial. Like, you see yeah. it more in full context when you go into the survival mode, you know, of which there are a lot of characters you can unlock, as well as, like, weird-ass DLC characters I also have access to. Yeah, there's, I think there's, like, 60, 70 different creatures you can unlock. There is a lot. And each one can be leveled up, not quite infinitely, but... You can get to a point where you're not really seeing much returns on your investments. Pretty so, much. Leveling up one creature to a decent level is gonna take you about ten hours by itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's just playing through survival mode repeatedly. It's it's there's a crazy amount of content in that game. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see how good or how terrible I am at Afterburner after all these years of not touching it. Yeah, the retro store, which I go to occasionally, um, has a bunch of arcade cabinets at the back. And this is one of them. Oh, nice. Um, and it's one of the, the sit-down machines as well. Sweet. Yeah, like the, the, the game works at Seattle, the one that is no longer, like, it had this machine during the time that I was there. And like that, that was fun to actually play that because, uh, yeah, like you said, it was also a sit down cabinet. Like, it little the game would not start for you unless you like buckled up your seatbelt when you were in there <laughs> because of like you know, there were the motors and stuff to kind of like move around. Yeah, yeah, this one had the motors disabled, um, for obvious health and safety reasons, uh, because yeah. it's quite a small environment and there's stuff piled up everywhere, so having the the, f the feedback would result in falling off the walls. Yeah. I also love, like, with this particular home version, just the amount of, like, extra options that you can, like, enable that I was able to finally... <clears throat> uh, uh, to, like, uh, the unlock after a while. Mm. Uh, oh, you didn't, no, I... The, uh, the art... 
Oh, no, no. Well, th this was the one... I was able to salvage this from, like, my PS Plus, like, cloud saves. This one was on there, thankfully. So, I... Oh, cool. Yeah, so... That, that one's managed to carry over after all this time, funny enough, but not Demon Souls or Armored Core. That's weird. <laughs> but yeah, I got I got all these after a while. I think I'm just going to leave the options on as they are. So, we let's see. F14D, F15E, or FA18E. Uh, not played the uh, R360 version of Afterburner, but I did play the 360 version of G-Lock back in the day. Ah. Uh. Um, yeah, which... our, our 360 versions of those games, I've I've definitely uh, not been able to experience in my time, which is I kind of a shame. I played it once, and I, I think it was about 9 or 10 at the time, and um, as soon as I got out, uh, I had a nosebleed, so I was banned from playing them ever again. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Alright, here we go! Oh! <clears throat> oh, cool, just like Bayonetta. Oh, God, wait, what? Oh, Man, like these options. Oh, I, I, I completely forgot. <laughs> the HUD is off. The, the, the speed is like at max at all times. Oh yes. Oh man. Oh, if there, if there's another. Oh wow, look even better. The guns just auto fire. Jesus right? Christ, you got hundred <laughs> percent. Oh fuck, this is amazing. This is complete lunacy. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, I was trying to remember all the controls. Yeah. Yeah, L1 is what I do to activate Climax mode. Which, yeah, get your sex jokes out. Yeah, I've already made the Bayonetta joke, where I think we're okay for now. You know, I actually don't mind that it's like this, because at least this way you'll get to potentially see me get all the way to the end of the fucking game. <laughs> what, in about two and a half minutes? Yeah, thus giving us more time to show off other games. <laughs> At least going between games on this PS3 is a lot faster than it is for me having to switch games on the hard drive on my PS2. Because that uh, means that's true. having to turn it off, wait for free hard drive boot to load up to get to the browser menu, select to open PSL, you know, wait for that to load, select the game, hope that the settings are correct, that it doesn't just freeze on a black screen, and then get into it. So about a minute or two of time. Yeah, I was going to say, if you're lucky, that's maybe 40 seconds. All right, Lure of the Sky, let's go with that. Uh, there are some working 360 units out there, but yeah, they are very, very far and few between. Yeah. Um, mainly, like, I mean, keep, stuff like pinball tables are notoriously difficult to maintain. Ooh, um, yeah. I do not want to even think about how difficult it would be to try and keep a machine which can spin. And when I say a machine, I mean basically something the size of a car. Yeah. <laughs> keep that properly maintained, because those things were not small. Yeah. I think most I'd be willing to try and, like, get into something that potentially requires a whole lot of, like, maintenance on my part would be if I had the money and lack of sense to get a laser disc player. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> I have had more than one conversations with a coworker of mine on occasion about this sort of thing, because he didn't get a laser disc player, but he did get a Beta Max oh. and a Beta Cam, and I am oh. like, God damn it, dude! Why are you beating me to the punch on all this shit? <laughs> I mean, I do want to get hold of a couple of laser discs, primarily the original release of Akira because yeah. it's the only major release of that I don't own mm. well that and the recent 4k one but I don't really need it look at that triple a damn I'm such son. a pro alas it is not ABC always be clothing <laughs> another giant bomb classic where just like they where they got A, B, and C ranks in that order, like when they did uh, when they did the quick look of this, and I think Jeff just said, "Yeah, A, B, C, always be clothing," and then they paused like just the break, and then just broke into laughter at just how stupid the thing they just said was. <laughs> oh man, I didn't shoot that thing down in time. Shoot. Uh. I think I, I, I think I think with how the settings are currently, 
that it's just auto firing all these machine guns and missiles actually made that harder than it should because they were locking onto everything except the stealth bomber. Probably, yeah. God, yeah, this is just still so cool. You know, I, I will say though, it's like I'm glad AM2 is still around at Sega. They've they've still been able to like maintain their quality as a studio. But but I do lament that like that they have fallen like victim to the same thing that a lot of other studios have, which is like because of like the realities of modern game development, they cannot pump out like the amount of like crazy variety of games like they used to, which included mm. things like this, you know. Because they made Outrun 2, they still made a bunch of different, like, light gun games. Uh, driving uh, stuff, all kinds of things. And now it's like, the the biggest success they had from the past decade was, like, Border Break. Which is a fantastic game. I've talked about it before. It's like the, like, multiplayer control point based, like, mecha team shooter. Yeah. And then, obviously... I always, I always keep getting it confused with Border Game. Yeah. Yeah. AM2 too busy making Niku games. I'm pretty sure they're not. I'm pretty sure, like, because I feel like I've not really, like, heard anything else of note regarding Project Diva since it's, like, they put out Project Diva Arcade on PS4. I'm pretty sure it's a sign that they had, like, accomplished all that they were going to with that game in the arcades. Yeah, I was going to say, is Project Diva still a thing? Yeah, I... Yeah, like, I don't think as far as, like, absolutely, like, new games unless it's, like, to put, like, on new systems. Yeah, because, uh, granted, uh, you know, like, rhythm games and sports games are, like, the two that I could not care less about. Yeah, but, um, yeah, it's, like, yeah, but because, like, Project Diva as a whole, it is by, like, I think originally started by other, by another developer. It's just that AM2's main involvement with the series was when it came to Project Diva Arcade. Hmm. You know? But most what I've, what I've heard of mostly is that most of the games they've put out over the last few years have basically been best ofs or compilations. Well, I think the other thing is just, oh, the more important thing is that they had always been like they just focused so hard on being like arcade only mm. because that's that was the the whole point of like their studio. Like a AM2 was part of those AM series uh, series <coughs> of developers at Sega where their whole deal is that they make arcade games. And in AM2's case, they were really good at making high-quality games that could sell. Like, they could they could get people playing and putting money I into the machines. And I mean, pretty and, much everything they've released still has a devoted fan base to this day. Yeah, but then you obviously look at how things have been going now, you know, in the world with COVID. And the fact that the club Sega brand is now sold off. Yeah, like, the um, like it's last no one shut down two months ago, was it? Yeah. Was it last month? Well, uh, yeah, they shut down a while ago, and very recently one of the locations just replaced the Sega sign with Digo, which is now, like, the 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 brand that is, like, in full ownership of it. But, yeah, it's, yeah, the, it's saw, the sort I of... someone um, posting pictures of the, the missing sign being, like, dude, still hurts. Yeah. But it's the sort of thing where it's, like you look at all that and the circumstances and also there's the fact that like after they finished uh border break they were going to release like another like arcade uh game that was like a, a similar team-based multiplayer concept called soul reverse and it was basically like take border break but replace the mecha but with like fantasy classes like wizards wizards and warriors type of uh combat dynamics except mm. from what i was able to gather after a couple years is that I guess they did not see nearly as much success with that that they shut down like the whole like development and server sport after like two years from yeah. when it came out. And that was before COVID. Like they basically shut everything down by the time 2019 came around. So it clearly was not working out even without the issue of people don't want to go into these places where they can get a deadly illness. Mm. Yeah, Soul Reverse came out and and just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> like you could like you could still find the old Japanese website and it's just like a list of updates telling them that they had to like you know they you know they stopped doing all manner of like support updates for it but they were gonna keep the servers on for like an extra year so people could still play and then they shut it down after that so yeah with all with all those situations 
it's no wonder they finally went back to Virtua Fighter in the form of another update of VF5. <laughs> it's been 17 years, but we're back with a minor incremental update. Yeah. Enjoy! There we go, shot all the missiles! Mission complete! Also, Bentar, uh, just uh, bringing up like a request for Sega to put out a console PC version of Derby Owners Club without MTX or Gotcha Crap. I'm just like... I'm fairly certain if there is a game that would be built for Gotcha, it would be Derby Owners Club. Yeah. <laughs> Can't even beat Stage 3 normally. Uh, bold of you to assume that I'm, quote, playing this. <laughs> I just kind of assumed you were just waving the plane's reticle back and forth. I mean, I am kind of doing that, but once I realized that, like, missiles and machine guns were just firing automatically, the only thing I was doing was just moving the analog stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, for whatever reason, I completely forgot I had left these extra options on the way that they were, with, like, no HUD, auto-fire weapons, max speed all the time. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was basically on autoplay. It was, but I mean, like, you got to at least hear the music, you got to see the sights. Like, that's the that's the fun part about it all. It's, it's a weird game in that it looks like that midpoint between a really high-quality PS2 game and a sort of mid-quality PS3 game. Yeah, that's Sega Lindbergh for you. Oh, nope. Oh, no, that wasn't what I wanted. I wanted to delete, <laughs> goddammit. Ah, oh, whatever. Just trying to put my name on there. Fuck, whatever. If it had been ARQ, that would still work. Thank you, everyone. The mission's a success. Enjoy some R&R. &R. You deserved it. That text was probably very hard to make out because of, like, the color balance getting fucked up by this capture card. Afterburner climax. And also how quickly it goes by because this is an arcade game. <laughs> yeah. All it's right. Like, yeah, here's our congratulations. Get out of the way so someone else can play. Yeah. All right. So that's two disc games and two PSN games. Let's get another disc game in here. See what would be a good one to go through. Um, I would personally go with one of the Japanese only ones so that we've got something that most people probably won't have seen. Hmm. All right. I hope that you remember love. Do I? There we go. <laughs> and it's actually pretty neat as well. Because I want you to pay attention to, like, when you get into gameplay and, like, it... <laughs> <laughs> For shame, Ben. For shame. You will understand, understand the concept, the concept of love. No, wait, that was last month, wasn't it? Shit. Could you imagine if the concept of love was what ended the Zentradi War? That would be amazing. Like, forget, like, this admittedly really great classic uh, love song that Minmei sings during, uh, the like, the most darkest hour of human history because if they lose, they're extinct. Just fucking get on stage, like, and just start blasting... <laughs> That fucking song. <laughs> no, no, no. Better, better yet. Better yet. She just starts singing Super Brothers. <laughs> and Min everyone just puts everyone just puts down their guns. Like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Min May with spe uh, with special guest uh, Guitar Vader. <laughs> Everyone's just too confused to work out what's going on they're like i i don't fucking know man yeah i i need to go think about some things yeah so here we go we started a new game uh, good old classic macross units the vf1 with the super pack because this first mission is going to have a starting right in the middle of space playing as good old roy fokker language you know what i said <laughs> And then there's Hikaru Ichijo as our support. 
We got now, like at some point I will actually get around to watching the original language version because I've only ever seen Robotech. Oh man, you definitely need to. If if only for like the songs to to yeah. make more sense. <laughs> I mean, it's I, I feel it would lose quite a bit not hearing my boyfriend as a pilot seventy three times. Kun <laughs> kun. That that was the most unenthusiastic karaoke I could have uh, done. I I could do better, but that's not for this stream. Singing, dancing, the feeling smashing. This is my chance to be a star. Good luck. <laughs> All right, so now pay attention, uh, particularly into like the top left corner as we're playing through this mission, because this is one of the cool things they do to highlight the fact that this was absolutely part of the hybrid pack for the Blu-ray of Do You Remember Love? Oh, this is actually integrate uh, footage from the movie. Yep, picture in picture with the actual film. That is very cool. It was a solid, it's Friday and I'm at a voluntary enforced company karaoke night. <laughs> oh, man. I totally would do oh, so that if I was in a situation where I had no fucking choice. Uh, so you, you've been there whenever I've sang karaoke. Ah, interesting. There we go. I was going to say, up until you went into guardian mode there, I was like, oh, this is just like Ace Combat. Yeah, well, the thing that's, like, slightly weird with this is that, like, I played a lot of, like, Macross 30. And I'm, uh, and the problem is that, like, the controls for that are just slightly different compared to what it is in the, uh, uh, in that game. Because um, mm. it's more updated to take advantage of the fact it's on the DualShock 3 instead of PSP controls. These were made with the idea that you're playing this with the PSP controls. Mm. So, so, like, it's... The, both the D-pad and the left analog stick are mapped to movement. That's the idea. And I forgot that, right. like, you have to press R1 to lock on as opposed to holding L1 because that's what you use in Macross 30. <laughs> <laughs> so is this essentially just, like, a, a short tie-in game, or how long is it? Uh, I don't recall how many missions it is. I'm pretty sure it's meant to be short. Like, shorter hmm. than any of, like, the, the campaigns based on different series in the PSP Macross games. Because the idea of how it works in there, like on the PSP, is that like you have so many bite-sized missions that are all designed to like, like have you play through events in each of the different shows. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that in this case, it's only like maybe like a dozen or so missions where... Oh, that's more than I would expect. Yeah. I would expect maybe like five or six with maybe some bonus objectives. Yeah. I'm just trying to. I mean, to to his credit, the the models do look pretty damn good. Yeah, and I think it's like, yeah, I I think like at least with like the frame rate on this, it's not uh, that much better than it is in Macross 30, because I think like with how they were set up, like these were games that weren't made for like 60 FPS, which is kind of a mm. shame, because with how fast and like frenetic combat can be in the Macross games, it kind of begs for that. Yeah. But yeah, good old Misa just giving us our uh, updates on, on the mission as it goes along. The great thing about playing these Macross games is that, like, even if it's all in Japanese, if you've, like, watched the shows that uh, that these are all pulling from, or the movies, it's like, you don't even need to bother figuring out, like, what specifically they're saying. It's enough to yeah. infer it based on, like, where it is in the <clears throat> story. And even then, like, the stories of the original Macross, they're so well-known. Yeah. You don't even need to have seen large chunks of it. Yeah, especially, especially for the original. <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe not as well-known for something like, uh, you know, the later series. Maybe Frontier's well-known enough if you're specifically in Japan because it just had, like, a lot of play over there. Yeah, I'd, I'd say anything past maybe Macross Plus is a bit less well-known. Yeah. M maybe throw Macross 7 in there because that had a very devoted fan base back in the day. Yeah. Easy S rank. And now we got the next uh, 
uh, next uh, mission that takes place inside the Macross when Zentradi units manage to break in. Appropriately titled, Zero G Love. No, I am not going to do my deadpan karaoke for that. You already have my first <laughs> one. <laughs> maybe maybe sometime in the future my streams will act, I'll actually find the time to like fit like a karaoke stream on one of them and it's just going to be it's just going to be singing a bunch of Macross and Jam Project music. <laughs> I have no shame. And if you sign up to the Patreon at the $30 subscriber level, <laughs> you can avoid all this pain. <laughs> we'll let you know when it happens so that you can not be in that pit. But for now, the follower goal is the only thing in effect. If you people <laughs> really care about seeing everyone on the internet play Dark Souls, and maybe less so me actually, like, unconditionally loving it, because as noted before, I am, like, a very critical bitch about that game. <laughs> but yeah, look at, look at this. Look how fast it's going. Yeah, now it's turned into virtual on. Yeah. But with slightly faster controls. There we go. Yeah, and then like X is like for like boosting and whatnot. Yeah, this is like this is the the sort of speed you expect when you're playing the PSP games, which uh, unfortunately is one of those things that isn't replicated on Macross 30. It's considerably mm. slower, likely because they were designing it as like an action RPG, so they had to save some things for like being locked behind stats. Yeah. I still love I still love this whole concept though that they did with this and the the hybrid game for Macross uh, Last okay, Frontier. That is very cool. <laughs> yeah, just like giving you because it's also like this is made by Art Dink. They aren't a big company. They don't have a lot of budget to go around on all their stuff. So it's like no, it they're... makes sense that a way for them to get around like not having the animation or money to like show off like things like the inside uh, arrangement of the Macross changing, just have a picture in picture of the events from the movie. You see, when a company like Art Dink does it, that's very clever. Yeah. But then I think about stuff like um, Berserk and the Band of the Hawk. Oh, it yeah. It slices in segments from the, the film, uh, the film trilogy, and it just feels lazy. Mm hmm All right, here we go. There's There's those familiar missiles. Well, I need to... Actually, I don't recall if there's, like, a good way to... Because there's another, like, weird feature that, like, is so specific to, like, the Art Dink Macross games that, like, when you see it, you're like, no other developer would think to do this, but they did it anyway. And it's a detail with, like, how the Gurwalk mode behaves. Um, it is, like, the one unit of, of the form of, like, units in Macross that are able to, like... Because of their design, they could reorient themselves to glide along any surface, even walls. Mm. Like that wall, it's too like it's too straight up for me to like be able to like orient myself. But if there was more like a steep slope, then it would be possible to like, you know, start skating up the side of the wall in that instance. And I think that's really cool that they did that. Like it's it doesn't have the most like practical gameplay functionality. But it shows you they cared about the source material they were working with. The, the fact that it's an option to begin with, mm -hmm. um, when you're very when you're very, it's very unlikely you'll do anything like that in the game. That's that's pretty impressive. Special attack. Oh, <laughs> didn't quite kill him. Also, I had some of the uh, Robotech toys growing up, and that uh, model in particular was one of the ones which I had. For some reason, they only had the. There was a shop that got a whole load of um, Macross toys in. Yeah. Uh, and this was like, at the time, we did not get the um, the Robotech series in the UK. Right. Like, it might have been shown on satellite and cable, but if it did, then it was a very limited release. Um, but a shop near me got a whole load of Robotech toys in. But for some reason, it was all the Zentradi units. Oh, yeah. So I remember that one in particular because of the uh, torso cannon and the um, swivelly uh, shoulder cannon. Mm, yeah. Never got any of the Valkyries, unfortunately, because even as like a six-year-old, I probably would have flipped my shit. Yeah, that's true. 
still seeing this in action, like with that, with the whole just the, uh, like just the inside of the Macross changing its orientation because the outside is transforming and getting that extra context with the picture and picture of the main game was so cool. I mean, it would have been very easy for them to just have it full screen, but having it like, well, essentially be picture in picture, it actually kind of feels a lot more fun. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I've, I think obviously the big reason for that is because there's plenty of moments where they do the picture in picture and you're in actual gameplay. So they do realize yeah. that if it was to be full screen all the time, it'd be doing a lot more interrupting. Yeah. All right. Let's find us another game. You know, let's get some Game Republic up in here. Because we got a few of their games. We got yep. Genji. We got Folklore. Um, I would say probably Genji, because Folklore will take a long time to actually get into. Yeah, I think so as well. Plus, Folklore, I think, would be, like, a fun one to, like, eventually get into for, like, a stream playthrough. Because it does yeah, sound was... genuinely interesting. Like, for all, like, the the jokes people have made about PS3 has no games, especially in its early years. Like, mm -hmm. Folklore really does seem like the sort of thing where, like, yeah, it's got its obvious niche appeal... You know, it may not be setting as many people's, like, worlds on fire compared to other things, but at least it's a game. I I always kind of looked at it the same as um, Residents of Fate, and it's a very weird game with, very, a very niche game with weird mechanics that probably should have been more popular than it was. Yeah. But mechanics were so weird that it... Like, a lot of people saw them, and it just drove them away. Yeah. I, th I think the big part for me these days for why I definitely appreciate it now is just how I appreciate the, like, the apparent PS2-ness of how it looks and, like, mm. and behaves. Because it's, it's very much, like, the kind of thing where you look at this all the time when, when getting into a new generation of games. Like, the hardware changes, but the design sensibilities do not fully upgrade update yet in order to take advantage of it so yeah. you had that moment with like ps3 and 360 where for the first couple <laughs> years like the most notable games you could point to were the ones that still felt like that they were made with like the the restraints of like the ps2 and og xbox in mind yeah i mean folklore most of the dialogue takes place in like big illustrations of the the first character on one side big illustration of the other character on the other side yeah which you know like if if it was done for stylistic reasons you'd be like oh okay fair enough but it very much comes across that they didn't know what they were doing with this new technology mm -hmm. and weirdly enough it's but, sort of thing that kind of makes it very interesting, mostly just like in the hindsight kind of way, you know? Yeah. Like, these, if it came out today, it would feel like a very deliberate retro throwback. Mm -hmm. But it came out, what, two, three years into the PS3's lifespan? Uh, folklore, so at the time, it, Folklore came yeah. out like within the first year. Oh, did it? Yeah, okay. it was actually like, yeah, it was real early because it, it's like, I distinctly remember like 2000, because uh, like, Launch until, I'd say, Uncharted 1 was the period of time where people were like, oh, there's, there has not been a, a real big good game yet because yeah. Uncharted ended up being that for a lot of people, even though Uncharted has its own fair share of problems. Because everyone's like, yeah, Resistance was fine. Lair was a fucking mess. Uh, <laughs> Via 5 didn't, Lair... Via 5 didn't <laughs> have online. And most pe uh, Genji had giant enemy crabs. Genbi G Genji was a joke before it even came out. Yeah. Like, no, I got Genji simply because, like, when I got my PS3, um, I got, like, I basically went into the um, pre-owned bargain bin games. And it was yeah. the day that the PS4 came out. And all the games there had been heavily discounted further because they knew that people were going to be trading in absolutely everything. Yeah. And I got it for, like, less than a fiver. Oh, God, that's, that's how... right. Motion sensor. Yeah, fucking six-axis oh, yeah. shit. I'm... For authenticity's sake, 
And since I'm the one playing and not you, <laughs> I'll take the Thank bullet. God for that. Okay, so yeah, we got yeah L2 change weapon, R2 focus, block, unleash Kamui. Oh wow, attack one's on circle, not square. Whatever, I can work with that. Yeah, light and heavy attacks, jump, special action. All right, we'll, we'll do it. Saving system data. You know, this is another weird thing I also miss from like a lot of like PS3 games, especially early on, where it's like the concepts of like certain things with like creating save data and especially install data. They really did go out of the way to like make their own like custom like UI screens like in the game for like those sort of functions as opposed to what a lot of things did by the end, which was they just used the basic PS3 front end for those things. It c gave like even those parts of it a bit more personality, you know? Yeah, like there was a. Like, the thing I always liked about the PS3 was when you selected a game, either disc or digital download, you didn't just get a splash screen, but the, most of the most of the times, either the splash screen or the icon was animated, and it would show you, you know, just. Uh, random snippets of gameplay and all that. Yeah, and then even and... less than that, they would also have music on top of it. Yeah, and now it's just here's the splash screen. Yeah, it's yeah. There's like a lot less personality when everyone is just like, well, the system already has that as part of the front end. We can just fall back on that. Meanwhile, you go back to this era, and it's like if you somehow bought Devil May Cry 4 on PS3 when that came out, you installed that, and it gave you a little history lesson on D on DMC as a whole while you That's were waiting right. for it to uh, go through. Or, of yeah. course, who could forget Metal Gear Solid 4. Solid 4. Which... <laughs> Smoking edition. Which... You know what? Fuck it. Once once we're done showing off a bit of Genji after these cutscenes and a bit of gameplay, I think final game will show off in this grab bag <laughs> is some goddamn MGS4. I at least have a save that has a start right at the beginning, so... I mean, it's not any of the later bosses, which would be very exciting, but I can at least skip through all the cutscenes, and I have the bonus weapons unlocked that we could just use that uh, those uh, last few minutes to just dick around endlessly. I'm hey, pretty... As long as it's not yeah. the tailing mission from like chapter three, yeah, I think we'll all be okay. Oh no, th th this, this is, is the... unforgivable. Yeah, this is the first chapter. This is us like in the Middle East, so it's good. Yeah, I mean, I at the very least, I've got like, I know for for certain, I got the Tanegashima. I'm gonna yeah. keep firing that fucking thing until it gives us the tornado. <laughs> <laughs> I have played through MGS four two maybe three times. And I have never bothered to unlock any of the secret weapons. Oh, man. It's like the best, most redeeming aspect of MGS4, I feel like. <laughs> like, yeah, like a lot of the chapters are very hit and miss. And the, and the cutscenes and stories are just bad. But God damn, the, but like... The, the, sorry. Uh, but but just like I love like the goofy bonus uh, secret weapons you get in the in that. On top of you know obviously late game you get like the weird genre shifts with like you know having the Rex versus Ray fights or just fist fighting Ocelot at the top of Arsenal gear. Rex versus Ray, I will defend that game to the earth just for that one section. Yeah, every time I get to that uh, section, I am obligated to pull out the iPod be uh, in game because you can still do that even when you're in Rex and just put on Beyond the Bounds. <laughs> and I prolong the fight as long as I can so that it just fills the length of that song. <laughs> yeah, just. I I never once thought like you you play the original Metal Gear, uh, Metal Gear Solid and you're like Rex is meant to be a complete monster. Yeah. And then they you know you get to play as it and you're like, huh? I never thought of Metal Gear Rex as being heroic before, but here we are. They yeah. redeemed that fucker. But it seems the high are attempting. Yeah. God, just even thinking about it more now, how it's like. Like, so few games I can think of anymore where it's, like, they have, like, the budget, time, and resources to actually put into, like, a weird one-off genre shift that actually feels good. Like that, uh, like that Rex versus Ray fight did. 
quest. Like that the legit felt like a very solid, like stompy giant robot battle. You know, like yeah. it felt it. The scale and weight was different compared to when you're just normally playing a snake. The only real developers I could see not just getting away with that, but pulling that up, pulling it off would be Yoko Taro or Platinum. And Platinum decided to throw all in, go all in with a really shitty live service game. So I don't imagine that being, um, that going well for them. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not saying it's going to crush the company, but they're going to have to do a lot of low-budget games for a while in the back of this. Yeah. I mean, they're still doing Bayo 3. Kamiya is yep. still set on doing Project GG. Nothing's going to stop him. Oh, um, God. That, oh, God. That's right. This game, like, it's dodging is with the right stick. Oh. We're, God, we're all God PS3 of War games. up in this bitch. Yeah. What was it with early PS3 games? It was like, we don't have a dodge button. We have an entire stick devoted to it. Because, I mean, I, I've, again, like I know. mentioned, we had the God of War happened. Yeah. Like fixed camera angles and whatnot. That said, God Hands was still the best just because, like, the Jew King was, felt so good. I was going to say, like, I never thought, like, God Hand was that popular, but... Suddenly, everyone was like, no, this stick only for dodge, not for camera. <laughs> you can make it. I mean, we all know, like, the the beauty of God Hand is that it's just a game about punching people. I'm not sure if you ever saw that old review that I was just referencing and why I just devolved into, like, a UK accent. I... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just going to sit here and not say anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. It's like one of the best like early YouTube video reviews that, uh, that I recall. <laughs> because it's like, yeah, it's it's like a fairly like standard feeling like review, but it's just interjected with all these like clips of this dude just like going on about just how fantastic the game is because it is so pure and focused on simply punching people. <laughs> <laughs> to the point where, like, it starts out with, like, another person on camera going, the problem with God Hand is that it's just a game about punching people. Then the actual reviewer shows up, excuse me, punches the other dude, and then says, the beauty of God Hand is that it's just a game about punching people. <laughs> and that, like, was, at the end of it, like, Clover, like, on their epitaph will simply say, we made one of the greatest games of all time, and it was just a game about punching people. Yeah. If we're being more accurate, we made one of the greatest games of all time and none of you fuckers played it. <laughs> we made one of the greatest games of all time and it was, in reality, only made for Shinji Mikami and the one other programmer that he really liked. <laughs> it was basically made for them. You fuckers just happened to love it, like, by chance. And he made it primarily because he saw what Capcom was doing, handing off Final Fights to an American studio that made Streetwise, and was like, what the fuck, this is garbage. I'm going to make my own f uh, Final Fight with Blackjack and Hookers. In fact, forget <laughs> the Final Fight. <laughs> and then they found him face down in an alley three weeks later, and that's where Beautiful Joe came from. <laughs> now, it, it they they found him face down... Covered. They found him face down three weeks later, and it was only his head. <laughs> because we have, because we all have to remember that, like, uh, Shinji Mikami had, like, completely severed his head from his original body after Resident because Evil 4 Resident was... Evil was released on every console known to man. Yep, exactly. <laughs> but it was okay, because he built himself a secondary body out of uh, Kamen Rider transformation belts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it makes as much sense as anything else the man's ever done. Yeah, I mean, it, it was still applicable back then, even in God Hand, because again, with the poison chihuahuas you could bet on in the chihuahua races, one of them was just called Mikami's Head. Mikami's Head, yep, I remember that. Okay. Yeah, this combat's weird. Yeah, I think I only ever played this, like, once. Just because the, I mean, I was coming straight off the back of stuff like um, 
God of War and Devil May Cry, as most people were. I think that was pretty; those were pretty much the the bar yeah. at the time. And the combat did not feel fluid whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, camera and also then, doesn't help it in this case. Yeah, the fact that you can't really control the camera is a big pain in the ass because, you know, there's there's five guys in this scene. Yeah, you're wailing on one of them. You're the only one that you can see. Yeah, like the fit, like even Onimusha's camera angles are better at this. Specifically, Onimusha three, because like yeah. even that camera. Oh wait, no. Oh yeah, I guess all of them rather because I, yeah, because I just remembered only one and two had the had the fixed uh, fixed cameras with the pre-rendered backgrounds. Uh, yeah, the third one had more dynamic camera angles. Yeah, but it was still mostly like. For the most part, it was still fixed. Okay, here's this shit. Oh, that's right. I forgot there was a fucking rhythm game in this. Right. This is ridiculous. Yeah, just what you want in your fast-paced combat game. Slowing that's how the action down. That's how you can tell this game came out in 2006. No, because they didn't have a fucking clue what they were doing when it came to fast-paced action games. Yeah, despite all the other examples that were out at the time that proved this is how you do it. <laughs> no, we can do it differently, and different means better. Does it, though? Like, the, like this is suddenly giving more perspective that is like, you know what? I would totally be fine with just booting up Ninja Guy and Sigma 1 again than having to play through more of this beyond this level. See... This is this is one of those games. I feel it would be better if it was maybe like twenty five percent faster. Yeah, and potentially shorter from what it uh what it ends up actually being. I assume. I do not remember how long it is. As I said, I think I only put maybe an hour and a half, two hours into it, and then was like, I'm glad that I paid pennies for this because if I'd bought it full price, I would have been pissed. Yeah. The thing is, the original Genji on the PS2 was actually a pretty decent game. Yeah, that's what I keep hearing. That, like, the, the PS2 first Genji game is, like, way better than this was. Yeah, it's it's not a it's not a great game, but it's a solid, you know, high C, low B tier game. You know? Sort of thing that you play, you, you, you finish it in an afternoon, and you're like, oh, that was pretty good. I'll never play it or think about it again unless someone else mentions it, but it's an okay game. Yeah. Oh, look at that. I can actually jump up on these things. <laughs> Thanks, game. I am literally at a magic pixel of health now. And also, it seems that you're running full pelt, but only managing to travel at about three miles an hour. Yeah. Maybe if you actually moved your arms like a normal person. <laughs> Ow, god damn it. Ah, yeah, whatever. I saved it. Yeah, again, I just I feel like this is a game that should have been like just jack the speed up to an extra 25%. You've got a much better feeling game. Maybe not a more fluid game, but it doesn't feel like you're patiently waiting your turn to yeah. attack or run anywhere. I would agree with that. No interruptions. Hold him off as long as you can. Hello, old woman who is clearly voiced by not an old woman. Well, let's see. Early 2000s old woman. So probably Mary Evelyn McGlynn. No, I don't think it sounded like her. I think it literally sounded <laughs> like somebody who's probably young, but just like trying to sound like that she's like a senior uh, citizen but is just not because Mary Elizabeth McGlynn like uh, like she's just like like uh, she's just going for full sultry that's what it is mm. yeah whatever I literally know exactly how this is going to go, that I am just, like, pressing the buttons as fast as I can. <laughs> yeah, I think once oh, I, like... Hey. Yeah. I think once I finish this uh, particular section, or if I die, I'm going to actually just quit out of this game and we'll go straight into Metal Gear Solid 4. Because <laughs> I think this is, like... 
This is the part where I feel like if this were a demo, this is where it should be ending. Yeah. Instead, you've got like another 12 hours of this bullshit. Yeah. The thing as well is that the original Genji also looked better, even though it was on the PS2, because it had a very strong art style. Everything yeah. in the game was um, yellows and golds, so it looked really lavish. And yeah. this doesn't. So weird. Like, right. it, it doesn't really feel like it has an art style at all. Yeah. It's like real emblematic of trying to like pump a game out for launch. Yeah, it's it's very much a case of we need to get a game that looks good. Doesn't yeah. matter what it actually plays like, because I mean, the same thing happened with the PS4 with uh, the Order. Yeah, and that even and, that. and even that wasn't a launch title. That still came out a couple of years later, and it was still unremarkable in every way. The Order, uh, eighteen eighty eight or whatever it was Eight, called. Eighteen eighty six. Yeah. Hmm. I thought that was a launch title. No. Nah, you, you know what was a launch title for PS4 though? Killzone Shadowfall. You know, oh, Jesus. that series that I think people these days don't even instantly associate with Guerrilla Games anymore because they have a much better series instead. <laughs> also, yeah, you were right. Um, PlayStation 4 came out in 2013. Yeah. Uh, the Order came out in 2015. I could have sworn it was a launch title. Oh, God. It, 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 had, it had the same feeling like we're pushing the graphics to the limits, you know? Yeah. Anyway, I just noticed that, again, because I hadn't booted this up in a while, that, like, I still leave MGS4, like, on pre-2.0 updates. Hmm. Ju just so I have as much of that original experience as it was before, like, pre-trophies, back when you yeah. had to install at every single every act. Every chapter. Wait, just, just watching Snake. Oh, that's not good. Oh. Oh, fuck. That, hmm. I have literally never seen that on a PS3. And this is a backup. This isn't even on my disc. But it, let it me skip like through that. Yeah. And it's weird, too, because it's like, because we all, all know how I've kind of, like, set up a lot of this. Like, a good number of these games, these are all stuff that I've just downloaded off the internet and then FTP'd onto my console, you know? But some of these, like MGS4, I ripped from my disc. So, like, it's as pure as a rip of, of a game as it could get. But it's just it giving me weird problems like that. I have mm. no idea why. See, I had something similar happen with my 3DS where... Um... Because I, I was, I'm one of those people. Whenever I take a, a handheld with me, I like to have as many games with me as possible. Because yeah, you know, weird like that. So I had a couple of dozen games for it at the time. Yeah, and oh, here we go. Snake, watch a snake smokes thirty seven cigarettes, but never gets more than halfway down one. Right. Oh god, I forgot about this because I think it's like. When I was making the rip and, like, installing this game, I only got as far as, like, the main menu because I forgot that, like, there's a base amount of data that it still installs anyway when you first put in the disc. It's just yep. all the extra data it then cycles through for each act. Because when you do the first time install for the base game and all its data, it takes, like, eight minutes. But this should only take about two, I think. Assuming we yeah. don't get any... Assuming we don't get any weird other weird errors like we did with like the disc icon because that yeah. was weird i actually had that happen when i was doing the initial install funny enough i had to switch back to my disc in order to get it to work so mm. yeah i have no frick, uh fucking idea i'm almost like i don't know if it is a matter of like my disc has an issue and that might have affected the uh the rip so i may or may not at some point in the future possibly just download a rip, uh, like a like a dump of this game, off of like a website somewhere, and then uh, transfer it onto here and see if that gives me any better luck. Mm. Yeah, as, as I was saying, I've had 
um, situations where I've done rips for my own personal use and they've been completely worthless. And then I've just gone and, you know, downloaded a torrent and it works first time, no problem. Yeah. So. <laughs> Also, where's the health warning about don't smoke cigs, you dummy? Uh, that warning is every other character ber berating Snake for it. <laughs> yeah, it's the entire rest of the game. <laughs> yeah. There we go. That was a quick install. Now let's get to one of the best parts of this game. The ending? I'm just kidding. No one likes the ending. We have the bionic woman interviewing David Hayter. Uh, no, that's Catwoman. Oh, Catwoman. Right, right. Leave Shit. me any weather. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, that's right. Fuck, I... Ugh. Hand in your nerd credentials, you fucking poser. <laughs> Whatever, I'm not the one that's, like, stroking Kojima's ego over the fact that he has friends in Hollywood. <laughs> in fact, I actively kind of dislike him for that part. <laughs> because it really does feel like you're doing, like, you're caring less about making interesting games and more just, like, taking the Adam Sandler approach of just, like, getting all the money from people to, like, have an excuse to hang, hang out with, out with your, your buddies. Six months. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Admittedly, I think a lot of his games, at least from the uh, their overall enjoyability factors, are still probably better than a lot of Adam Sandler movies. But, oh, yeah, I'm gonna... But, like, it, but even, it still... I, I, I would sooner sit through, I don't know, 20 hours of Death Stranding than five minutes of Jack and Jill. Agreed. <laughs> like, that film is fucking unforgivable. Yeah. Outside of, ironically, the Al Pacino commercial. That was funny. Yeah. But not in the way they ended it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is always the channel I turn to every time I am going through this part of the game. Because there's all these other interesting, like, weird commercials and, like, TV shows that are interesting. But I can't... But it's just... I still admire the fact that they got fucking David Hayter for this in person. <laughs> See, I always liked um, the weird fitness one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> with, with, the, with the Sarge. Mm -hmm. And um, the completely random... Um, yeah, the mercenary adverts. Yeah, Mantis and all that. Yeah, because they are just... Like, they actually feel like proper adverts. Yeah. Like, it's, it's scary how accurate they are. Very much so. Never a shot in the dark. Oh, yeah, there it is, that you like, little raven. Also, like, those things were unskippable, so once we're getting into the actual game cutscenes, I am going to skip all that shit just because we really need to get to gameplay. There's not yeah. enough time left in the stream to sit through some boring-ass uh, tirade about how war has changed. A statement that is clearly not true because I am on the side of Ron Perlman in this argument. <laughs> there we go. I think I still generally remember how to control things. This was the this was the Metal Gear where they introduced crouch walk. Oh, crouch. Yeah, excuse me. Cou crouch walking. I was kind there of we go. tripping over my words there for a bit. Yeah, just keep. Oops. A... Sorry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> There's a really good um, video essay by a guy called Steak Bentley who did, like, a three, four-hour um, breakdown of Metal Gear Solid 4 mm. and what it does right and what it does wrong. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And he sets a lot of the longer cutscenes to um, other bits, of, uh, like, non... Well, not technically non-game related bits of music because he uses the Proto Men quite a bit. Oh, but... yeah. It's done so well, it's <laughs> better than the actual game soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Like the uh, bit with um, Ocelot, where he starts doing finger guns everywhere, is set to the hounds. Oh, that's amazing. And it's so good. Such a perfect choice of song. Yeah. That said, though, even, like, with what it gets wrong, 
and how like some people like absolutely loathe this game considering like what it came after you know which was MGS3 <laughs> I'd say I still call this my second favorite Metal Gear Solid game just because my criteria for ranking these is very much on the basis that I do not take the story in any of these games seriously and think that they're all dumb and bad <laughs> I, I think once we got to, like, really, like, when it comes to the story, no one includes Metal Gear 1 and 2. Well, yeah. Because, because that would require the, having to play them to get some of the finer details. Yeah. And Snake's Revenge is just wrong. Yeah. But, like, the first Metal Gear Solid was fun melodrama. It was completely absurd, and it knew yeah. it. And then Metal Gear Solid 2 tried to be a serious story. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I know exactly what it was going for, and I appreciate it. It was just poorly handled. There are ways to get to the heart of a very meta-contextual narrative that, like, 2 was trying to go for. Without having to go to, like, the lengths of extending something that clearly had a lot of cut content to make yeah. it seem like it had value. It kind of felt like... It was, it, it, like, the way it came across was, on the one hand, it felt like, you know, we're trying to explain this as clearly as we can because, you know, these are ideas which your average player isn't going to understand. That's mm -hmm. not selling the audience short. It's a very high concept plot. Yeah. But at the same time, it goes, and we're going to speak slowly and loudly so you can follow. It's, it occupies a weird bit where it thinks a lot of its players and thinks nothing of them. Yeah. But yeah, it's like, yeah. Uh, like Ben, I, I agree. Snake Eater's story is the best, but like, I'd say it's the best in the context that it's like, it works the best standalone. And for how I like to play, uh, and, and kind of how I feel that there's like a lot of value to the gameplay of Metal Gear okay. that often feels like it gets undervalued even by its creators. Yeah. That like... Like, my uh, my enjoyment and appreciation of Metal Gear Solid 3's story is that it happens to exist. And it doesn't piss me off in certain ways. I think you know? Metal Gear 3, it's a game that the, the, sto like the, the stuff like the twists are very complex, but told in a very simple way. Yeah. And it's so much better for it. You know, there's lots of double crossing and double dealing and everyone's betraying everybody else. But you can still go, this guy bad, this guy good, this guy want to shoot everyone. There we go. Like, it's it's a complex story, but not a complicated one. Yeah. And that's where Metal Gear Solid 4 falls down. Mm -hmm. And 5, for that matter. And, and 5's a weird one in that case, because, like, there is so little to grasp. Like, they do absolutely they can to, like, have very little... Yeah, I mean, when you get down to it, the majority of the story is, hey, the worm. Yeah. Though all you, you get, get to see to... is his ass. Yay, the ass. When you trying... get down to it, the the story in five is is like ten hours of story dragged out over fifty hours of gameplay. Yeah. Which is why so much of it is like backstory told in the cassette tapes mm -hmm. it's like I don't care about 90% of what's going on here mm -hmm. for sure like it's, it's it's interesting finding out about what was going on in Afghanistan in 1984 but oh you gonna do it you bet I am hey are they gone no one more time no, I want to go back. Oh! Uh, uh, ah, shit. Well, no, this is just awkward. <laughs> it's just the way he's covering his face. Makes it look like a face palm more than anything. <laughs> like, he's just disappointed. Like, what am I? What have I done with my life? See, what should happen is when you break it off, your stress meter should just skyrocket. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, fuck. And then it just devolves into that one bit from, like, the fucking naked gun. <laughs> <laughs> no, from uh, one of the Chip Cheesem Let's Plays, where it's just him dying over and over again while having flashbacks. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> but no, I was just thinking because of like the stuff with you know statues and and like naughty bits. Oh yeah, and just that one. Yeah, the, the bit with Leslie forever. Nielsen just like going along the side of the building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have not seen the Naked Gun series in forever. I need to rectify that. Yeah, I still need to get around to like seeing like the uh, the second and uh, third one, just because like I only recently saw the. Oh yeah, that's right. I don't have any other like uh, methods for like interrogating currently. Oh well, I gave him a nap. I could have killed him, but it's fine. You go to sleep. Snuggle yourself. Go to fuck to sleep. <laughs> but yeah, I gotta just make my way over to where Otacon is. I'm not, I'm sorry, not Otacon, where Metal Gear Mark II is. So that way we can get all the real fun toys. Senor Flappy Bot. Yep. Totally not the same robot from fucking, what was it? <coughs> Snatcher? Police robot? Uh, police Snatcher. Bots? Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, I think it was called Metal Gear in that as well. Yeah, it was. Like, that's part of the joke. Yeah. And then, at least for the, the Sega version, at the end, he gets melded with a Mega CD. Oh, yeah. Still trying to be sneaky, all things considered. But that won't last for long once we get all our stuff. <laughs> Time to go on a killing spree. <coughs> there it is. Okay. Let's skip that. Also, real nice, at least with this game, they finally had it in their ideas to be like, you know, let's give you the option to pause the cutscene, not skip it. Which is mandatory, considering that, uh, you know, Infamously, the final cutscene is, what, 90 minutes long? I've, it's so they, long that they put, like, a save point in between some of them? Yep. I was gonna... Well, that was what I was gonna say, is that some of the mid-game cutscenes are, like, 40 minutes. Yeah, let's see. Where is it? Man, yeah, there's the most in the gaunt. There it is! Tanigashima! It is. And you've got the solar gun as well. Yeah, sunlight! Sunlight! Yeah, solar gun. Patriot. Yeah. All the good stuff. What? I love the most on the gun. I love that we get the fucking rail gun. We got Fortune's gun. That's great. Isn't the Thor um special weapon as well? Thor. I'm trying to remember like which uh which weapon type Thor was. I think the, the Thor is isn't it meant to be like a pistol that fires shotgun rounds? Or oh. something ridiculous like that? Yes, yes it is. There's the Thor. Large caliber hand rifle. Yeah, it's Meryl's I, gun. That's right. Or something like that. I don't know. You said like a, a pistol that shoots shotgun shells and I'm just like Kiriko Kyuvi's gun? <laughs> From fucking Votoms? Okay. And there we go. There's our loadout. Patriot. Oh uh, yeah, Patriot, Thor, Railgun, Solar Gun, Tanigashima. <laughs> All bar one, utterly lethal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Should also actually uh, do some stuff with, like, uh... yeah, get the iPod on there. Why not? Uh, let's see. Muna, syringe, SIGs, signal interceptor. Right, I forgot about that. Cardboard box. Yeah, I think that's fine as is, unfortunately. It's like, there's actually one thing that, like, I have to say I'm kind of, this I was disappointed to find out. So it's like, uh, do you remember, like, with uh, with this game, there was, like, an extra menu where it was, like, you could input passwords to unlock extra items, but there was also, like, a database, like, server that was independent of PSN, and, like, you could, like, log into that to, uh, uh, to like, download, like, special camouflage that was added to the game over time, you know? Yeah, there was, um, it was kind of like Silent Hill 3, and uh, you could unlock... There it is! First try! Yep, you've got a 33% chance of, um, unleashing the whirlwind every time you fire. I cannot believe that happened on the first go. I feel so <laughs> fucking happy with that. And you get so many items whenever it works. 
Yeah, it's oh, it's so good. But yeah, if I remember right, it was um, it was like if you you got passwords from the database or something, and if you put yeah. them in, you could unlock like it would give you Drebin points. There, yep, and when you get the Patriot out, and it just plays the da 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 da, da from the Snake Eater <laughs> theme. All right, so let's do some Thor action here. Yeah, this is this is the oh, gun that no even Meryl no used. even better since we got uh, got an EPC railgun time. Yes. Oh god, doesn't this doesn't this take up like a full minute to fully charge? Trying to remember. Oh, it's got some. I'm sure it's got a special feature which takes an obscenely long time to use. Or yeah, something. because there's that. Because there's that yellow line underneath the ammo count that charges up. Mm. But I forget, like yeah, you know, like you said, if there was like a hidden charge limit. Yeah, I'm sure there's something to do with the real gun. Whoa, 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 whoa! Bright lights, bright lights. Uh, <laughs> solar. Let's do this. Ah! If I remember right, this one does not work. The, the solar gun does not work in stage three. Yeah, because it's a um, night. And the only it, way to recharge... Yeah, only way to recharge is, like, if you're out in broad daylight. Which, you know, yep. that works for Act 2 and Act, uh, and act 1. Doesn't work on Shadow Moses because again you're at night and it's snowing anyway. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's nice that they actually put the thought into that. Yeah, it's true. There we go. Yeah, there's some fun goofy stuff that you could do with this. Which also, I gotta double check something if there's something that I could do with like uh. Because I know there was like another weird thing that you, that you could get. I forget if it was part of the base game or if it uh, only happened uh, like uh, through like uh, downloading from like the servers. But there was like different types of ammo that I think was Trank ammo that would yes. like enable different emotions. Yeah, emotion ammo. Um, you could yes, get it, it is. from Dreben. Yeah, and I got 300 of each. Yeah. Let, let's make some people terrified. <laughs> no, you make them laugh so hard that they pass out. We'll do one of At each. That's what I always did. Or at least I'm trying to actually line it up. Yeah, I think it takes three or four shots. Because if you see, they've got the little emotion bars next to their health. Yeah. And it's not until it... There it is. There yeah, it is. He's freaking out. Once it uh, starts flashing, that's when they're overtaken. So to yeah. Speak. There it is. Now he's now he's very sad. Very sad. And then we'll try out. Oh rage man! And laugh. I wasted my life watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh, you know it's real funny. Going back through like old internet content and people talking about Game of Thrones as it's a relevant thing. And, and just the sort of things where, like, just people talking about it without the foreknowledge that it was going to shit the bed as hard as it actually did. No, it's, it's when people get to season four or five being like, this is an amazing show. I can't wait to see it go from strength to strength. Aww. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's still not as funny as the people who were invested in Lost. Yeah. I think the other part that was more funny was, like, I was actually going through, like, some old uh, Let's Plays from Super Best Friends. And I think there was one bit where it was, like, Pad was just talking about, like, like, and, like Game of Thrones came up. Like, someone, uh, like, on the video brought it up. And Pad was, like, yeah, I bet that sounds cool. I'll watch it when it's all finished. And it's, like, well, it's finished. What now? <laughs> But at well, that point, one it... of us, it's like one of us watched it from the start, and the other didn't. Um, I feel I made the right choice. Yeah, same. I like I never watched a single episode of it. I only really ever like heard things in passing about like big moments related to it. Yeah. 
see i'd read the first two books two or three books and stopped because i could see that it was getting too crowded with characters yeah. um and besides which the characters that i actually liked were getting less and less focus um and then i watched the tv show and the, in the very first episode there's some big changes made to some of the scenes which completely changed the context of the rest of it yeah Oh yeah, that's right. I should and I was like, do something with the the camo just for the hell of it, since we're here. Oh, either uh, my vote is either one of the beauties or ocelot. Do I have ocelot? Or Otacon, Sorry. No, but I have big boss. Yes. Because which in reality, all... which in reality, that you know, that's solace. We all know this. Yeah. Yeah. Real that nice is and shot out terrifying. How they just modeled this. Yep. And it has the added effect that any enemies that see you immediately piss themselves in fear. Yeah. Hello, it's me. I'm heading o I'm heading off to work. <laughs> Hello, I'm business skeleton. <laughs> I'm off to do a business. business. Look at my cloth. Business skeleton warriors. <laughs> <laughs> Ah yes. Actually, looking at the outfit, he bears an uncanny resemblance to Skullface. I was I just about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at that. I I can already missing I, is the mask. It's funny because as soon as I put it on, it's like I I was immediately starting to hear people screaming in fear in terror. <laughs> I, I I thought it was only if they actually saw you. I didn't realize it had a radius. No, I think they did see me. They just popped around the corner and they just went back. Cause it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I'm just passing by. Some poor guy bleeding out in the corner. Just like, can you stop screaming and patch me up? <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's nice knowing you, gentlemen. I wonder if there's any speedruns that use the big boss camel. I hope so. Like if there I imagine it would be very useful. <laughs> like like for sections like this. Just oh man. Well yeah, because Wait, it's like <laughs> you don't even have to fight, even if you go into an alert phase, like some of these enemies will just not shoot back. <laughs> oh. Because if you remember the majority of this area that you're in or you were in. Yeah. is uh, the majority of its allies, isn't it? It is, yeah, because you're going through like the, the sort of resistance that are like yeah. fighting against the PMCs. Okay, hey, Okan, so... don't care. Yeah, there's Drebin. You bind your stepmother, you don't get to have an opinion. <laughs> you're still not as bad as your dad, but you're still <laughs> but you're still an Emmerich. <laughs> your, your dad was a nine- was an easy nine. You're about a hard six. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. But they're still above average, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Now we got the, you know, we got like the oh, bargains right. with Drebin, and let's yeah. also for the hell of it, because he gives us that M4. Let's just show like how crazy this shit gets with customization. Oh, that's right. Yeah, top mask. Because, what do you want? Dot sight scope? Yes. Uh, muzzle mount, let's see. Sure, let's have a suppressor on a lethal weapon. That'll help. Bottom mount, uh, yeah, we can have an underslung grenade launcher, or a shotgun, or a grip. Shotgun. Yeah, shotgun's great. I love it as well. <laughs> gotta be, gotta be the master key, every time. Yeah, laser sight, uh, that's what we can have on the left mount, obviously, that helps. Flashlight, as well, because why not? <laughs> because really? our gun isn't front heavy enough. I, admittedly, it feels like there's a missed opportunity that, that there aren't any more like mounts for the left and right side. Like, uh, and when you just realize the absurd combo that is laser sight and flashlight at a moment's notice, that's pretty great. Yeah, La laser sight and flashlight is completely pointless because one cancels out the other. Yeah. And like M4 Customs, the best for it just because it has all these different slots to work with. I'm trying, in yeah. fact, I need to, like, double check. Because, yeah, MK7, like, it doesn't have, like, a spot for the muzzle, you know? Hmm. Like, it just has, like, the top mount for the scope. Yeah, and it doesn't have the master key. It only has the four grips. But laser sights and flashlight for the left and right side mounts are still there. 
Yeah, AN94 only has the the bottom mount. Which <clears throat> Oh, but this has its own has one for a grenade launcher. That's still something. Yeah, very perilously mounted on it, I should say. Yeah. Another uh grenade launcher for that. Yeah, if no, I remember the no customization of assault rifles. Yeah, no gets, customization um, though for the uh for the Tanigashima, but then again, it doesn't need it. <laughs> no. Yeah, I think I was. If I remember gonna... the majority of assault rifles are able to mount the grenade launcher under it. Yeah. All right. Press triangle button while aiming to use the sight. Right. I forgot of the whole fucking switching between first and third person. <laughs> Ready with L1. R1 fires the fire using the R1 button, and for the main fire and R2 for the shotgun. I can cycle through double O buck, slug, and vortex ring uh, bullets if I want. I can uh, also... if I remember, Vortex is non-lethal, but has absurd range. Yeah. I can also change the the uh, the firing mode between the semi-auto, three-shot, and full-auto, if I want. Yeah. Un unfortunately, that's not for the shotgun, because that would be hilarious. Yeah. It is so... I fucking love the dumb shit in this game. <laughs> <laughs> like, I get it back in the day... You absolutely were disappointed and resented this game because Metal Gear Solid 3 was an amazing game. I agree with you there. It is amazing. It's still my favorite Metal Gear. Regardless of whether or not you personally appreciate it, you have to you can't deny it was a hard act to follow. Yeah. I mean, there were a lot of like games <laughs> from the PS2 era that like got PS3 360 sequels that were all tough acts to follow. Like this yeah. game. Uh GTA 4, probably the toughest act to follow off of San Andreas, which is why they just went with, like, the most unfun alternate approach ever. Also, Devil May Cry 4 coming off of 3. Ninja Gaiden 2 yep. coming off of Ninja Gaiden 1. RE5 coming off of RE4. Even though... I e e even though co op enjoyed it. Well, yeah. I, I know, obviously, because it's, like, co-op was a big deal for that. See, I never actually played it co-op. I only ever played it single player, and it's still one of my favorites in the series. Yeah. But then again, I'm weird, so. I mean, I mean, I was only able to recently get through, in recent years, get through RE RE five solo just because on PC there's the Alone in Africa mod. Ah. Uh, which just makes your partner invisible and have infinite health, but it still doesn't oh, stop yeah. you from like being able to just like attach guns to them. So you just have, like, a floating gun on the side that's helping you. <laughs> <laughs> trying to remember specifically if I got flip-turned. Okay, no, I, yeah, I got, I got a bit flip-turned upside down. All right. Just taking a minute. Sit right Sit there. Sit right there. <laughs> got to get my bearings and then slap the shit out of Chris Rock. Uh, Topical. And you thought you... You thought that you were going to get through at least one stream on Twitch where people weren't talking about that fucking Oscars at night. Yeah, talking about the one thing that reminded people that, oh yeah, the Oscars do exist still. <laughs> because rich people don't have enough things celebrating them. Yeah. And then, of course, but whatever. And at the end of the day, i like, you know what? Good on you. Good on you, Will. If I was in your position and someone that I cared about was getting a joke made about the uh, about them at their expense, especially for a disability, I'd slap the shit out of them too. Fuck the core. Actually, I had some dickhead on Twitter because um, we were saying that uh, we were comparing it to um, John Lovitz when he um, beat the shit out of Andy Dick for. Um, he was like okay. Phil Hartman, who you probably remember from such TV shows as The Simpsons, where he played Troy McClure. Oh, right, yeah. Um, Andy Dick got his wife back onto cocaine. Oh. I to think it was cocaine. Um, she was a recovering drug addict, had been for years, nearly killed her. He got her back on the stuff. And oh. it was during one of those drug binges that she killed him in his sleep. Oh. So... Andy Dick, already not a very particularly nice, well-regarded person. Yeah, that that's, um, that shit's not cool at all. And uh, John Lovitz was basically like a brother. 
uh, to Hartman. The hey, look at that. Were... They, like, they're still scared, but more importantly, they actually took shots at me when I was far enough away. But as soon as I got closer, they were like, oh, fuck, run. <laughs> but yeah, you were saying, again, about Andy Dick being a, being a piece of subhuman garbage. Yeah. Oh, well, if you haven't heard this story, your opinion of him is going to change significantly, I can tell you that much. Oh, yeah. So uh, Andy Dick uh, was doing a stand-up show, and he saw that John Lovitz was in attendance. And as I said, Lovitz and Hartman were like brothers. They were ridiculously close. Mm -hmm. And he starts making jokes about Phil Hartman's death. And towards the end says, I'm putting the Phil Hartman curse on you. You're the next one that's going to die. Oh. So John responds in a measured and calm way by slamming his head into a bar. Oh. <laughs> Literally just being like, hey, great set. Wham, wham, wham. <laughs> Slight exaggeration, but, you know, in my head, he's like, trying to it's like hey do you want to see a magic trick i'm gonna put your head through the bar yeah Ooh, didn't work <laughs> makes <laughs> uh makes that bitch slap uh from the weekend seem a whole lot more puts quaint it, by comparison <laughs> puts it into a lot of perspective but i i was of the i was talking to a friend on twitter about it saying like yeah that's the kind of that's the kind of friendship we all hope we have Someone who will defend you when you're not there, either because you're not in the, the premises or because you're dead. Yeah. And this one guy came in being like, well, I wouldn't want anyone to defend me. I mean, if my brother was dead and someone was insulting him, it wouldn't change anything. He'd still be dead. And I was like, how does it feel knowing that you don't care about anyone enough to defend their honor? Like, yeah, the guy's dead, but... You know, like, if anyone insulted one of my friends or loved ones that heavily, you better believe they'd be getting at the very least a strict talking to. Yeah. Like, I, I do not understand that decorum overall attitude. Yeah. Like, Especially when, like, even other examples I had been seeing was just more in the same way where it's like people like, oh, Will made the, the biggest mistake of his life. He's going to have his Oscars taken away from you. And just, like, common things I always kept seeing was just the uh, response being like, you know Harvey Weinstein's got 81 Oscars currently. Harvey Weinstein? Um, you've got um, Roman Polanski? Yeah. Um, you've got, um... Yeah, it's like them? almost like people that are trying to, like, hold up the decorum, either knowingly or unknowingly, are realizing that they're just, like, playing back in to the whole syste uh, systemic, like, white supremacy, racism bullshit that all these things are built on. Yeah, when Like, yeah, of course, it, of, like, of course people are, like, like trying to like pull the shit over like on Will saying that he's in big big trouble for this when a whole lot of other actors mainly white ones have gone the way scot free for like other bad shit. Yeah, let's not forget Marlon Brando when he received when he uh, won an Oscar sent a Native American woman up to accept his reward um, and used it. As an op well, he gave her the opportunity to talk about the plight of Native Americans and how they're treated, not just in Hollywood, but in general, uh, in life in general. John Wayne had four men holding him back from storming the stage to beat the shit out of her. Right, I saw that fucking tweet someone made and like even the clip of it. I was like, holy shit, that is just so much more violent than what happened uh, this weekend. Uh, yeah, John Wayne was not a friend to minorities in any way, shape, or form. He won several Oscars. He's not had them taken away. And he, like, you can say, yes, it was the 60s, the 70s, whatever. Uh, Roman Polanski's still alive. Yeah. Um, as, they, as they, still, said, they still venerated him even when he was in that point, uh, point where, like, he was clearly not going back to the country for fear of obviously getting arrested for, like, the absolute horrible things he did. Yeah, he's been in exile for the better part of 40 years now. Mel Gibson, full stop. Oh. Like, he's he still has his awards. So either accept the fact that you're holding things to a double standard, or shut up. Yeah. I don't care which. As exactly. long as it's one of them. Yeah, 
like because there's there's a really I would sooner like whether or not he did something whether or not what Will Smith did was right or wrong yeah he's being held to account because he's black plain and simple yeah and also like him being a popular actor you know there's the matter that you know he's rich he's part of like that particular class obviously so it's like he's not like like I'm not saying is that that just because like he's like he's like not white doesn't mean that he's uh, automatically like exempted from other things he could have like been a part of just because he's like in the company of like other rich people yeah you know? but but it, but in the particular case it's at least more sympathetic to understand why he did it considering that the person he slapped was straight up making a joke about his wife's like mental condition on fucking stage on television yeah and if you actually watch the footage because um like obviously the actual um televised footage was going back and forth between Chris Rock and Will Smith. Yeah. There's um, there's a clip that's come out where the camera, where we see the camera that's focused on him, and yes, he's laughing um, because he, I assume he assumes his wife isn't in the joke because yeah. it's the Oscars. There's a tradition of it being a bit of a roast to begin with. Blah blah blah. Yeah. But then he turns around and he sees his wife and he's sort of like, ah, okay, I I might have fucked that one up. And then you just see his face as he's like he slowly stops smiling, starts yeah. frowning, and goes immediately and just well, not immediately, but eventually goes into you know what what he did was wrong. Yeah, someone needs to do something about that. Yeah, you you took the realm of trash talk into an area where not all parties were totally like in on it because they could take it. You were clearly like going into the realm of this is actually like not being kind to someone anymore. <laughs> Yeah, and people were like, well, what if he had done it to Ricky Gervais? And I was like, motherfucker, that would be the best thing that ever happened to Ricky Gervais. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, yeah, there's He'd plenty of people. Out that... <laughs> he would be dining out on that story for fucking decades. God. Ugh. The what ifs are he so would... hilarious, if only for, like, the tweets, uh, for, like, the people I've seen that have gone out of their way to be all, like, you know, just replace all, like, the what if, uh, blank, like, uh, did blank to blank but just replacing it with like even more absurd like examples that it just reaches the levels of 9 11 and that it's like my favorite like <laughs> you are either doing this like as a joke or you really are that big of a chud that you really do think that this <laughs> is some abhorrent thing that has happened while still like being clearly just a white piece of shit that is holding double standards in this in my this scenario or don't know your history favorite. <laughs> my absolute favorite was someone saying, "What if he? Had, what if that had been Betty White up there?" It's like, <laughs> well, she probably wouldn't have made the joke for one thing. But let's yeah. let's see what happens when we take this very specific uh, set of circumstances that you somehow magically decided actually happened. You see where that goes? Yeah. Oh well, she would have put on a jetpack, done a loop de loop round his head, and then flew up his butthole. Yeah. I mean, you you see that video? Magical impossibility. Well, we, we've all seen that video, I presume, in which uh, Betty White tells uh, Ryan Reynolds to get uh, get her a cup of coffee and starts playing the victim whenever he is like, seriously, you're trying to boss me around for this? But everyone's just being like, how could you be such a monster, the Betty White? <laughs> uh, yeah. This guy was like, she could have fallen and she could have broken her hip. And it's like, yeah, but like, yeah. Chris Rock is literally 50 years younger than she was when she died. Yeah. So I don't think he's in danger. Never mind the fact that Betty White's also done like plenty of other like fantastic things in her lifetime. That is more than could be said of other like rich and famous like movie or TV stars. Yeah. No. And regardless of that. Whenever she did anything like comedy shows or stand up, where she was, you know, doing sort of like an MC role as, as Chris Rock did, yeah, she didn't go for personal attack, she went for dark comedy, and those yeah. two, two very different things. Oh, yeah, because yeah, like the latter is just like way more general, like the whole point is that it's not being targeted. Like, the way I've always seen it is that people, people say, oh, it's not, um. It's not hateful, it's gallows humor. To which I always say, okay, are you on the gallows? Because if you're not on the gallows, you're holding the person's legs, pulling them down. Yeah. Like, th there is a huge world of difference between 
I'm in on the joke and I'm being hateful. Mm -hmm. And it's a very difficult line for some people to see. Yeah, we've had like, you know, plenty of like, let's say competitive gaming communities, some that still do not get that and others that have like made honest attempts to try and get past that. <laughs> Such as say yeah, yeah. the FGC to like trying to actually like with at least like some like uh, parts of the fighting game community trying to like not actually just go straight into a, a you know just like calling someone like a slur or, or something like that yeah bro what are you talking about bro it was just a joke bro can't you take a joke bro it's, yeah it's like don't you have a sense of humor bro it's like yeah yes i do also but i'm pretty a sure prick. a big part of the example i gave of why that works is because in the case of the fgc on the western side of things a very like sizable portion of it is made up of african americans you know there, yep. there, there, there's like a non that like there is a non-small like like uh like non-white portion of that community so like of course like things are going to hit differently compared to like a competitive shooter or strategy game or, or wherever where it feels more stuff where it was more like very obviously trying to like embrace on the on the surface like the whole esports label that it just becomes evident that oh you you're just running a fucking white boys club I mean, it's granted it's a very small reference pool, but mm -hmm. I had a friend years ago who was very much into the, very much a part of the fighting game community. Went to a lot of tournaments, blah, blah, blah. And whenever he um, showed pictures of the events, um, the thing that struck a lot of people was that there was a, ver there was a lot of um, black people and there was a lot of Asians there. Yeah. And inevitably, Whenever he showed off um, pictures, people would be like, "Huh, I didn't know they were held in Chinatown." Oof. It's like, God no, damn it! Okay, that's wow. Yeah, um, uh, it's like you've never I, you've never I been to an arcade, motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I know that girl. She's from Glasgow. Yeah, like. <laughs> I, 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 she's from Bear's Den, which, if you know Glasgow, is, like, right in the heart of it. Right, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I, I don't know what ethnicity she is, because I've never asked, because I have no reason to. Yeah. And I've never thought, you know, any kind of Asian stereotype, because, you know, she's a friend. I don't think about those things. Mm -hmm. This no, literally never occurred to me to be like, so what part of Asia are you from? Yeah, just, like, I just that those kind of microaggressions where someone's just trying to prod with different versions of where are you from? Yeah. Like, I remember um, it was a, a training thing. Um, for the place I worked at where we were it was like one of those three day training retreats with like places from like people from like three or four other sites around the country yeah. we're all taken to this one place put up in a cheap but nice hotel but we were at this as we were um, like the end of the first day was sort of like a meet and greet with all the other people and there was a um, Asian girl who I, I was trying to work out what her accent was. She was from the UK, but I just couldn't place her accent. And I was like, oh, it's, uh, so whereabouts are you from? And she was like, oh, God, look, I don't have time for it. And I was like, no, 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 I just I can't place your accent. She's like, oh, I'm from Leeds. I was like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, like, I, I, I genuinely was like, why is she being so aggressive? And it wasn't until afterwards I was like, oh, right, I accidentally did a dickhead thing. Yeah, you, you at least clarified to her after afterwards so that, like, it didn't, like, uh, so, like, that, uh, like, that bad impression didn't last. <laughs> yeah. It, it was one of those things where we were both, like, re we were both seriously embarrassed afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Because, as I said, I was just like, I don't know where, like... You sound a bit Liverpool, but also a bit here and there. And afterwards, I was like, oh, I just suddenly realized why that sounded bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we, we laughed about it afterwards, but I was just really... I was like, I am so sorry that you thought that's what I was going for. 
She's like, no, I, I'm sorry. I was like, no, no, you've got every reason to be upset. I think this is the first time I've watched any of these cutscenes wearing the big boss mask and the suit <laughs> in combo. I think these, never... I, th I think this has made all of these like ten thousand percent better than they already are. <laughs> Which is to say, they weren't already that great to begin with. Yeah. See, now I want to do a playthrough with one of the beauties. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. Again, more reasons for why, even if you were disappointed by this uh, game fall coming off of MGS3, fuck you for thinking this is the worst thing to ever have been made. I mean, we've got portable ops sitting right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that game is unforgivable. <laughs> or, you know, if you want to go for one of the less obvious punching bags, big chunks of Metal Gear 5. Yeah. Like, the gameplay is good, but the story is a complete shit show. Yeah. I mean, my bigger problem with 5 overall was just more that, like, it had become the most stealth optional the Metal Gear games had been. That, like, I don't even see it as a stealth game anymore. It is a commando simulator. Yeah. It's like, you're no longer about being a super sneaky spy. You're about being Arnold Schwarzenegger, like, storming infinite amounts of, like, compounds from the end of that movie. Yeah. I can't, I still can't get over the fucking big boss mask. <laughs> especially because, <laughs> especially because the mouth moves. Like, this I is the first say, time I've discovered this. Like, the mouth actually fucking moves. <laughs> it's like, I know that it's, you know, it's coming out and it's David Hater's dulcet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's, Meryl is like even more concerned now. It's like, Snake, where's your skin? <laughs> Snake, that's an that's an awfully bad sun tan. Shouldn't you see a specialist? <laughs> I got six months to live anyway. <laughs> Doesn't like, matter I, what I, I do. Accelerated I know, aging. You must be the I know it's David Hater's dulcet tones coming out, but I still keep feeling you should be going. Just occasionally making a wet gurgling noise. As, yeah. You know, he's, Bit backs up in his throat. Yeah. I guess it is at least a very good detail is that because he's missing the skin and the lips, it's like you're not obviously seeing the lip animations because all you yeah. got are fucking teeth. <laughs> oh god, imagine how creepy it would be if his teeth were moving up and down. Oh god. The, in, in another game made by other devs less focused on, like, this level of, like, bullshit attention to detail, they would absolutely do that. That's that's what you would get if Skullface was in Metal Gear Rising. Oh, man. Probably would still be a he, better he, use of Skullface than how he was actually used. <laughs> he would have weird piston teeth in place of lips. Yeah. And it would be amazing. And it would be horrifying. And he would still be like, even though everyone is a cyborg... You know, his head would still be, like, exactly the same as it was. It wouldn't be a cyborg version of his skull face. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, they would be like, oh, yes, it's blue because it's covered in some kind of prototype polydermal solution. It's like, no, my face is always like this. <laughs> no, I sneezed and got stuck this way. What the fuck do you think happened? <laughs> oh, man. Jeez. Yeah, this just watching this further solidifying why this is my second favorite Metal Gear game. I'm I'm also impressed that the model doesn't have a nose either. Yeah, yeah, it's literally just like all like the the muscle. Yeah, like any other game, I would expect them to no pun intended cut corners. Yeah, and just like have the the nose there, but you know, I don't know, invisible or just like a vague black texture, but <laughs> no, it's they've gone the whole nine yards. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. I just remembered with the uh Yeah. Like when they're showing the names. I think you hit R2 and it like changes yep to their uh, motion actor. Yep. I think if you do it again it does their oh no. No, no, it just um, goes back and forth between their voice actor and the uh, motion actor. Uh, I was sure that there was uh, an option to bring up their Japanese actor as well. Nah, I, th I think that might only be the case if you were playing like the Japanese version, just because that makes ah. sense. 
like there's only the like they only have the English dub on on the international version. Okay, Akiba. Oh, Akiba. Anyway. You you asshole. <laughs> You're the worst thing about this game. Next to Rose. Second worst thing about this game. No, I still say the worst is still is Naomi. You quit the unit. Mm. See, the thing I don't like about Rose is the, the fact that she was like, oh, yes, um, your son? Yeah, he dead. No, I'm not going to tell you that we've got, we've got a plan to keep him alive separately. Yeah. He's he's dead. Yeah. I mean, well, I, see ya. I mean, like, that part's shitty on her front, but I also, like, pin that on Campbell as well, considering he was complicit in it, and he's just, like, taking full brunt. It was like, yeah, I'm totally just remarrying to this girl who is way, way younger than I am, though still legal. <laughs> yes, I am legally old enough to be her ancestor. What are you here for? Got that conversation. Uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm a very lucky man. That fucking codec conversation when Snake, like, brings it up to, to Campbell is just like, you, you can really feel, even through all the forced gravel, that, like, David Hayter is selling this character as, like, I cannot believe you are fucking doing this, you asshole. It's, yeah, it's, it's one of the... It's, it's this moment of genuine disgust where he's like, dude, seriously? Yeah, what the and then, fuck like, is the, wrong with you? and then Campbell, like, when, uh, when is, like, uh, of, uh, like, during it, just puts a, uh, just tries to, like, add some brevity by going, like, ha, lucky me, right? And it's just, like, no, <laughs> dick up, stupid. <laughs> oh, um, man. I'm not, I'm not saying that uh, the way you said that filled me with disgust. But I just did a full body cringe so hard. I now look like Big Boss. <laughs> I cringe so my hard that my skin floor. is just like falling off. <laughs> my skin was just like, nope, I want no part of this. I need to leave. Yeah, just crawl out of it to get away. But yeah, it's yeah, it's just Naomi is like, and it, uh, like just so much of like, well, like her involvement with like the villains and just kind of like. A lot of the same reasons that, like, Chip brought up in his Let's Play all those years ago for why he didn't like her, I also similarly dislike. But it's yeah, also with the added benefit of, I liked it better in the PS1 game when she had the fake British accent. It gave yes. her some better semblance of actually having a character than just being deadpan monotone. Like, so monotone that just having the reputation of being voiced by Jennifer Hale wasn't enough to save it. That's the thing, because Jennifer Hale is a fantastic voice actress. She really is. She is she's yeah. one of my favorites, not just from, you know, back in the day, but, like, right the way up to date. Yeah, like, you, and... you, yeah, like, I have often thought of her, again, like, in the classic sense, but then you're reminded, oh, yeah, she still gets around doing, like, voices for other characters even now and manages to keep up that quality, but it's just... She still does a lot of work with cartoons and games, and yeah. she's still really, really good at it. Mm -hmm. And she's just so flat in this. Yeah. And I, I would love to know, like, obviously the the the, the director yeah. has a lot of say in how a character comes across. And I'd like to know, like, what was going on in the recording booth? Yeah, it really was she trying to give her more of a character and being shot down? She's a professional. She's not going to phone it in. Yeah, it it really does feel like to me that it would have to be like uh, something that's like director mandated because I think if there's one thing that could be made as like a difference between David Hayter and other uh, voice actors throughout Metal Gear's history is that I think it's clear David Hayter has historically cared the most more than anyone. Like when you look back at stories of how he took a pay cut just to make sure that he could get all the original voice actors back for Twin Snakes. Like, I'd that say says a lot. Between him and Robin Atkin Downs, those are the two guys that have... They're, they're arguably the best performers in the series, mm -hmm. and they definitely seem to, to care about the characters as a whole. Yeah. Because I remember reading an interview with Robin Atkin Downs um, long after the fact with Metal Gear 5, and he was like... Well, he was said, okay, oh, he was asked, okay, obvious elephant in the room, David Hater. 
Mm -hmm. what was it like not working with him? And he's like, well, we found out that um, Keith or Sutherland was going to be in it roughly the same time you guys did. We th Jeez. we were assuming that it was going to be us and him as usual because we've got that rapport, we've got the camaraderie, yeah. we work well together, and we found out, but when it comes to these things, we're at the bottom of the totem pole, we have no say in what goes on. So, you know, all we could really do is just go, are you sure this is the right idea? And when they said, yeah, this is the direction we're going in, just, okay, guess this is how we're doing it then. Yeah, because they they were asked by a lot of fans at the time, well, why didn't you sabotage it? Why didn't you, you know, fuck up your performance? It's yeah, like, yeah, that that's a real uh, smart thing to to do in any context when it's like you're, you're trying to do this stuff so that you can make a living. It's like, yeah, you can you you can do what you can to get your friends help. But if you're sabotaging your own career in the process, kind of an own goal. Yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to backfire hard. Yeah, more often than not, trying to do those things as a matter of, like, spite doesn't actually get the message through to the people you think it's trying to get to. Yeah, it's it's never going to work. And you're just going to fuck yourself and your friend. Because you're going to be known as the guy who's unprofessional and only wants to work when their buddies are working with them. Yeah. And that's that's only going to screw both of you over. It's just a shame how it all ended up. Yep. It's, it's Metal Gear started off as one of the biggest franchises of the 90s and then kind of just retired with a cold, wet fart. Yep. Thanks, Konami and Kojima. Yep. Like, everyone says that it was because of everything that happened to... Like, it was Konami putting the pressure on Kojima, and it's like... In fairness, he took five years to make a game and probably would have taken another three if Konami hadn't put the, the screws on him. Yeah, as well as some of his own other particular decisions that makes it seem like he's not... He, he really just stopped caring about trying to, like, foster his particular team to be ready to carry on the mantle past him. Because yeah, we saw he... what because we saw what ultimately led to us getting uh, revengeance, which ultimately <clears throat> a good thing. But we know that that original game they were trying to make was just not going anywhere. <laughs> I mean, I've said before that the best thing that ever happened to Raiden was getting away from Kojima. Yeah, because like when Metal Gear Two came out, everyone was like, "Ha, look at this pathetic girly man." And then when Four came out, people were like, "Ha, look at this pathetic Edge Lord." Yeah. And then Revengeance comes out, and they're like, okay, he's still an edgelord, but he's done well. Yeah. Like, he, he actually has a character beyond whining about his lot in life. Yeah, but even then, just thinking about the fact that he's still, like, he was still, like, uh, feeling like he needs to, like, uh, uh, step in and just be, like, the hands-on director for everything because, like, no one else, like, at the studio was being able to, like, pull the same thing off for their own projects and i'm like shouldn't you be doing a better job of actually trying to teach those people to do that isn't that ostensibly yeah, what creators like shinji mikami are out there trying to do yeah, like as oh, yeah there's, there's a couple of schools of thought when you're a director or a producer and it's like on the one hand you've got um the kubrick approach whereas where, where it's you are, you are in depth up to the elbows in everything because yeah. you can't trust anyone to see your vision through and that works okay in cinema not so much in games yeah maybe for like a particular game if uh, if you know that like from the very inception it's the sort of thing where like you know that it's your baby like it's the yeah. thing that that you have conceived and really want to like bring out its full potential in every which way. But what and is you the can sort get away of thing... with that in, with indie games. Yeah, but what is the sort of More thing where it's titles. where like you are a studio that is capable of doing multiple games and there are other people at the studio that might have the talent to want to like bring up their own ideas from like the concept phase to reality. 
you think you should be doing a better job of actually trying to, like, help them realize that as opposed to being like, okay, fuck you, let me show you how it's done. And then yeah. that just does not prepare them well for the future. Yeah, there is... I, th I think it, especially in uh, Japanese productions. Yeah. Because Japanese corporate culture is vastly different to Western yeah, corporate and, culture. Yeah, and just like the... Obviously, like the, the the feelings of like always like respecting those like in positions of like, you know, hierarchy and superiority, you know. Yeah, I I um, had a friend who um, he went to work on some projects in the Japanese branch. He was working in a certain bank that shall go unnamed, mm -hmm. but he was working. Um, he went over to Japan to help them with, um, I think it was something like they'd gotten some new systems or something. I don't know the, the details, but he was like, yeah, you know the old saying, um, you don't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs? In Japan, they try and make omelettes without involving the chicken. Jeez. Like, you, your general, um, like, even questioning the higher-ups is seen as a very, very bad thing. You basically go, okay, 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 I will do everything you have asked, and then you try and do what needs to be done while doing everything that they've asked, which may well be completely at odds with what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Japanese corporate culture is insane. Ugh, <sighs> yeah. It's a real nightmare. Yep. And even just with, like, all the things where it was, like, Kojima just not at a point just no longer being able to trust anyone in Koji Pro to like head up their own projects just reminds me of like how much like that possible like third zone of the Anders game could have gone either way. I feel like in some ways it would probably have ended up because because that was the thing where I think when it was announced it was very specifically Kojima being like yes I'm going to be the director of this even though he had not ha been a director on either of the first two games. He was just a producer and gets often misconstrued as being the creative head of that because he was a producer and he made that really sick-ass trailer for Zone of the Enders 2. Yeah. The I one mean, everyone the, the remembers whole... from TGS that was like six minutes long. <laughs> yeah, like one of the big things about it was that it was a Kojima game, but he was mostly just coming up with stuff like the plot. Yeah. Um, it, it, it was mostly... It was nine-tenths him handing off the rails, uh, handing off the reins to someone else. And essentially it was going to be using him as, his name as promo. Mm -hmm. And then it all kind of went wrong. Yeah. And, and it's just like, man, Zone of the Enders, like as a franchise overall, has some very clear problems as far as like, uh, uh, like how it's designed as a mecha game. That most people like that are really big fans of it uh, clearly miss the point of because there's so much more into it as far as being like again like thinking oh it was absolutely like from the minds of Hideo Kojima and literally everything but yeah. it's like just... like dude like this is missing like some of the key fundamentals behind what makes virtual on good like how the hell are you like this like taken uh, like uh, falling head over heels for this game because of how it's like oh you can just freely float through the air no problem and i'm like cool but what about all the other things that makes virtual on and its kin work mm. uh we got really good camera angles for fights yeah my point though we... <laughs> well i mean we we were superior to virtual on because we've got really impressive set pieces Compared um, to a game that was all about the one-on-one -on -one fights. Good job. <laughs> exactly. It's like, uh, I, I see what you're trying to suggest, but you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, just the... Uh, it really is unfortunate because I really did like Zo uh, Zoe 2 when I first played it, like everyone else. But it's the oh, sort yeah, of thing it... where it's like... it like I really do think of it like in the same category as something like For Answer. Where it's like mm. the reason it gets so much appreciation from a lot of people is because of like the the part where just like not that many uh, of those people actually go on to play other games in the genre and are able to like uh, like form a critique or like an an analysis on like what it does well in other areas compared to this, you know? 
Like, like the importance of like dashing in directions and what that means for movement, defense, and how you're able to like cleanly connect attacks while also protecting yourself. Which Zoe 2 really doesn't do that well because its uh, gameplay is like way more uh, favorited towards like the close quarters uh, scenarios. Which are admittedly very stylish looking, you know. The camera work does a lot for those. But you also have to do so much chasing just to get to those enemies like close enough to do it. That it feels like you're not doing a whole lot that feels especially interesting or strategic when dashing and flying around. Yeah. And also with, say, Virtual On, every... Well, ignoring the fact that every mech is different, mm -hmm. each weapon has a very specific purpose and use. Yeah. And... Th there's, and... there's key ranges for, like, each, uh, like, weapon, along with, like, firing trajectories and whatnot. And, oh, oh, shit. Uh, Akiba just shat himself and died. Oh man. Yeah, whatever. I think that was actually <laughs> in, enough of MGS4 for order. what I could do. <laughs> <laughs> he shot himself and then he died. Yeah, that, that's normally the opposite of what happens when you die. <laughs> <laughs> Akiba's just built different. <laughs> you know, it's like just, when some I... people get alcohol poisoning, they throw up and then pass out and die. It's like that, but instead of going up, it goes down. <laughs> Everyone's just standing around him being like, you think he's got any more in the tank? No. Nah, Shit. No. <laughs> no, he, for some reason, he just turns into a poop of vacuum and starts inhaling it back up. It's the oh, weirdest no. thing we've ever seen. <laughs> uh. And we can't even blame it on the nano machines because he doesn't have any. Yeah. We didn't even get to that part uh, in, the, in this demonstration because it was so early on, but whatever. Game came out like... <laughs> almost 14 years ago <laughs> like this was summer of 2008 <laughs> statute of limitations is gone whatever uh, yeah I, that, I always yeah. say more than 10 or 15 years and unless it's you know like a really little known game or movie <laughs> um you're on your own yeah that's the ps3 everyone <laughs> what an interesting system admittedly it's like with the games that we were showing off i feel like we ended up getting through Less compared to what we ended showing up, uh, showing off when we did like the Dreamcast grab bag, but I think a lot well, of that we still is did like half a dozen games for that, didn't we? Something like, I, it almost feels like it's more, but I think that might have also been because a lot of Dreamcast games, a lot of notable ones, are generally stuff that are made with ar arcade sensibilities in mind or are arcade ports. So there's a or lot more of a. Been... A lot more of a get in, get out mentality to it. Whereas here, these are a lot of games that are like, these are console games. You're going to boot one up and you're going to sit here for an hour at minimum to feel like you got your time's worth and then get out. Yeah. Or stuff that's been ported to like seven other consoles since. So everyone's familiar with it anyway. Yeah. But it's still fun kind of going back through this. It's weird how like, like I think getting this PS3 and then installing custom firmware on it was like the most excited I ended up being as far as the uh like the uh like uh playing stuff for this. Even more so than like getting the GDMU for my Dreamcast or the Fenrir for my Saturn. Because I think unlike those other systems, like PS3 was a system where I had plenty of games for it, both digital and physical, and was just left without, like, a good, comfortable way to, like, actually play those again. Yeah, I really should get a new PS3, um, simply because, as I said, I've had my slimline one for about a decade. Yeah. And I've got a, um, a fat one which I use solely for Blu-rays, and mm -hmm. I have no idea how much time either of those have left. Yeah, just... Just in order to be safe, always stick with a slim and beyond. Yeah. <laughs> Especially for this actually, gen. I actually um, had a chance to get a um, an original um, PS3 that still plays PS2 games. Oh, nice. Um, but I think it was about 350. Um, yeah. No. <laughs> I like the PS2, and I really want to play PS2 games on a big screen. But not that much. Yeah. Admittedly, part of me was lamenting after getting this that I wish I 
had gone to the effort of finding another fab model because of wanting to play PS2 games on here and not have to worry about, like, 480i for recording purposes. Mm. But now I got the retro tank and new capture card coming, so that part is, like, does, so like, that regret is completely gone. But I'll still yeah. play PS1 games on this for the time being until I'm ready to get a PS1 with, like, a ODE installed on that, and I will be completely set on all the retro consoles I'll ever want. Like, I'm fine just stopping the, the at the start of the early 3D gen as, like, the starting point. Mm. Like, there's there's more than enough, like, perfectly fine ways to play SNES or Genesis games on things that aren't a SNES or a Genesis, you know? Like, oh, that, yeah. that problem has been solved for ages. Uh, I mean, I've been playing a, a hell of a lot of... Um... SNES and P SNES and Mega Drive and PS2 games lately. Yeah. Um and yeah, it's it's just way too easy to do it these days. It's great. Yeah. Especially with like the kind of the strides that PCSX2 has made recently as far as mm. paying off like its technical debt that it had for the longest time with like all the weird shit that emulator had that was like holding back certain games from being able to run well at decent speeds. And now it's like, no, we finally got all this new modern stuff, Vulcan rendering. We got rid of the plug-in bullshit that made no sense even back then <laughs> because we yep. should have just made it one emulator type and not a modular one. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I mean, I've been playing Shadow Hearts too. And right. apparently that is a very difficult game to emulate faithfully. Mm -hmm. um there's a, there's a lot of weird problems with shadows but i'm just like well it's it's not impacting the game too badly i i basically ignore it and the only other problem you have is the um when you when you go to do attacks there's a big wheel that comes up that you have to hit the right spots in right thing um in the standard game it shows your character but when you emulate it, it either shows a black screen or for some reason it'll show a still of the characters like five seconds before. Weirdest thing. Hmm. But again, it's not any, it's not a deal breaker. Right, yeah. Like it's it's weird. The shadows are annoying, but after a while, I just stopped noticing it. Hmm. Like three quarters of the way through the game and yeah, fully playable. Yeah. It's 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 still nice that I still have like these systems that are in working condition still and that I'm so close to finally getting like some good equipment to like take better footage of for like like local recordings or streaming even so much so that it's like I'm glad I've decided that I'm going to be doing like a playthrough of 3D dot game heroes and maybe mm -hmm. another PS3 game for the foreseeable future just so that I can be sure that when I go back to streaming like games that are like in four by three and I use my CRT overlay for them that I can finally make them look a lot nicer because the retro tink 5x it actually has like some built-in like filters on it including like scanline and shadow mask filters which I think might be better overall like it could potentially be an upgrade from like the regular like PNG of scan lines I've already been using especially yeah, because I, shadow I... masks are like uh <clears throat> I remember you telling me this a while ago how it's like you said, like in the uh, like in PAL regions, you guys didn't have scan lines, and I was like, yeah. technically, there's st they still should be. But then I remembered after you know looking at the filters on the five X and like looking up elsewhere, I realized that it's like you're like you guys as well as us, we did not get stand lines scan lines on consumer CRTs the way everyone thinks scan lines are. We have what were like aperture grill like shadow masks. Where it's like, mm. if you look at the screen really, really closely, it's like you see what is like a like a trapezoidal looking like grid of lines mm. connecting each other. So you're not getting like the thick horizontal lines that would otherwise be on like Sony Trinitrons or PVMs and things like that. Because I, I definitely noticed that when I got my, my JVC CRT like from like last year, you know? And just looking yeah. very closely at the screen that, yeah, it's not the horizontal lines. It's just like an after grill shadow mask. Problem is, I can't find a decent, like, PNG overlay that I can slap on there because it's <laughs> a lot easier for people to just make the horizontal lines. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like technically, yes, we did have them, but they were so small as to be basically unnoticeable. Yeah, 
and that's basically the idea that hopefully like with these like filters on the 5x and how i get them to work on twitch streams maybe i could still get that effect to come through nicely or maybe not because of how like bitrate will just crush it or something i'm not sure i mean there's plenty of crt filters overall i can do things to make it look more authentic while still being a good picture quality because you know we may grew up with composite but there was still better analog uh, like video outputs that were available during our time even before <laughs> hdmi you know we we just didn't yeah. know better because because those were the tvs our families had growing up and they didn't give a shit <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's like when you think about ps1 games that you played as a kid and you're like oh the graphics were amazing everything was photorealistic and then you actually look and you can count the polygons and you're yeah. like oh i was deluding myself horribly what yeah. what is that yeah you were uh, you were like yeah, you were wondering why everything's so pixely with when you completely forgot that with like composite video signals, you were getting a lot of color bleed between those pixels. Yeah, everything was a lot fuzzier, so it didn't look as bad. And then you play on anything approaching even like 480p, and you're like, oh, this this looks like ass. Yeah. <laughs> like what what the hell is going on here? I remember these looking good. But the other thing that I'm especially looking forward to with this uh with this new equipment coming in is like a project that like I might as well like the describe because it's still like kind of in the pre I'll call it pre-production phase because I'm still doing <laughs> things to like get it prepared and ready for when I can actually record things proper but you know I've I've obviously done more like sorts of content on the internet than just like doing these dumbass live streams you know like, I've done Let's Plays. That's what I primarily did for videos, like, years and years before doing this. And I've kind of, in some ways, wanted to, like, still do plenty of other, like, pre-recorded video content on the site next to these streams, you know? So you're opening an OnlyFans. No, but bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh... Well, I don't know. Maybe this he, he would be my thunder. maybe this would be uh, OnlyFans uh, material, but maybe for like weird, like not in ways that you would normally expect. But um, <laughs> there's a lot of weird people out there. That's yeah. all I'm saying. But um, <laughs> rather than just being like, oh, more let's plays, I want to do something that like I'd been inspired by from like uh, watching Gigaboots in the last year and like discovering that channel and wondering why the hell had I not heard about them until just now because they've been around for a long time. And I've been inspired by into wanting to do what they used to do, which were like these sort of theme months of videos where it's like one video a day of like based around like, you know, they did it uh, where it's like they had some uh, years where they did a month of Castlevania or a month of Mega Man. Mm -hmm. You know, some videos would be short, uh, would be of games short enough that they could do a whole playthrough. Others would just be like a demonstration, like a quick look. Mm -hmm. I'm planning to do that later this year. But, as you would expect, given my interest, it would be for Mecha Games. It would be a Mecha Month, as you will. Hmm. And... That, that would be perfect for May? Well, I'm not going to get could... it done in May, so there you go. <laughs> well, fine then. I was going to say you could call it Mecha. No, call it Mechtoberfest, and I'll have it ready by October. <laughs> nice. Yeah, because it's like... The, like, the thought came to me when I got my PS, uh, my current PS3 and was setting up because I was remembering, man, there's all these other Armored Core games. There are these, like, Macross and Gundam games that are, like, surprisingly solid. You know, like, I didn't show off Gundam Unicorn, but, like, I said before that, like, it's by From Software. And it is, like, legitimately really good because it uses the gameplay of one of their earlier uh, series as, like, a basis. And they fine-tune it to match, like, the... Like, the mechanical sensibilities of Universal Sentry Gundam. You know? Mm. Like, apply that to space combat, and it's really fucking sick. And then, think so thinking about that, uh, all the PS2 games out there that are, like, mecha-based, be it Fight FromSoft or others, there's some for Saturn and PS1, and I was like, you know, there's a lot out there that I could easily fill for 31 days. I have all the means to play them, 
And now that I have like a retro tank and a new capture card on the way, I could like upscale these naturally and just like get together some really solid videos of like, you know, maybe like of some games because some of the armored core games, you know, like you, you, you know, like if you're just focusing on showing off the missions, those are done in an hour or two. So like just showing off what that story is like, others could be just like quick looks of like, hey, here's what the core gameplay loop of like the Macross RPG is like and things like mm. that, because. I really do feel like uh, compared to some other like types of game genres, there is nothing I would like to do more public service for than like shedding a light on what the fuck mecha games are and what qualifies as like legitimately good ones as yeah. well, because it is, I feel still so easy for some people to not know that half of this shit exists by virtue of it never coming outside Japan. And when you have a lot of people that, you know, they don't, uh, like, do a lot of imports, you know, that that compounds it. You end up with people that, where their only experience might be like, well, I played MechWarrior 2 on PC. That was fun. And you're right. MechWarrior 2 is fun. But that's kind of besides the point. There's still so much more, as well as some that, like, prove that it's not just an aesthetic skin you put over an existing game type. It's something mm -hmm. you have to design from the ground up to really give you that, like, power fantasy that you are piloting this clearly fictional vehicle that cannot exist in our world, but it is awesome to imagine yourself doing so. Yeah. That is that is what the goal that I'm trying to shoot for by, like, just recording 31, at the minimum, like, different games. Some of them are going to be, like, multiple games into one video because they're similar enough. Yeah. And, well, I imagine when you're doing some of the, like, 16-bit games... Uh, there's, not, there's not, really, not really a actually. lot going on there. Well, uh, I, I'm actually just going to spoil right off the fact to like, uh, uh, off the bat, like all the games I'm planning, they're all going to be like coming, uh, like the videos for them will be like in more or less the chronological order of when they released. And the first one's just going to be the original virtual on. So okay, like, so like, I know, I know Valkins uh, like, uh, and like all those other like 2d games and whatever, like, you know, they got their following. But I have a particular fondness of what really like uh, lights my fire are the 3D games. So I kind of want to show those off. Unfortunately, that also means no strategy RPGs like Front Mission or Super Robot Wars. Because it's like, mm. they're good. But I think more than ever for like how I would be able to show them off, those are more stream material, if anything. Like, they're slow burns no matter what. Yeah. And besides which, like, if you're planning on doing... Super Robot Wars. That would be best, better off as a bonus anyway. At the end, yeah. You're like, hey, now that you know all this shit that's going on, here's what happens when we smash them all together like a bunch of toys. Yeah. So yeah, look forward to November first when like I stream Super Robot Wars thirty because I think that will <laughs> be like because like after the last game I plan to have at the end of Mecha Month, that'll work out chronologically. Uh, I I still haven't played. SRW thirty, yeah, uh, same here. I mean, like, I, I mean, I still kind of lament that, like, by the time they got around to making English, English versions of these, this was after the Z series, because mm -hmm. I absolutely adore the uh, the lineup they went for in those games, especially by Z three. But yeah. at the same time, it's like, like I totally get uh, just from like looking at even the latest uh, games. Like there's there's still meeting a very good quality and there's some very fun interactions. Mm. But yeah, that's I, it. That's I would like love the, to get the, the Z trilogy done. Just same. Because it looks so much fun. Z and Alpha. Like those were always like the big ones that I've just always been so envious of. Yeah. But that's that's basically like the the plans for the future. Like both for as as far as like what I'm hoping to do stream content wise and also like pre-recorded video i mean like the initial idea that i wanted for a theme month was one that was all based around treasure games but like uh like as much as i love it like i know i can't do one cc's of the uh of the of all those games as consistently as i would like and i mm. and like i and because it's pre-recorded as opposed to a stream I feel there's an impetus on me to not only have the game be as front and center as possible, but also show it in the absolute best light it can be. And I feel mm. at this current juncture, mecha games are the ones that like I'm most like equipped to do, even if it means I'm having I'm gonna have to 
go back uh, go back to training hard to make sure that my skills in Armored Core Last Raven have not lapsed. Because <laughs> that, that is a hard one. That is, I think, the core reason why this idea of a theme month would never be streamed. Because you will never see me stream Last Raven. That is too intense. Uh, that's the last PS2 game, isn't it? That is correct. Yeah. It yeah. was basically the end of the classic style of Armored Core gameplay. And Yeah, I remember yeah. hearing that that was just basically them going, okay, you fuckers want a real challenge? Yeah. It is the game I point to every time I see the discussion come up from, like, like uh, Miyazaki fans. As I call them, because I feel like it, I've like it's too dignified to refer to them as FromSoft fans. That every time there's a new game that comes out, it's like, oh man, is this the hardest FromSoft game yet? And I'm like, bitch, sit your ass down. Check out this shit from 2006. <laughs> you... that's, that's the thing. Like, pe a lot of these people only have a very limited frame of reference and wouldn't touch an Armored Core game if their arms were on fire. Yeah, like lack of context frame of reference the things that like i value about like trying to like inform people on because i feel like it really can just open eyes as far as like being able to go out and like uh engage with other stuff there's mm. only like obviously like you know there's good reason to have favorites i obviously have my own favorites for particular things that's never a bad thing but but you know like if you really do want to like profess yourself as being like way into the sort of like medium or like a hobby that you're into you kind of owe it to yourself from time to time to branch out oh absolutely like uh, a limited palette is does no one any favors exactly it's like you can you can certainly live your entire life just gorging on pizza but you know i mean there's pasta and rice dishes right over there oh yeah they're good too absolutely so i hope you all look forward to that uh, next stream will be on Saturday as we return to the land of Dotnia, and I will hopefully be lucky as to avoid any like unfortunate like locked black screens, just because <laughs> it that game still feels inconsistent at times with like whether it wants to crash or not. I'm honestly surprised when we were going through MGS4, you know, because when it got to the Dolby Digital like splash screen video and it was starting to hang, I was worried that that was going to happen at other parts when we were playing. But no, like Act One for the majority of it just worked fine. I have no idea why it was like that. Yeah, it was when it started asking for the disc. I was like, um, that's a bit weird. Yeah, but oh well. Thanks for being with me. For, uh, for this stream, just making sure that I could get back into the swing of things. Because being away from this for, like, about a month, you do start to wonder after a point, man, do I still have it? <laughs> do I still got the goods? Yeah, and I still do. And hopefully I'll still <laughs> have the goods to see if I can, like, challenge people to a game of chicken of giving me a hundred follows so that they'll make me play the Dark Souls games. Which may, <laughs> which may or may not be a good thing. For me or for them, you decide. <laughs> Either way, there's going to be tears. Yes, there there will be lots of hollowing. <laughs> Have a good day, everyone. <laughs> Later. Peace.